Hello guys and welcome to today's session. Today we are going to talk about managing Windows updates via Intune. Again, this has been a nugget which I've been wanting to do since very long because it's very, very important. This is again going to be jam packed. I have no intentions of cutting it short. So let's take a look over the agenda. First, we'll take a look over what Windows as a service is. What are the different kind of servicing tools? What is Windows Update for Business? The advantages of having it. How is Windows Update for Business different from WSUS? And then we'll talk about how to manage Windows updates via Intune. We'll talk about managing quality updates, feature updates, expedited updates, as well as uh, driver and firmware updates. And then we'll talk about, when we are talking about this, we'll talk about the background, the flow, the troubleshooting, the registries, the logs. We'll also talk, touch a little bit on safeguards. We'll also touch a little bit on how is Windows updates working in conjunction with autopilot devices and co-managed devices. We'll also see the other methodologies of managing Windows updates in a Intune enrolled device other than just making uh, update rings like Win32 apps or CSPs or PowerShells or Graph APIs. Then we'll take a holistic overview and understand how a good supervision in an uh, organization is supposed to look like as far as update management is concerned. Then we'll take a look over the reporting. We'll take a look over the built-in reports as well as the custom reports that we can make using update compliance. We'll talk a little bit about auto patch and then in the demo, we are going to do everything that is there in the theory section. So we'll, we'll understand the flow. We'll take a look over the logs. We'll take a look over the registries and we'll set up update compliance from scratch. We'll take a look over the reporting. We'll take a look over everything. Okay, so super excited to get started with this. Now, before we dive into it, I just wanted to sensitize everybody on the importance of this nugget. Now, see, as far as the life cycle of a Windows device is concerned, there are two prominent phases, right? The first phase is enrolling a Windows device and deploying it, right? So there are so many ways of enrolling a Windows device. I mean, initially when we launched Intune, probably back then there were not so many ways of enrolling a Windows device to Intune. Now there are so, so many ways, right? There are seven or eight ways of enrolling a Windows device to Intune. You can manually enroll it. You can Azure AD join an Intune enroll it. You can hybrid Azure AD join an Intune enroll it by using group policies. You can co-manage it. You can autopilot it. You can use PPKG. You can use, uh, I mean, there are so, so, so many ways of enrolling a Windows 10 device, right? So it doesn't matter uh, which one you choose. Uh, but we are supposed to choose whatever meets our use case and whatever meets the organization's needs, right? So there are so many entry points. Now, once the Windows device is enrolled, step one is achieved, right? Now, step two is obviously managing the Windows device. That is why we have enrolled the device to begin with. But equally important is servicing these Windows devices because in no organization and no enterprise will we be just enrolling a Windows device and then just managing the uh, features of a Windows device and giving it to the end users without having the ability of managing its patches because us it is uh, very important for us as an IT admin to make sure that the end users devices are patched with security updates at all point of time. And patching of Windows machines, if you have been an IT admin for a couple of years also, you would know that patching of Windows machine is, well, it's, even though it's very important, well, it is cumbersome as well, right? We have been using all those tools like uh, uh, WSOS and SEC, I mean, via WSOS and SECM and Shavlik and Lumension and I mean, there are so, so, so many different third party tools just to achieve this one use case that is proper patch management of Windows devices. So I I'm just trying to sensitize why proper patching of Windows devices in our organizations is of paramount. We have been using group policies. We have been using all the traditional on-premise tools, right? Now, the point here is traditionally the patching of devices enrolled to Intune via Intune was not very good. 
we could only make something called an update ring the update in and in the options in those update ring were not a lot we could just uh, determine how the device is going to behave when it once it receives the patches when is it going to undergo a reboot and a little bit of deferral period that's all we had as far as out of the box capabilities of patch management via intune probably 3 or 4 years back now things have changed a lot we can do quality updates we can do expedited updates we can do uh, firmware and bios updates we can use win32 approach and then um the reporting has It has bettered a lot as far as patch management by Intune is concerned. So we are going to take a look over all of that very shortly. But I just wanted to set the note first and first sensitize the fact that why patching of a Windows device in an organization is of paramount, and second, the capabilities of doing patching via Intune. has become so much better over the course of past 3 or 4 years we no longer are dependent upon on prem technologies there might be some things that we still cannot do from intune but which we are going to talk about very shortly but then things have improved a lot okay so before we talk about them first we are going to talk about windows as a service okay so what is windows as a service um starting with windows 10 uh, microsoft introduced a new servicing model and this servicing model is referred to as windows as a service earlier what happened was before windows as a service came into the picture earlier when there was windows 7 or windows 8 or 8.1 a new version of windows was released every 3 to 4 years okay however uh, that is not the case right now right now we use a model of windows as a service wherein we release small feature updates two times a year so there would uh, you would see a uh, verbiage like windows 1903 and 1909 1803 or 1809 i mean stuff like that right so twice a year you would see that uh, the build version of windows are are released and they are released with the feature updates once around march and once around september to address uh, the os related issues right earlier that was not the case we would release a version of the operating system probably 3 or 4 years and before that was released we would release a, a prior to i mean prior to release the actual version there would be an insider program or stuff like that wherein people could enroll to and people could get a look and feel of how the operating system is going to be okay but windows as a service has uh, has changed the way the operating system is being now deployed and made available to users so it's a way to maintain a consistent windows experience and it focuses on maximizing customer involvement in windows development simplifying the deployment and servicing of windows client now prior to windows 10 microsoft released a newer version every few years as i mentioned it was uh, usually every 3 years and microsoft developed new versions of windows and whenever microsoft developed a new version the technical previews were available and i let's say that i wanted to uh, get a feel of windows 8 or 8.1 i could enroll and i could get the technical preview for that and i could make a use of it and provide feedback to microsoft okay why was this methodology not very good because it imposed a training burden on all the users whenever uh, changes were made and whenever a newer version came it was very significant as in whenever as you remember whenever uh, initially we had windows 7 right and from windows 7 we had windows 8 or windows 8.1 now there is a lot of difference between windows 7 and windows 8 right It, there is a significant uh, change in features now with a significant change in features it brings the overhead of the of us training the admins and the users as well right so it imposed a training burden on users because the feature revisions were often quite significant with and we also had to wait for very long periods right we had to wait for almost 3 plus years to have new features new capabilities which we don't want to in today's rapidly changing world right we want to address everything we want to address all the challenges asap 
therefore this servicing model of releasing a windows feature update every 6 months comes to the rescue okay so this is what this is an overview of what windows as a service is we have got good documentation around it as well you might as well go through that so traditionally we had something like you would have uh, heard things like there was windows maybe a client version or maybe a server version and then there would be improvements to it every couple of years and we would release something like a service packs and well obviously monthly updates were still there okay uh, in the newer servicing model as i said there will be feature updates released twice every year probably in march and in august and then there will be something called a quality updates which is also going to be released so there are two kinds of updates primarily in windows as a service first is feature updates and second is quality updates we are going to talk in very details of these two uh, very shortly we are going to take a look over the background flow and the logs in the registry but for now let's just know that there are two kinds of updates one is feature update and the other is quality update feature update adds new functionality so let's say for example i have a device running with windows 10 1903 version so 1903 is the version of the operating system and uh, and let's say that I upgraded to Windows 10 in 1909. So now the feature, so it is the feature update which is going to make sure that I'm able to update from 1903 to 1909. Okay. And then there is something called a quality update as well. These quality updates are basically security updates, which are in a way you can you can think of them in a way that they are hot fixes. Okay. They're released every uh, second Tuesday of every month. However, they can be released. Uh, more frequently as well if if and when the need be but quality updates are usually fixing things and fixing the security stack rather than adding new features new features are added in the feature updates okay new features or new functionality now we have something called a servicing channel servicing channel provides level of flexibility over when these updates are delivered to the devices again there are three servicing channels one is the general availability wherein the device all the devices which are there in the general availability channel receive the updates that are applicable to them asap now when i say asap there are ways by which we can put deferrals but they will be eligible to get the updates as soon as the updates are made public and then there is something called long term servicing channel as well which is uh, which was basically designed for specialized devices like for example atm machines or stuff like that and which do not have a lot of user uh, you, i mean end users dependency so the end user is not using those devices a lot right and then there is something called a windows insider program the windows insider program gives us the ability of uh, making use of an version of an operating system which is not yet out there in general availability and then we can make use of it we can get a look and feel of it we can develop our application according to that a version of operating system and then give feedback back to microsoft okay so uh, usually we will be seeing devices which are there in the general availability channel and these are the devices which can, which are managed usually via intune and windows update for business Okay. Now, traditionally, there was uh, again we are talking about that we are doing a comparison between the traditional way and the modern way. The modern way is Windows as a service, right? Now, in the traditional way, there was monthly updates in previous Windows version, uh, and the monthly updates was usually very overwhelming, as in they were big in size and they had a lot of things jam packed into just one updates just because of the sheer number of updates available each month and many organizations selectively chose which updates they wanted to install and which they didn't obviously if we are picking and choosing it, this is going to create a countless uh, number of scenarios wherein um, um, there there is a super set and there is a subset of devices having category A of uh, patches, there is a, a subset of devices having uh, category B of patches, right? 
in the modern way rather than receiving several updates each month and trying to figure out which organization what are the organization's needs uh, uh, which ultimately causes platform fragmentation Administra administrators can see one cumulative monthly update that supersedes the previous month's update as well so let's say that there was a update released in january there is going to be a a cumulative update re uh, uh, released in February that is going to contain whatever new has been, whatever fixes has been made in February as well as whatever was earlier released in January as well. So it's going to be cumulative so that the new update supersedes the older one as well. So now we don't have to have the headache of installing the January update and then the February update. We can directly install the February update and it's going to take care of everything. This makes this approach makes updating simpler and ensures the devices are more closely aligned with the testing that is done. And uh, obviously, uh, this makes the management easy because we, as a if we look at the count of update that we are going to end up installing in the devices, the count is going to be less, right? Because the newer update are always superseded and they are uh, uh, the older updates are superseded by the newer updates and the newer updates are cumulative. Okay. All right. So until now we have spoken about what is Windows as a service and how Windows as a service is uh, easier and how uh, making use of uh, gen by making use of Windows update uh, for business and by making use of uh, uh, things like Windows as a service, we can service devices that are there in general availability, right? Now let's talk about servicing tools. So servicing tools means how we are going to provide the patches to the devices. Now there are many, many methodologies there are some methodologies within Microsoft's tools. There are some third party tools as well, which use a few methodologies, right? So the most common of them is, uh, well, obviously the using the inbuilt uh, Windows update or the standalone Windows update. In this, all we do is we go into the machine and we configure the machine manually to download the update from the cloud. So it provides limited control over which feature is going to be uh, downloaded. This is equivalent to going to start, going to settings and going to update and then uh, doing a check for update manually over here. Let's say that I do a check for update manually over here. I download the update, I install the update. So this has to be done every by all the individuals in their machine. Obviously, if all the individuals are doing this manually in their machine, then this means that the uh, IT intervention is not there. If IT intervention is not there, then IT is not able to manage it well, right? However, this, I mean, just wanted to know that this is the, so I mean, it's, it's similar to managing something locally in the machine versus managing it via group policy. So when it's being managed via group policy, the IT admin is taking care of the management, right? When it is being managed manually by a user, then the IT admin does not have visibility and the IT admin does not have any control, right? So this is the, this is the manual user's way of doing it. Now Windows update for business is the group policy way of doing it. So you, or I mean, again, the, when I say group policy way of doing it, what I mean by that is this is an IT admins way of doing it. So using windows update for business, what we do is we make a policy. When I say we, I mean the IT admin makes a policy. He can make that policy in group in group policy console. If the devices are joined to the on-premise domain, or he can make it in some kind of MDM. And then in that policy, we are going to decide how the update at the end user's device is going to happen, when the update is going to happen. And there are a lot of things that we can decide in that policy. That policy comes down to the device and then the device behaves accordingly. Okay. These, so uh, Windows update for business includes control over the update def uh, deferment and provides centralized management using maybe group policy or using uh, maybe MDM. Windows update for business can be used to defer updates as well. We will talk about what deferring updates is later on. And these deployments are available to clients that are there in general availability channel. Okay. Now there is something called uh, Windows uh, WSOS as well or Windows Server Update Services. Now Windows Server Update Services, this is nothing but a role that we install in a server. and. Uh, 
let me just give you a thousand feet overview of what Windows, so Windows Server Update Services is. Again, this is a very deep topic in itself. However, we don't use WSUS with Intune. Therefore, I'm not going to go into very details of it. But what WSUS does is it downloads the patches from the internet or from Microsoft servers. And then from there, from the WSUS server, we centrally manage the uh, deployment of patches. So like, for example, let's say that this is a Windows 10 device and this is the cloud wherein all the updates are present. Okay. So we have a man in the middle over here called WSUS server. The WSUS server is going to download all the patches from the cloud. And from here, the admin is either going to approve or is not going to approve a specific patch. And depending upon whatever he has approved and whatever he has not approved, all those patches will be deployed down to the devices. This is how, I mean, a overview of how WSUS works. Again, there are a lot of customizations and a lot of things that we can do over here. In case of Windows update for business, this WSUS is not there. Now the device directly downloads the patches from the cloud. Again, we can do something like a delivery optimization as well, when it's going to download the patches from its peer, but I don't want to talk about those complex, uh, complex scenarios right now. So for now, let's just understand that w, WSUS is a scenario wherein there is a man in the middle or a server wherein we are caching the patches. That is wherein we are downloading all the patches over here and then we are, uh, manually approving a patch or denying a patch and then creating deployments. Pretty much the same thing happens if you're using any other third party tools like Shavlik or Lumension or Big Fix as well. There is a console for Shavlik or Lumension wherein and that console is obviously installed in a server. And in because in that server we have installed a, let's say a software or a we have installed a software called Shavlik or Lumension. And once that software is installed, that uh, software is going to go to the internet and it's going to download all the patches for all the client and the server operating system. And once those patches has been cached over here, then we can create a policy or a baseline wherein we can say that, okay, these patches are going to be deployed to these devices and these devices are not going to get these patches and then they are deployed down to the device, right? So the same methodology is used in case of WSUS as well as any third party uh, patching uh, software or tool, if you would call it. And then we have something called Microsoft Endpoint Configuration Manager as well. And uh, usually Microsoft Endpoint Configuration Manager works with WSUS. So these two work together and all the devices which are being managed via Microsoft Endpoint Configuration Manager or SECM, they get their patches via WSUS depending upon the baseline or the policy that have been created. Right now we are going to focus on this part because the patch management in an Intune enrolled device via Intune happens via Windows update for business, wherein there is, wherein this section does not exist. So this man in the middle is not there and the device is directly talking with the Windows update service on the cloud. How is that communication happening and what is the flow? We are going to talk about that very shortly. But I hope we now know that there are other servicing tools as well, other than Windows Update for Business, like well the standalone way and then the WSUS way and using SECM. And using these as well, the same goal can be achieved, that is patching of Windows machines. Now there is a comparison as well, which talks about uh, using which tool we can do what. So using Windows Update, we can defer installation of patches using windows update for business. Also, we can do that using WSUS. Also, we can do that using config manager. You can do that. However, using this is a very important point, which we will get to and which I will stress on later using windows update for business. We don't have the ability of approving a specific patch. Now this is a, a big cause of 
differentiation between Windows Update for Business and WSUS or Config Manager. In WSUS and Config Manager, what we were doing was all the updates were first downloaded and cached over here. And then we were either approving an update or we were denying an update, right? This was there in WSUS or in Configuration Manager. However, in case of Windows Update for Business, we cannot determine which patches are going to go to the device and which patches not going to go to the device. We can only determine when the patch is going to go. We can only determine that once the patch goes, how the device is going to behave, when the reboot is going to happen, what is going to be the different period and stuff like that. But we cannot say that, okay, let's say that there are 100 patches applicable for this version of operating system. Only first, only specific 50 of them should go to the device and the rest 50 should not be installed in the device. That ability in Windows Update for Business is not there. Is it going to come? I don't think it is. There is a reasoning behind that as well. We'll come to all of that when we are talking in details about Windows Update for Business. But this is a big point that I wanted to make that in Windows Update for Business, you can see over here, the screenshot has been taken from our official documentation. It says that ability to approve updates is not there. However, in case of WSUS and Configuration Manager, you see that the ability to approve updates is there. And then delivery optimization works with all of them. So uh, by delivery optimization, what, what happens is again, I'll do a separate deep dive nugget on delivery optimization, but what delivery optimization helps us achieve is let's say that there are two machines in the network. The first machine has already downloaded the network from let's say WSUS or let's say internet. The second machine can save the bandwidth by downloading the updates from the first machine rather than going to the internet or rather than going to the WSOS or rather than going to the Windows Update for Business service, right? Now, a Windows Update for Business can be managed via group policy. It can be managed via MDM. And uh, over here in case of Configuration Manager, we already know that Configuration Manager works in tandem with WSOS as well, okay? So this is a... Uh, uh, servicing tool comparison, I have already highlighted the important point, which is this one. Other than that, more of, I mean, obviously the flow is different, which we are going to take a look over later, but this is the determining factor over here. And the other factor being in case of WSUS and configuration manager, the reporting is very granular. However, in case of windows update for business, the reporting is not that granular. However, there are things that are changing. We have something called update compliance, which we are going to take a look over later. That update compliance helps us achieve a lot of uh, reporting related use cases. However, still in case of configuration manager and WSOS, we get a very good amount of reporting. Okay, so now that we have talked, we have spoken about what is, what are the different servicing tools, what are the different servicing channels, what is Windows as a service. Now let's take a look over Windows Update for Business more closely. We have already spoken about what Windows Update for Business is in, uh, in a short while. Windows Update for Business is one of the servicing tools by which we can provide patches to a Windows machine and Windows Update for Business is the tool if you are trying to do patching of a Windows machine via Intune. Okay. And we have also spoken about how Windows for Update, uh, Windows Update for Business is different from WSOS and Configuration Manager. Now, Windows Update for Business deployment service is a cloud service within the Windows Update for Business product family. The deployment service is a free service from Microsoft available to enterprise and education customers to manage and control the delivery and behavior of Windows updates. The Windows Update for Business Deployment Service provides control over the approval, the scheduling and safeguarding. We'll talk about what safeguard is later on. This is a free service available for all premium editions for Windows 10 as well as Windows 11 Pro Workstation Education editions. Okay. All right, we can use group policies or MDM. We, this is a redundant point already spoken about this. We can use group policies or MDM solutions like Intune or iWatch or whatever, what have you to configure the Windows update for business settings that control how the devices are updated. 
So if the device is an on-prem joint, you can open up the group policy editor and make a policy for Windows update for business there. If they're in tune enrolled or if they're managed by AirWatch, you can go to the relevant console and then you can create the relevant policies over there. By using Windows Update for Business, you can control which types of Windows updates are offered to the devices in your operating system, when the updates are applied, and the deployment to the devices in your, organi in, in your organization in waves. So what I can do is, again, this is where good supervision comes in. What we can do is we can create update. So if I talk specifically about Intune, when we are making a Windows update for business policy in Intune, they are referred to as update rings. And the reason why we use the analogy rings is because in the first ring, let's say that we are only targeting a whole bunch of devices. In the second ring, think of it like a concentric circle. So the second ring is a one which is a little bigger we are wherein we are targeting all the in-house employees. The third ring is, let's say, a, a ring which is even bigger when we are targeting all the devices. So um, um, by using Windows Update Ring, we can incrementally target devices and patch the devices. So let's say that in the first ring, I'll be targeting devices and seeing whether they are working fine or not with the uh, applications in my organization. In the second ring, I'll be targeting more devices. In the third ring, I'll be targeting all the devices, right? However, I have already mentioned there is one thing that we cannot do using Windows Update for Business, and that is we cannot control which update is going to go to the device and which update is not going to go to the device. As in, we don't have an ability of manually approving or not approving patches that are applicable to a device. Now, when I'm saying manually approving or not approving, I'm only talking about quality updates. Okay. You will see that when we are talking about firmware and BIOS updates, things are going to change because in case of firmware and BIOS updates, we have an ability of uh, manually approving which patch, which firmware and which BIOS update is going to go and which one is not going to go. Okay. However, we can control when updates are applied, for example, by deferring them, we can defer or we can pause the installation for a specific uh, period of time. Okay. What are the advantages of using Windows Update for business? Well, obviously, if we are centrally managing the Windows um, patching, if we are centrally managing the patching of a device from, let's say, group policy or let's say Intune, then um, um, it is scalable. Obviously, IT is able to maintain the control because IT is determining how the policy is going to look like. He can use things like different updates, deployment schedule. It is easier to adopt. We can enhance the deployment by using safeguard holds and firmware updates, and it is compliant to all these certifications as well. Okay. So, I mean, just again, a diagrammatic representation, we are either making a group policy or a MDM policy in Windows update for business. And then that policy is coming down to the device. The device is behaving accordingly. Again, when I'm saying that the policy is coming down to the device, there is a lot that is happening in between. We'll talk about the flow later on. But for now, let's say that we are making a Windows update for business policy in group policy or in MDM, it's coming down to the device, a managed device. And why is this good? Because we can update the device from anywhere because this is happening over the internet. It reduces the infrastructure because now we no longer need a WSO server. Now, if we needed a server, we would need to have a database. We would need to have a server admin. We would need to have an on-premise data center. All of that is not needed anymore. We have geo redundancy. It is simple, less manual effort and we just have to create it once and then we can forget about it. However, in case of WSOS, we will we cannot just make it once and forget about it because somebody is going to see which updates to approve, which updates not to approve, right? And even, even if you make a automated approval process, still somebody has to intervene at some point of time, right? However, in this case, no intervention is needed. Okay. Now, there are many kinds of updates that can be managed via Windows Update for Business. We are going to do a deep dive on all of these later. There is something we have already spoken a little bit about these two feature updates. Feature updates is something which is changing a feature or a functionality. We've already spoken that feature updates in Windows, Windows as a service 
is released twice every year once in march and once in august or september that's why you hear the uh, you, you hear the uh, verbiage like 1903 1909 20h1 20h2 21 h1 21 h2 right so that is why you hear those uh, verbatim and then we have something called a driver a driver update in the firmware updates and microsoft products updates as well right which we are going to talk about later on and then we have something called an expedited updates as well so um this slide is talking about the different servicing options so right now the servicing option is general availability so moving forward moving 20 uh, 21 h2 i mean you will see that all the devices that we are managing via Intune if they are running with a version of 21H2 or later then they are going to be in the general availability channel and uh, this is a documentation which talks about what is the uh, end of life for each of them okay all right so now let's do a comparison between wsus and windows update for business we have talked we have spoken a little bit about uh, wsus we have spoken a little bit more about windows update for business we spoke about the advantages and over here in the advantages we saw that it is easy to adopt and then there is no less manual effort and no infrastructure is needed all these things are needed in case of wsus so let's try to understand this difference more in detail so on the left hand side you see windows uh, uh, windows server update services that is wsus and on the right hand side you can see that windows update uh, for business so in this case windows update for business you can see that the patches are directly coming so what we have done is we have made three rings first is the initial ring second is the fast ring third is the slow ring the initial ring contains only two devices the fast ring contains let's say 10 devices which are local admin local it and then the the slow ring contains all the devices okay so what i do is first i really first i patch these two devices using my windows update for business uh, uh, policy in intune and in this policy in in this policy number one i have not set any deferral period therefore the patches come instantly i make sure that i monitor these devices monitor the applications running in these devices for some amount of time once i'm confident then uh, the same patches come down to the fast ring the only difference between the initial the only difference between policy number one and the policy number two is in case of policy number two i have put in a deferral period of five days therefore after five days of patches coming over here the patches come over here right so and again i'm testing all those all the patches in all these 10 devices of the local it for let's say a week or so and once i have seen that yeah there are no repercussions there is nothing that is conflicting that is when uh, the patches come down and flow in the normal ring which we are referring to as the slow ring and over the only reason why the patches are coming down over here slower is because i have put in a deferral of 10 days we'll talk about how to make good rings later on in the presentation when we talk about good supervision but for now this is how this is an overview of how windows update for business patching is working the devices are directly uh, reaching out to windows update service and they're downloading the patches depending upon the version of the operating system and depending upon the policy which defines how, what is the deferral period however in case of uh, wsus you see that from the microsoft updates uh, the patches are first downloaded and cached in the wsus server and then from the wsus server first i'm making a baseline and deployment to test server and once everything is fine then i'm making a deployment to other kind of servers as well and obviously if there is a wsus server wherein all the patches are cached there will be a sql or a database server at the back end as well right since there is a sql server and the back end server there are advantages and disadvantages of that advantages being well if we have a sql server we can run an sql query and then we can get very good amount of inform very granular information and very good amount of reporting as well right D what is the disadvantage the disadvantage being well this is an extra server this is an extra server we have to manage this server as well as there has to be an it admin who is doing all the approval and denial right 
in this case all that is not there the test machines are there with the end user windows update services will managed via microsoft and the it admin just has to make a policy and then forget about it right so windows server update services this is a server role that has to be installed in the server since it's a server role which needs to be installed in the server it means that you need to have a server in order to have a server you need to have a data center you need to have a data center you need to pay that amount right you need to have that uh, ability to maintain that data center so in a way you can say that this is i mean this incurs more cost because you have to have those on premise infrastructure right in this case it's a cloud solution so windows update for business is a service that is running on cloud managed by microsoft so the customer does not need to have any on premise setup over here right it can be managed via secm windows update for business can be managed via group policy or it can be managed via intune in this case the client scan against the wso scap file in this case the device communicate directly with the windows update service and request for the applicable updates in this case again this is a point we have already spoken about and it's important administrators can manually approve updates in this case the administrators cannot manually approve selective updates all the updates which are applicable on that version of operating system the device is going to scan against that and is going to download and install all of that the only thing that we can do in windows update for business is determine when that going that is going to happen okay windows server updates or wsos provides more granularity this provides less granularity because we cannot update we cannot uh, approve specific updates but then it is easier to set up and use wsos is can be used for both client and server operating system windows update for business is used for windows clients only okay this is a quick comparison and difference between wsos and windows update for business on one hand we have a uh, windows update for business which is usually used for client devices it is usually used for patching devices over the internet it is easier to set up no less it admin is needed less cost because we don't need any kind of uh, on premise infrastructure or wsos server or sql or stuff like that on the other hand we have wsos wherein we need an on premise infrastructure we need the on premise sql server we need the it admin however it provides more granularity it provides us the option of approving or not approving a specific updates it provides us better reporting this is easier to set up this is not that easy to set up right so this is a quick comparison between what wsos is and what windows update for business is most importantly this is what we are targeted at because wsos is something that is used with ccm windows update for business is something that is used with microsoft intune or other mdm solutions all right so now let's talk about from this point onwards the pre phase is done now we are going to talk about the main thing that is managing windows updates via intune so these are the various ways by which we can manage windows update via intune in an intune enrolled device first is update ring or quality update again we are going to do a deep dive on all of that this is just a 1000 feet overview um first is we make traditionally something called an update ring policy this is used for managing quality updates and then we can make something called a feature update policy this is used for managing feature updates then we can make something called an expedited quality updates policies this wasn't there these is these are all new introductions so uh, this actually came up when there was this uh, around the time when there was this uh, printer nightmare issue that was going on wherein we needed to push a hot fix or an expedited quality fix to devices right to make sure that the vulnerability is not uh, uh, the vulnerability is not uh, made use of right so uh, and then we have firmware or bios update policy so all these policies can be made from the intune portal which we are going to see very shortly then we can make a csp policy this is a custom policy that we can make in the intune portal 
then we can deploy a specific KB or a patch using the Win32 app deployment method. And then we can deploy patches or, or manage the patching of a Windows device from Intune using PowerShell and Graph APIs. Okay. So by using Windows Update for Business, we simplify the update management. Again, we already know this. We don't need to approve individual updates for a group of devices. Uh, and the because again, even if we wanted to, that option is not there, right? We have already spoken about this fact that we cannot um, approve or unapprove a specific KB or a patch when we are patching a device from Windows Update for Business and using Intune or maybe Group Policy. Intune only stores the update policy assignment, not the updates themselves. This is again an important point when we were doing the comparison between WSOS and Windows Update for Business over there. This point came up a little, right? In case of WSOS, the updates were getting downloaded and cached in the WSOS server. However, in case of Windows Update for Business, the devices are going to directly check in with the Windows Update for Business service and then download the relevant patches from there. From Intune, we are just making a policy for Windows Update for Business, which is determining when the update is going to happen and what is going to be the behavior of the device when the update does happen. Okay. When we save a policy, Intune passes the configurational details to Windows Update, which then determines which updates will be offered to each device. Uh, I will say, let's not worry about this point right now. When we are doing a deep dive on feature update, then this point will make more sense. Um, devices access Windows Update directly for the updates. We already know this. Okay. All right. So now let's talk about the first kind of updates. That is Windows Update Ring Quality Updates. This is the first kind of updates that we can manage from Intune on an Intune enrolled device. And um, before we uh, get into that, let me just give you guys a flashback. Back in 2019, this was the only policy that was there in the Intune portal. All the others were not there. Then we later on we release the option of making a feature update policy via Intune. So this came on later. This came on even later during the time wherein that printer nightmare thing happened. This is still in public preview, I guess. So this will as on May 2022, I believe all the tenants do not have this ability. Soon, sooner rather than later, they are going to have it. So this came even after that. That is firmware BIOS update policies. The ability of deploying a CSP from Intune has, al has always existed. And this CSP and devices and the patching of a device via CSP could always be done. So this has always existed. Win32 app deployment, well, whenever we released Win32 app deployment, I believe this was also in... Um, I, I guess around 2019, that is when Win32 app deployment was made available via Intune portal and then PowerShell and Graph APIs were always there. So this is the oldest method and then this is also one of the oldest method and then later on we released this, then this, then this and this was also released sometime in 2019 and then this was also released at some time. So these, th these two are very new and uh, rest as you know. So I just wanted to provide you guys a time frame that a lot of progress has been made since past three or four years as far as patching capability via Intune is concerned. Back three or four years, we just had these two, right? Now you can see that we have feature update, expedited updates, firmware updates, and then we'll see SPN Win32 is always there. Okay. All right. So now let's talk about quality updates and how quality updates are managed via Intune. So again, just a brief overview, quality updates are also known as cumulative updates or also known as cumulative quality updates are mandatory updates that our computer downloads and installs every month through Windows Update. Usually these updates are released on uh, second Tuesday of every month, which is also referred to as the patch Tuesday. In, in, they they are uh, they they are actually the quality updates as we have already spoken about earlier 
they are different from feature updates so feature updates are inculcating a new feature into the operating system and the feature version of the os also changes right like 20h1 or 20h2 or 21h1 21h2 over here in case of quality updates we are doing bug fixes or errors or i mean resolving some errors or patching the security vulnerabilities and improving the reliability of the version of windows 10 or windows 11 uh, typically windows update increases in each size uh, quality uh, updates increase in each as the nature being cumulative like for example in first month in in second tuesday of january there was a the quality update that was released so, so the next quality update that is going to be released is going to be cumulative therefore it, it's going to contain the information of the previous release as well therefore uh, as a result the cumulative approach reduces the number of problems uh, and updates that we need to download on our device because the latest one is going to be cumulative of all the previous ones as well right the quality update downloads and installs faster than feature updates will obviously because feature updates are making a change to a feature of the operating system right therefore they are heavier right in comparison quality updates are smaller packages and they don't require a complete reinstallation of the operating system which means that it's not necessary to create a backup of the os before we are installing a quality update uh on qual on patch my tuesday or second tuesday of every month uh, this is usually the naming convention that is used whenever a quality update is released wherein it's yyyy mm and then quality uh, cumulative update for the os release which will contain the name of the os right and then uh, and then there is a preview also that is released for cumulative updates and uh, uh, the preview is released so that anybody who has signed on for the preview is able to get it before and is able to test and make sure that their applications are running fine okay and then uh, there are cumulative updates that are there are cumulative updates that are released for dotnet as well and uh, they also have the same naming convention and then the quality so when we are talking about uh, quality updates the quality updates actually contain these things first is the cumulative update then it contains the community update preview then it contains dotnet cumulative updates then it contains the service stack updates the service stack updates are uh, they they are responsible for servicing the os stack and then there is something called an update stack package that is also released uh, as a part of the uh, quality updates so quality updates is a combination of all of these things from intune we make something called a windows update ring policy and that policy determines when these updates are going to be downloaded where do we make that we go to the intune portal and over there there is this section which says that update ring for windows 10 and later so right now below that you can see there is this feature update option as well there is this quality update for windows 10 later option as well which is in preview this is the expedited updates option and then later on you will be able to see another option which says that uh, managing the firmware and bios updates all those are the newer option this is the oldest option that has uh, uh, that has been made available in the Intune portal as far as patching is concerned and this is what update ring refers to so if we go into the portal click over here and then click on create Poli create profile this is wherein we are making a windows update ring profile it is deploying a quality update the servicing channel is general availability and we have an option of we have a lot of options in this which we are going to see now so over here it is giving us an option of what is going whether you want to allow the installation of uh, microsoft products or not whether you want to manage the allow or block windows drivers or not as far as quality updates is concerned what is the deferral period that we want to set this is for quality update this is for feature update remember that this policy is for quality update but there is this feature for feature update as well i mean there is this option for feature update as well okay we will do a deep dive on this later on but this deferral means that let's say that the patch was released on 1st of august 
okay if i put in the deferral of 30 days then the patch will be made available to the devices on 30th of august starting from 30th of august meaning for first 30 days the patches will not be made available to the devices why is that helpful because what i can do is for the first 30 devices i can make the patches available to a small subset of device and make sure that those devices are working fine once i have validated that only then i want to deploy the patches to a larger group so for the larger group i will put in a deferral period of 30 days so that the deployment of the patches is staggered to them by by a month okay and then there is this option which says that upgrade windows 10 devices to the latest windows 11 version release or not self-explanatory and then there is this option which says that set feature update uninstall period uh, again this is related to feature update you have to be careful even though we are making this policy for quality updates there are a couple of options related to feature update also which are present over here so it's telling us that if you're doing a feature update let's say that the device is uh, updated from 20 h1 to 20 h2 uh, how much of time you want to give to the device for which if the admin wanted to he can make an uninstallation of the feature update as well and go back to the previous version and then we have uh, if we are selecting the pre-release builds we have uh, we can select the windows insider option as well and then these are the user experience related settings so these settings determine that when the device gets the update from the windows update service in the cloud after they are installed what is going to be the user experience or when the updates are being installed what is going to be the user experience so it tells us the automatic update behavior whether we want to automatically install the maintenance time or there are a few other options what is going to be the maintenance hours we can specify that in this policy therefore any, therefore the it says that auto install at maintenance time so anything outside of this working hour is the maintenance time and then restart checks whether we are allowing or not option to pause windows updates whether the end user can pause the windows update or not so if i go over here there is this option to pause the windows update right so if i as an admin say, select this to no then this option is going to be grayed out for the end user in their devices okay and then change notification level whether the notification is going to come or not and then there is something called deadline there is something called grace period we'll talk about deadline and grace period later on but think of it like uh, the deadline the grace period and the deferral they all together work in tandem to make sure when the update is provided to the device when the update becomes optional to the device and when the update becomes mandatory to the device okay that is what that's what deadline means right within the deadline it's optional after the deadline it becomes mandatory right that is that is uh, what, what the logic is all right so now let's understand what is the flow while we are deploying a quality update from intune so i told you that we go to the intune portal and from the update ring option we click on create a profile and then we deploy that i mean we are making these selections and then we are deploying this profile to a user group or to a device group but after we have made this profile we need to understand what is the flow that is happening at the background and um, um, this diagram should help us understand the flow the first thing that is happening is that the intune admin goes to the intune portal and he is creating a windows update ring policy okay so once the windows uh, once the uh, update ring policy has been created it's assigned to a device the device runs a sync and the policy in step 2 is going to be delivered to the device via the omadium channel so that is what the step two is in step two intune is delivering because the device is already enrolled to intune right so intune knows where the device is and the policy will be delivered to the device via the omadium channel and then well obviously we we are going to see this later that we can track whether the policy actually came down to the device or not we can track it in the logs we can track it in the registry we can track it in so many places right and when the policy comes down to the device the policy is inculcated and merged in the device's registry right so the policy settings are merged in the device's registry hive 
containing and this policy whatever whatever we made in the policy is what is updated in the registry right so in the policy we create we had so many options right maintenance hours deferral period who is going to be notified what is the active hours and uh, whether uh, microsoft third party things are updating or whether microsoft products are updating there were so many different options which we just saw right so all those things that were there that were there in the portal uh, all those things in form of sync ml are deployed to the device and in the devices registry all of them are populated now uh, there is a component in the device called unified update platform or uup the unified update platform component uh, in the operating system takes over the pro uh, processing and uh, the or there is a orchestrator which schedules the downloading of update so the orchestrator component in the device is going to reach out to the windows update service and is going to request for the applicable updates for this device in accordance with the policy it has already received so the intune service sent a policy to the device that policy is containing the information on what is the active hours what is the maintenance window whether the device is going to reboot or not and stuff like that now the orchestrator is going to queue the is going to schedule or queue the updates the sequence of updates uh, as per the setting that is there in the registry so in the registry we already have the maintenance hours and when the device is supposed to install the update and stuff like that the orchestrator is going to reach out to the windows update service it's going to download all those updates the updates are going to be stored in the temporary location the orchestrator is then going to start the installation the arbitrator calls the installer to install the package once the installation is done then the orchestrator takes the information uh, i mean orchestrator is going to reboot the machine or not reboot the machine depending upon the value in the registry and how was that registry set that registry was set because intune service has deployed a policy to the device the device undergoes a reboot and then the uh, intune service is again informed whether the installation was successfully done or not okay now let's take a closer look into this flow the first step is we make a update ring policy in the intune portal and deploy it to the device the policy is delivered to the device via via the mdm channel over a mdm sync session once this policy comes down to the device that is step 2 in step 2 the policy is coming down to the device right so once the policy is coming down to the device we can track it in many places we can track it in sync ml logs we can track it in mdm diag logs we can track it in event viewer and we can track it in the policy manager registry once the policy has been delivered to the device intune's job is done and now the win windows component is going to take over so intune's job over here was creating a policy and then deploying that policy to the device once the policy get once the device gets the policy now there are various components in the device which are going to take over and in accordance with the policy they are going to behave okay the os now follows the uup model so until now what has happened is the policy has been delivered to the device now the os is going to follow the uup model which determines the next sequencing so uup is a unified update platform it is a publishing hosting scanning and downloading model for all types of operating system updates and it actually determine the components in uup actually determine when the update are going to be downloaded what is going to be the sequence of downloading the update and stuff like that so it contains a couple of things it contains the update ui and it contains the update session orchestrator the update ui is the ui that we see so when we go to start settings over there we can see the uh, options right whether we can pause the update or not whether we can check for the update or not right so i'm talking about uh, these options this is the ui right so the update ui is taking care of all of that and then we have update session orchestrator it is a windows os component that orchestrates the sequence of downloading and installation of various type of updates okay there is a service also that runs for this component for the windows orchestrator this does the update and this does the scheduling 
so as so until now what was hap what happened was in step 4 the policy was deployed to the device once the policy intune policy was deployed to the device uh, it is merged to intune's registry so we all we know already that every time intune delivers a policy to the device there has to be a registry wherein that policy information is getting updated right so for intune that hive not for intune for mdm for any mdm not just for intune that hive is policy manager so inside of that policy manager windows update hive everything that was configured in the policy in intune portal by the admin is going to be updated okay so all the registry is updated over there now the orchestrator is going the orchestrator which is a part of uup which is a part of the windows os component is going to now schedule the scan as, and start the download of of the patches from the windows update service depending upon what is the schedule set in the policy so once the device got the policy in step 2 now the device is going to reach to the windows update service the orchestrator is going to trigger that queue the update and then it is going to do that in accordance with what is the maintenance hours and what all we have mentioned in the policy to begin with which has now been merged in the registry so uh, as i said there is a service that runs in the device if you go to services.msc you can see there is a service called uh, update orchestrator service which has to be running at all times so if you check the description it even says that manages windows updates and if this is stopped our device will not be able to download and install the latest updates in the device and uh, there is this client the windows update client so over here we saw that there is the windows update agent or windows update client right so it actually runs a dll we can find this dll under system 32 and this is the name of the dll okay so this service is actually triggering the device to reach out to the windows service in step 3 and then it is scheduling the sequence of download of the patches in accordance with the policy that has been set okay now the windows update agent which is this agent which is a dll is downloaded when an update is applicable it generates a list of payloads that are to be downloaded by the machine okay the windows update arbitra handles and uh, handle and the deployment arbitra it is responsible for determining the composite state of your device so uh, i mean what this is doing is the windows update arbitra as well as the update agent as well as the orchestrator all these components under UUP, these are all Windows update components. These are these have got nothing to do with Intune. They are first reading our policy, the policy that is deployed to the device from Intune, and determining when the device should reach out to the Windows update service and download the installation uh, files. When I say installation files, I mean the KBs and the quality updates and the cumulative updates and stuff like that. And once they have been downloaded, the windows update clients are downloaded and saved in the temporary folder then the orchestrator starts the installation the arbiter calls the installer to install a package and then depending upon what is the maintenance hours that has been set in the policy the orchestrator starts a, does a restart once the restart is done then the uh, installation of the update is finalized and the intune service is notified of the same okay so if we look at holistically over the process the process is very much so simple we make a policy policy comes down to the device in step two step two can be tracked in various kind of logs and registries and stuff like that and then once we have tracked the step two in all the logs then we are sure that yes intune has done its job and intune has delivered the policy down to the device now the device has to reach out to the windows update service there is this uup component in the device which is governing when the device reaches out to the windows update service what is the going what is going to be the sequence of download of the KB, kbs or the cumulative updates once they are installed they are going to once they are downloaded they are going to be installed orchestrator is going to take over and all the different components and the services that we have spoken about over here are going to take over the device is going to undergo a reboot depending upon the maintenance window in the in the policy and then the status of the policy is going to be informed back to the intune service 
okay so you can think of it like this is this screenshot is again taken from a from our official documentation you can think of it like uh, the processing of the flow happens in these four steps first is device is after the device has received the policy the orchestrator uh, schedules a scan then the download happens wherein the orchestrator downloads the cumulative updates and uh, uh, all the manifest file which is given to the arbitrator the arbitrator evaluates uh, which uh, one needs to be installed first which one needs to be installed second as it stages the download files then the install happens and once the install has happened then the com then the commit phase comes wherein the orchestrator initiates the reboot and the arbitrator finalizes uh, before the reboot and once the reboot is done the information is given back to the intune service so think of the flow as under these four phases first is scan then is download then is install then is commit all these are happening at the os end this is step 2 step 1 is making the policy from intune and intune delivering the policy to the device right and those uh, whatever has been selected in the policy those things get merged in the registry what are the registry locations well any policy from intune or from any mdm that comes down to the device first goes to this hive that is policy manager So inside HKLM software, Microsoft Policy Manager current device update, we can see everything. So everything. Let's say that this is the Intune service, and over here I made a policy P1. This is a Windows update ring policy. So everything that was there in this policy, all the different com, all the different attributes like uh, the different period, and I mean all the different attributes, all of them are going to be updated in this hive. Okay, and inside Policy Manager. so this is a mdm specific hive if you would call it because all the mdms are going to update this location and then there are a win there are a couple of windows update specific hive as well wherein things are going to be updated inside hklm software microsoft windows update update policy and then policy state and then settings we are going to take a look over all these registries very shortly and then now we have to talk about the logs so where are this logs coming into picture i'm talking about the logs to track the second because this is the important part right uh, step 1 and step 2 are the important intune related step anything that goes wrong in step 1 and step 2 is responsibility of the intune admin anything that's going wrong in step 3 is responsibility of is technically the responsibility of a windows admin because intune has delivered the policy right now if windows os is malfunctioning then the windows guys will have to take a look over the fact and take a look over the windows update dot log and find out that why the whether all these components are working fine or not whether the services are correctly working fine or not whether the endpoints are reachable from the device or not whether there are any i mean in this case there won't be any safeguard in case of feature update whether there are any safeguards or not so all those things are going to come under the realm of windows but the step 2 is going to come under the realm of intune so how do we make sure that the policy has been delivered to the device successfully from intune there are a few logs for that right like sync ml logs mdm diag logs event viewer logs and windows update event viewer logs so so one is the intune specific event viewer logs and the other is the windows update logs so let's take a look over the troubleshooting of quality updates how we are going to troubleshoot if the quality update is not happening fine in a device and we are going to take a, a deep dive into these logs as well okay so let's say that i made a windows update ring policy for quality update from the portal and i have to track it so the first thing that i'm going to see is we i'm going to check the status of the policy as viewed from the intune portal this is going to be step 1 what do i mean by that i mean by what i mean by that is if i go into windows if i go into device if i click on a device if i go to device configuration i can see whether the update ring policy that i have made is showing as succeeded or not right if it is showing succeeded it is a good sign if it is sh showing as well pending 
then probably the device is not online the probably we need to run a couple of things to make sure that the device gets the policy if it is showing error then we need to click on it and find out why it is showing error but this is the easiest and the first place wherein we can see what is the status of the policy as seen from the portal okay then the second one is checking the incoming of policies in the sync ml logs at the device end so when the policy and this has to be done real time when the device is receiving the policy from the intune service we can run a tool by oliver kishelbag it's a sync ml tool and it captures whatever the device is receiving in form of sync ml from intune okay so this, this is again i just clicked on this windows updating policy and then it gave me a, a set of all the options that were enabled in the policy and everything is show, showing as succeeded now this is the sync ml trace we are going to see how to make how to take a sync ml trace in the demo but this thing but there is this tool there is this tool called sync ml viewer what this tool does is it in a real time this think of it like perfmon or procmon or netmon if you are running netmon it tells you all the endpoints to which or wireshark right so if you run wireshark in real time you can see all the to you can see all the endpoints to which the device is reaching out to right in real time similarly this sync ml viewer is actually telling us all the sync, all the policies that the device is receiving in form of sync ml from the intune service so uh, if in if we take a sync ml trace we can actually see the policy coming down from the intune service so first you will see some get operations over here you can see that there are a lot of get operations that are happening and what is the csp that is being targeted the csp that is being targeted is all windows update csp so the full path is vendor msft policy config update and then defer quality update period in days and if you remember when we were making the policy this option was there right we had an option in the intune policy wherein we could set the quality update deferral period and then we could pause the quality updates and then we can exclude something and then we could include something so everything related to update that has been set in the policy is going to come down to the device via sync ml in form of sync ml which we can track in the sync ml viewer and when we are tracking it in the policy in, in this tool we can actually see the csp that is being targeted as well okay so the csp in question here is the update csp this is the node okay so first you can see that there are a whole bunch of op get operations that are happening in this node so again you can see that these are all get operations in the update node and then it's saying that pause feature update and then allow build and then stuff like that right manage preview all the options that were there in the policy and then you will see so these are all the get up op or get operations you can see that the update notification level configure deadline no reboot and all stuff like that right and then you will see that there are some add operations so first there were get operations in the sync ml then there will be add operations and in the add operations we are going to get the actual policy body and whatever was configured in the policy in the intune portal is going to be seen over here so over here you can see that uh, the, there is this add operation it is showing you the csp which we are targeting and then the data actually tells you what is the value okay so over here you can see that uh, uh, we are doing an add operation we are doing a defer quality update period in days and then the data is zero it is zero because in the portal i have set the deferral to zero if in the portal i would have set deferral to let's say 10 days then the data would be 10 days okay over here the pause quality update is actually also set to zero because i have not paused it if i pause it from the portal then again a sync ml is going to come, come down to the device and then that value is not going to be zero it's going to be something else so you can see now that there are a whole bunch of add operations that are happening and they are all targeting the update node csp 
and then in the data section it contains whatever changes that are needed to be made okay so you can see that all those uh, all the options are there i mean all the update related sub nodes are going to be uh, targeted okay so now let's say that i go to the portal i make another update ring so this was the first update ring policy that i made the update ring policy came down i took a sync ml trace and i'm showing it to you guys now let's say that i made another update ring policy and in this case what i did was i set the quality update deferral period to 6 the feature update deferral period to 6 the set feature update uninstall period to 6 and then everything was set to 6 okay now i enrolled a fresh device and then i took a sync ml trace again now you see that again an add operation have i mean obviously the get operations happened first then an add operation is happening again it's targeting the same update csp node and then over here you see it say that differ quality update period in delay in in days that is it is looking at the differral period over here what was the value 6 and over here what is the value that we see that is 6 what was the value that we saw in the previous case zero because in that case i had put the value zero over here the point that i'm trying to make is whatever we have set in the portal is coming down to the device in form of you can say that it's coming in sync ml form and it's targeting a specific csp it's targeting the relevant node over here and then uh, again it says that configure feature update uninstall period that is also set to 6 like in the policy and then configure feature update install period in days again it's set to 6 and then it's uh, deferring it again that is set to 6 and then deadline and then configure deadline for quality update configure deadline for feature update both of them are set to 6 which is in accordance with the number of days that i have set in the policy okay so the first place where we can track the policy coming down to the device is the uh uh is the intune portal and then the sync ml logs once we have checked the sync ml logs this and this has to be done real time so this is real time rest are not so once the sync ml logs have been done then we can check in the settings of the device and we can check in the event viewer as well so in the event viewer we can check the intune node as well as the registries as well as the windows related node so we are going to check all these right now so uh, uh over here you can see that if we go to start settings over here we can see the option the uh, the areas that are managed and over here you can see the area that is managed by the admin is update over here because we have deployed a update related policy and then you can see it says that some settings are managed by your organization if update related policy successfully came down to the device and then i have actually i had actually paused the option to uh, uh check for updates so over here you can see that this option is also paused right and then uh whenever it is going to check for updates we are going to get a relevant notification over here and whenever the cumulative updates are going to be downloaded it's going to update over here and over here uh, all these are being managed by my organization okay and then uh, if i click over here which says that view configured update policy i can actually see all the settings that are being managed via mdm so you can see that notify to download updates it is being managed get updates from get updates for other microsoft products it is being managed disable check for updates by the user it is being managed pause it is being managed so all these things were was something that we have set in the intune portal while we were making the policy and then we can take a look over the uh, mdm diag logs as well if we take a look over the mdm diag logs it's very easy to set it up if we go to start and then settings and then i think we already know if we go to accounts and then access worker school uh, and then we have an option of if i over here if i click on my account uh i mean i have so many accounts over here but if i click on my account and if i go into info and then uh, i have an option of generating a log as well right so if i click on create report over here it's going to create the mdm diag logs in this location c drive users public mdm diagnostic uh, in this location so if i go to this location i can see that 
all the policies that are coming down to the device and this is the configuration source which in this case is Intune. So it is telling us that update related information is coming down. What is the parameter that we are uh, modifying? What is the default value? What is the set value? What is the context and stuff like that, right? And then the registry. So I've already spoken about this policy manager node. So if we go to HKLM software, Microsoft policy manager, this policy manager hive is the MDM related hive wherein any MDM related policy are first going to land here. So we have to go to policy manager and then uh, current and then device and then update. And this is going to be updated with everything that was configured in the policy that came down from the Intune service. So everything that we saw in the SyncML trace, that all is going to be updated over here. So you can see it contains information like uh, uh, configure deadline and then configure the deferral period and exclude driver, include driver, pause, quality update. I mean, all the features, all the options that were there, that were configured in the portal, in the update ring are going to be updated over here. And then we are going to see the, so whenever a policy from Intune comes down to the device, there is a location in the event viewer logs as well, wherein we can track it, right? So now we can track the flow of the device receiving the Windows update ring policy from the event viewer logs. What is the location? The location is Microsoft Windows and then device management and then enterprise diagnostic provider and then admin. Over here, you can see that it has received a policy. How do I know? Because over here, I see that the area is update and then uh, it is in a device context. If I keep going, you can see that there are a lot of uh, I mean, there are a lot of attributes that are being changed. So over here, you can see that allow auto update, allow MU update service, exclude something, defer quality update period in days, pause quality update period in days, configure feature update uninstall period, configure deadline. So all, all the attributes that were there in the policy are same as the attributes that we saw in the SyncML are same as the attributes that we saw in the MDM dialogues and they correlate with the attributes that we are seeing in the event viewer logs as well. Okay. So you can see that area for all of them is update and you can see that it is which, which option it is actually targeting, right? So it's the same location. And over here, you can see that, uh, I've taken a screenshot and then uh, in the policy, I have selected an option which says that notify the end user, right? So over here, I get a notification as well for the restart. So this is the restart notification, which is set as per the policy. Therefore, the device gets a notification. Once I click on restart, it does a working on update. Don't turn off your computer. And once that is done, then I can in the update history, I can see what are the cumulative updates or the quality updates that have been installed in this machine. Okay. And then I have an option of checking the windows update related logs as well. How do I check the windows update related logs? I have to go to C drive windows logs, and then there is a folder called windows update. This contains a bunch of ETL files and these ETL files contain all the update windows update related information. Like, so let me just go back to the initial diagram that will make more sense. So in this diagram, we saw that the device was reaching out to the Intune service, right? This step three. So in step two, we can see the MDM diag logs, the sync ML logs, the event viewer logs and all that stuff. How do I track step three? The step three can be tracked by taking a look over the windows update logs. That is what we were doing right now. We were taking a look over the windows update logs. And how do we take a look over the windows update logs by going into this location. Now you can see that there are so many ETL files, right? So what we can also do is we can run this PowerShell command that is get hyphen windows update log. What this does is this compresses and, uh, uh, I mean, it 
compresses all these ETL files into a text file, if you would call it, which is more readable. Okay or into a dot log kind of a file because we cannot open dot etl file in svc trace or in a notepad right there is a different tool that we will need which i'll show you guys later on so if i run this get a hyphen windows update log then it, it actually uh, converts all the etls that we had into one place so all these etls are merged and then it uh, gives us that uh, windows i mean it gives us the output in this file which is better readable so if I double click and open this file, we can see the, we can see everything in. So you remember that diagram, which I just showed you in that diagram, the step three was device was reaching out to the Windows service. So everything that is happening in step three, that is what we are able to track in this Windows update log. So over here, you can see that it is downloading content from this location. So in the step three, what were we doing? The device was reaching out to the Windows service and it was downloading all the relevant updates, right? It was downloading it and then there was that UUP component and there was orchestrator which was scheduling it and stuff like that. So all that is tracked in this log. You can see that it is saying generating download request. It is creating a job ID and then it is uh, uh, streaming the data. It is, I mean, it is timing that how long it took to download the update and then the download is uh, the update is downloaded in the temp location and then the orchestrator runs the arb calls the arbitrator which uh, uh, initiates the installation and i mean all all those processing is going to happen right so all those can be all everything that is happening in step 3 can be tracked under the windows update log we can either take a look over the etl directly and open it if this is not that convenient for you you can run this powershell command it will uh, compress all those ETLs into a single file and then we can open this uh, single file in notepad or in this SVC trace view. Okay. So uh, if I take a look over for, if I go down further in this windows update log, you can see that total download size of the update is this, and then it has been successfully uploaded. And then there was a job ID that was created, receive completion event and then stuff like that. Right. And then a download request has been created and then a download job is there and this is the endpoint. So over here we can track everything in step three when the device is reaching out, what is it downloading so that if at any point anything is failing, this log will actually tell us what failed, which component of windows update in the device failed, which sub component failed so that we can take a look over that uh, uh, more closely. And then there is this ODC log also, which we can generate. The ODC log also gives us the windows update dot log. So you can get the windows update dot log from the ODC log, or you can run this PowerShell command and it is also going to give you the same thing. Okay. So this is all there is to a windows update ring policy. The windows update ring, pol there is nothing much to it. We are making a policy coming down to the device and uh, the device is reaching out to the windows service and is going to download the relevant update from the windows service everything over here can be tracked at the device end in sync ml in windows event viewer logs in registry everything over here can be tracked in windows update dot log by running that powershell command which is going to compress everything that is there in the etl and everything over here is under the realm of windows Everything in step one and step two is under the realm of Intune. Again, when we do the trouble, I mean, when we do the actual demo, I will show show all of the all these things to you guys, and then we will understand this in more detail. But I, I hope that by now we understand what exactly quality update is. Quality update is nothing but updates that are fixing hot fixes or vulnerabilities and how they are managed from Intune. They are managed from Intune by making something called a Windows update ring policy. And now we should also know how we can troubleshoot and track it. Like what we can see from the portal, which logs to check in the device end, which registry to check, what to expect in sync ML viewer and when to check for the Windows update log and when not to check for it. Right. Okay. So now let's move to the next topic, which is taking a look over the feature updates in windows device and managing it via intune so uh, what are actually feature updates we have spoken about 
that feature updates is a update that is changing a feature in an operating system right on contrary to a quality update which is a cumulative update and it is fixing some vulnerabilities or hotfix so on a windows 10 feature updates are technically newer version of the operating system which are available twice a year we have already spoken about this once in march or april and second in the fall during the spring and the fall time frame they are also known as a semi annual release because they are being released twice every year and they are supported for 18 months after the support cycle ends you must upgrade to a supported version to continue getting security and non security patches so let's say that there was a uh, so let's say that in uh, we, we have a version 9 windows 10 1903 so the next version will be in windows 10 1909 after every 6 months and the first version that was windows 10 1903 that will be in support for 18 months since it was released so for those 18 months on every second tuesday of uh, every month there will be quality updates released and after those 18 months the support cycle will end and we will have to upgrade to let's say windows 10 1909 to receive the relevant quality updates for uh, for that operating system version these updates likely include new feature visual improvements and significant enhancements to improve the overall experience and security however unlike the previous uh, servicing model like we had in windows vista and windows 7 feature updates include a smaller list of changes which help reduce the compatibility issues and minimize the learning curve for the users so as as we discussed earlier in case of windows vista and windows 7 a newer operating system version would come every three to four years right so therefore ev every time a newer operating system version would come it would be jam-packed and it would have a a lot of changes however over here given that every new feature update is coming every six months uh, uh, or it is a semi-annual there are a lot of changes but then there aren't that many therefore it reduces the compatibility related issues and the learning curve for the users feature updates are bigger in size than quality updates well this makes sense because quality updates was only containing hot fixes and cumulative updates however feature update is bigger right it's changing the os version the download size can be closed through 3 to 4 gb for 64 gigs or 2 or 2 gb for 32 uh, 32 bit uh, operating system uh, and uh, yeah uh, when the installation of a feature update uh, you're also when we are installing a feature update we are in a way installing a newer version of the operating system therefore it is suggested that uh, we run in so it, it it's it's likely to take more time and uh, we are more likely to run into problems than we when than we are when we are installing in quality update all that's not required all, always recommended to take a full backup uh, or backup our important files whenever we are installing any feature update and uh, feature update for windows are optional they shouldn't be uh, they shouldn't install automatically uh, if the device supports it and if the policy has been set accordingly only then the feature updates are going to take place so again feature update very simple it's changing the version of the operating system that are being installed and when we make and this is an important point when we make a feature update policy let's say that i have made a windows 10 feature update policy and in my policy i have selected windows 10 1909 what that means is when my device gets that policy if my device is running with windows 10 1903 or prior to that it is going to get updated to windows 10 1909 Right, that is what the feature of, because that's what uh, I have set in my feature update policy. However, if my machine was already running with Windows 10 20 H1 or 21 H2, then it is not going to get downgraded to 1909. The other way doesn't work. So what I'm doing is if when I'm making a Windows 10, uh, when I'm making a Windows feature update policy, what I'm saying is this is the minimum level of operating system that is going to be maintained by all the devices that are targeted by this policy now there might be devices which have an operating system version of one later than what we have set in the policy 
that would be the case if the device was already updated and then this policy came down so this policy is not going to downgrade it this policy is only going to do two things first if the device when it receives the policy is at a lower level then specified in the policy then it's going to upgrade it and what if it is at the same level then it is not going to get a future update offered what that means by what what i mean by that is uh, and this is a little important let's say that there are two devices device 1 and device 2 and this device was running with windows 10 1903 and this device was running with 20h1 uh, or uh, 21h1 and in my feature update policy i have selected the version 1909 okay so what this means is when this 1909 policy feature update policy comes down to this device the my my device device one is going to get updated to 1909 and it won't be updated to any version later than 1909 because my feature update policy is restricting the device to get any further updates any update higher than 1909 my device is not going to get that offered However, so what, what did this feature update do? It did two things. First, it updated the 1903 to 1909. Second, it made sure that this machine was not offered any other, any sub subsequent or any successive updates after 1909. So in a way, this device was frozen to the 1909 state. However, if the same policy was targeted to another device which was already running with 20H1 version, this 20H1, 20H1 or 20H2, these all come after 1909, right? So I am telling that my device should be frozen to 1909, but my device is already at 20H1. So this won't be rolled back to 1909. This device will continue to be at 20H1 okay so this is an important point that i wanted to distinguish the feature update policy brings the device to a specified windows version and freezes it meaning it brings it brings the 1903 to 1909 and it freezes it there therefore subsequent updates will not be offered to this device while the feature update remains static devices can continue to install quality and security updates that are available what this means is this device will no longer be offered any more security update uh, any more feature updates but then the quality update which is made in the windows update ring policy that will continue to be provided to this 1909 version of windows as long as 1909 is a supported version uh, um, um, um however what however what the slide is uh, calling out is uh, the downgrade of the operating system that does not happen i'm not going to talk about this point right now that uh, how because uh, that intune communicates with the dss what dss is and how that communication has happened we are going to cover that in the flow but for now i hope we understand what feature update is and how it works so feature update uh, uh, in the feature update policy we can select the feature update version that we want our device to remain at like windows 10 1909 or uh, 20h1 20h2 windows 11 whatever intune support setting a feature update to any version that rem remains in support at the time when we are creating the policy so right now if i'm creating a windows update uh, policy over there i can select select only those versions of operating system which are still in support so right now i cannot choose let's say uh let's say 1608 or whatever that version was right uh i mean i cannot choose a very old version whatever version is in support right now i can choose only those uh the device updates to the version specified in the policy a device that already runs a later version of windows remains at its current version by freezing the version the device feature set, uh, set remains stable during the duration of the policy so this device which was already at a later version is going to remain at the current version it's not going to get downgraded and we are going to later on talk about safeguard hold as well any device which is there in the safeguard which has a safeguard hold uh, that device is not going to get offered any feature updates and it's not going to install and this point i am going to talk about this point later on okay now let's talk about 
uh, addition requirements there are some addition requirements for wind uh, for uh, deploying a windows feature update policy the addition of the windows device should be windows 10 11 pro it, or it can be enterprise or it can be education and uh, this is one of the prerequisites that the telemetry needs to be turned on why does this telemetry need to turn on how can we turn on this telemetry we are all going to see that very shortly however this is a very important slide even though we have very clearly documented it it took me a lot of time to figure this point out and since i had not clarified this point there was a lot of time that i had to waste while i was doing the uh, lab and while i was doing the repro and the point is in addition to a Intune license, your organization must have one of the following subscription as well. So let's say that I have an Intune A direct license or I have a EMS E3 or a E5 license using which I have enrolled a Windows device to Intune. And on that device, if I'm deploying a Windows, if I'm deploying a Windows feature update policy from Intune, it is not going to work. What I mean by that is just Intune A Direct or E3 or, or EMS E3 or E5 is not sufficient. We need to have or the user needs to have one of these licenses present as well. He needs to have a Windows 10 E3 or E5 or he needs to have a if it's an education customer. So if it's an enterprise customer, he can have an enterprise E3 or E5. If it's an education customer, he needs to have a Windows in Education A3 or A5 or he can have a M365 Business Premium or M365 A3 A5 license available. So if you just have EMS E3 E5, that is not going to suffice. You might need to have these Windows specific licenses or you can have a M365 E3 or E5 license. Uh, over here as mentioned m365 e3 or a5 so this windows related license these licenses are present in m365 f3 e3 or f5 e5 and m365 a3 or a5 so m365 is a bigger bucket of license it contains many small licenses and uh, if you have a m365 e3 e5 a3 a5 then it is all included but if you just have the EMS E3 or E5 license, which is the Intune license, which I guess it contains Azure AD uh, P1 as well. I think EMS E5 contains Azure AD P1 as well. That is not going to suffice. Why? We are going to come to that later. So this is something that is very clearly documented, but it took me a while to figure out, even though it's clearly documented. So make sure that just having Intune license is something that is going to fall apart if you don't have this extra okay all right so before we talk about the flow and the registry and the logs again let's see how to make a feature update policy from windows uh, from uh, for windows from intune again this option was not there as far as i remember back in 2019 this is one of i wouldn't say it's new anymore but this is something that was i guess inculcated into the portal probably in 20 19 end or 2020 okay so what we have to do is we have to go to the intune portal we have to go to feature update for windows 10 it still says preview but it is no longer in preview it is generally available for everybody you have to click on create profile and then once you click on create profile uh, you have an option of selecting the feature update so this feature update is so what we are doing over here is we are saying that this is the version of windows 10 or windows 11 which needs to be offered to the devices to which we are targeting this policy if the device already has this version it is supposed to be frozen to this version which means that no subsequent version should be provided to the device and any device which already has a later version is not going to roll back to this version okay so over here i have an option of selecting so these are the uh, you can only see those versions over here which are still in support 
So the oldest version that is still in support over here, I can see is 20H2. So what this means is if I have a, if I enroll a device which is running with Windows 10 1903 and I target this div and I target this policy and select Windows 10 version 20 H2 option over here and select the option uh, make update available as soon as possible or I can uh, or I can uh, select a specified date then my 1903 version machine is going to get the 20 H2 update offered to it. It's going to update it, install it, but it won't get the 21 H1 or 21 H2 version offered because it will be frozen to this version. Okay, that's what window. That's what the feature update policy is doing. Now, what is the flow that is happening at the background? That is very important to understand. And there is so when when I talk about feature update, there are two things which actually stand out to me which I believe is well I guess it is documented maybe we need to document it in bold and in highlight first is this license thing that in addition to an Intune license we need to have one of the following licenses as well this is very 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 important because usually we are under the impression that just having an EMS E3 or E5 is going to suffice, which is not the case here. Okay. The second point that I want to uh, highlight here is uh, the device in this case, and this is a difference between a processing of a feature update versus processing of a quality update. So in case of quality update, what we saw was that the Intune admin was creating a policy and the policy was coming down to the device, right? However, in this case, that is not the case. In this case, when we understand the flow, we will see that the Intune service never sends a feature update policy down to the device. Okay. In the previous case, what we saw, we saw that in step two, the Intune service was deploying a feature update policy down to the device. And we were able to track it in the event via logs in the policy manager registry node, in the sync ML logs, in the windows update dot log, right? Over here, we cannot, even if we run a sync ML trace, even if we go to all those event via logs or those registries, we won't find anything because the Intune service is nowhere sending the policy directly down to the device. There is something else that is happening in this case. So first, let's understand all the components that is present. This is for feature update only. The previous flow that we saw was for quality update. This diagram is for explaining the flow for feature update. So on the left hand side, we have the Intune service. On the right hand side, we have the Windows update service or the DSS service. And at the bottom, we have the uh, we have the laptop. OK, the first thing that needs to be done is the communication between this device and the DSS service needs to be set up. OK, for this, we have to configure something called a telemetry in the device. So once we enable telemetry, then the device starts talking to the DSS service using its Azure AD device ID. And this is the reason why having just an Intune license is not sufficient because right now the device is talking to DSS, right? And DSS is not a component of Intune. It's a component of Windows. So how can you how can you just assign a Windows a Intune EMS E3 or E5 license and expect that using that license, this communication is also going to work? It's not going to work, right? Therefore, it's the reason why we need to have a Windows related uh, license assigned to the user as well. And if you have a M365 license, then this Windows license as well as an Intune license is a part of it. Anyways, so the first step is we have to enable telemetry how we enable it I'll, i'm going to show you show it to you guys later on but for now let's just understand that telemetry needs to be configured in the device so that the device can talk with the windows update service that is the dss service using its azure device id and this relationship is established between 
the Windows Update Service and the DSS service. Okay, that is step one. The step two is now as an Intune admin, I am going to go to the Intune portal and I am going to create a Windows feature update policy in the portal like this. Okay. I'm going to go over here. I am going to go over here and I'm going to create a feature update policy, uh, select a specific feature. What we have to remember is this feature update policy has to be applied to a device group only and not to a user group. This again is very important. Again, it's very widely documented as well. So what we do is Intune admin creates and assigns the Windows feature update policy. Okay, we assign it to a device group. That device group contains a lot of devices which are enrolled to Intune and which are Azure AD joined or hybrid Azure AD joined or whatever the case may be. And those devices have a Azure AD device ID. Okay. Now the moment the Intune admin creates an Intune policy in step number three, what happens is Intune provides that policy data and device ID to the DSS service. Okay. So let's say that I created a policy P1. Okay. I created a Windows update policy P1 at the Intune portal. Now the Intune service is going to talk with the Windows update or the DSS service and it is going to provide all the information related to P1 to Windows update service. Okay, so this communication can actually be tracked in the logs as well. But I mean, unfortunately, this can only be tracked. This is a service side log, right? So this can only be tracked by somebody who has access to the Intune service and who has access to the DSS service, which is a person working in Microsoft because only we have access to that service. So we use a tool called Kushto, wherein we can make use of the Intune device ID or the Azure AD device ID. And there are a lot of tables which we can refer to and we can check this, whether this communication is happening correctly or not. But what happens is the moment an Intune admin is creating this policy P1, that policy information is the policy information. When I say policy information, I mean the policy data and the device ID is provided to the Windows update DSS service. And what happens is a dummy policy is a equivalent policy is created over here. The policy, let's call this P1 dash. Okay. So P1 and P1 dash are both the same. The attributes are just the same just the name is different or in this case just the policy id is different but intune service has provided everything that was there in p1 to the windows update service in form of p1 dash okay so the windows update service now has p1 dash which is a, a download of all the policies that was there okay now D the dss service whenever it gets this p1 dash it takes a look over this policy, right? And this policy contains a lot of settings. It contains what is the feature of date? Like, for example, if over here I have selected 21, 20 H2, right? And if I have selected make this available as soon as possible, then this P1 dash is going to contain all that information, right? And it's also going to contain the devices Azure AD device ID. Now, when the DSS service looks at that Azure AD device ID, the Windows update service recognizes this device, right? Because this device was all this, the Azure AD device ID of the device is not going to change, right? So when this device was sending its telemetry earlier in step one, it was using its Azure AD device ID, right? Now, when the Windows update service has received the P1 dash policy from Intune, it contains the policy body, but it also contains the Azure AD device ID of the device. So the DSS service recognizes the device and now it makes a note of what updates are supposed to be provided to the device. Now, let's say that this, this P1 dash was not here then Windows update will provide all the applicable updates to this device, right? But now P1 dash is here and in P1 dash, we are saying 
that the only update that needs to be provided to the device is 20H2. Any update after 20H2, like 21H1, 21H2 or Windows 11 should not be provided because the device needs to be frozen to 20H2. Right. So then DSS recognizes the device ID and makes a note of what the device is allowed to be offered and when. OK, so that is what is happening in step four. Now in step five, the device is going to reach out to the Windows update service or the DSS service in its when it, whenever it runs a schedule or whenever it runs a sync. And it's going to request for all the feature updates that are applicable for this device except the safeguard holds if there are any safeguard holds then those updates are not going to be provided other than that this device is going to request for all the updates so let's say that this device is running with windows 10 1903 so this device will say that okay tell me all the updates that are all the feature updates that are applicable for me now, when the device goes to the DSS service, the DSS service is going to see the device's Azure AD device ID and say that, okay, you know what? To this device ID, there is a policy called P1 dash, which is equal to P1, which is already targeted to this device ID. So the DSS service is not going to offer any update. It is only going to offer 20 H1 or 20 H2, whatever I have selected in my policy in P1 dash and after 20 H1 or after 20 H2, it's not going to offer any other update. So in step six, you see that DSS offers the applicable feature updates, which is installed in the device and the post installation behavior is as as in is in accordance with whatever was selected in the P1 dash policy or whatever was selected in the P1 policy. So in step six, that uh, the newer operating system version, which in this case is Windows 10 20 H1 or 20 H2 comes down to the device. The device will download it. The device will install it. Now the device will upload the relevant data to the DSS service. That is once it is installed, the device will tell the DSS service that, OK, you know what? Installation is done. And then the DSS service will forward that information to the Intune service for reporting and say that, OK, this is the feature update that you deployed to this device and the installation was done successfully. And then the same information will be uh, deployed. I mean, it will be shown in form of any organizational report or any kind of reporting that we have. OK, so again, um, I hope that this diagram helps us understand uh, the the flow that is happening in case of feature update policy just a couple of highlights first highlight is the in the policy that we made the p1 policy usually what happens is whenever we make a device configuration policy or any kind of policy that policy comes down to the device right using the mdm sync session or the mdm channel in this case the p1 policy is not directly delivered to the device by the intune service P1 policy is delivered to the DSS. DSS makes a copy of that policy. Let's call that P1 dash. And when the device reaches out to the DSS service and requests for the update, Windows sees that, okay, the request is coming from the device ID XYZ. And there is a policy named P1 dash, which is already deployed to a device with device ID XYZ. Therefore, window DSS service is not going to provide any update. It is only going to provide those feature updates which have been approved by the Intune admin in the P1 or in the P1 dash policy that is going to be deployed to the device. The device downloads it, installs it. Then the device reaches out to the DSS again and informs it that the installation was successful. And then DSS informs the Intune service that, okay, everything is good. Okay. So, the first thing, uh, the first thing here and the uh, and the key takeaway should be policy never comes down directly to the device. Second, this is a prerequisite. The telemetry needs to be set up. The device needs to communicate with the Windows update service beforehand before all of this processing is happening. We will talk very shortly about how to set up the telemetry. And the third, the licensing. Since there is this service involved in the mix, that is the Windows update or the DSS service, just having a EMS E3 or E5 will not suffice. We need to have a Windows related license as well, 
which is a part of the EMS uh, E5 suite. Not EMS E5, I mean the M365 licensing, right? So we need to have this M365 business premium licensing or the M365 F3 or E3 or E5 or A3 or A5 for education. Okay, so um, DSS service is, so this is just a pointer of what we discussed until now. Just for a quick recap, DSS is the deployment scheduling service. This is the deployment scheduling service which is running over here. And we must first configure the telemetry. How we configure the telemetry? We configure it using a CSP or a policy in the Windows device. The device leverages its Azure AD device ID and establishes a relationship with DSS so that it can send all its update related data to DSS. So this is talking about the step one. Once the telemetry is established, the device will start talking and communicating with DSS. It will start sending all its related update related information to the DSS service. Once the client has been enabled to do that, it can take up to 72 hours for the client to establish that relationship. This is important. So once you have enabled the telemetry, it can take up to 72 hours uh, to do this. So you will have, we might have to wait up till, in my experience, it hasn't taken uh, until three days, but it can take up till three days for this relationship to be established. Now the device will start sending all its update related data to DSS and DSS and device become friends. So this and this are in sync now. Once this is done, then Intune has an ability of talking to DSS. So this channel is already pre-established. This Intune talking with DSS, this channel is already pre-established. Okay, we don't have to set that up. Intune is a Microsoft service. DSS is also a Microsoft service. They both are configured in a way that they both can talk with each other. So what we do is we make a feature update policy. So Intune, a feature update policy is made by the Intune admin in the Intune portal. Intune gives the feature update policy managed by the Intune admin with its policy ID and the Azure AD device ID of the device to DSS. Creating a feature update policy in Intune creates an equivalent DSS policy so for every feature update policy in Intune, there will be a subsequent policy in DSS as well. So just the example that I gave that the feature update policy in Intune was P1. So the subsequent uh, feature update, so, so subsequent uh, policy in DSS is let's say P1 dash. Okay. And when I'm saying over here that Intune gives the feature update policy with the policy ID to DSS. So this is there in the Intune service the same diagram again and this is there in DSS and they both are talking with each other. So when this policy P1 is given to P1 dash, as I said, this can actually be tracked in Kushto if you have access to the Intune service and to the DSS service, right? So if you target the correct, uh, correct uh, tables in Kushto, you can actually see this policy being deployed to the device and you can see the policy ID of this device. I mean this, you can see the policy ID of P1 and you can actually see that it's replicating to the P1 dash policy ID. Okay. So Intune will take the policy data plus the device ID and hand it over to the DSS. That is what is happening over here. We can check and confirm that the Azure AD ID has been added to the DSS and in the assignment list, thus, uh, uh, thus getting and uh, policy targeted to it. The policy given by the Intune service to DSS contains all the relevant information like the feature which needs to be given because in this policy we we create we provided all the information right everything that was there in the portal that where we need to freeze it whether it's going to be 20 h1 or 20 h2 we are targeting it to which device when the feature needs to be installed and stuff like that right the different period and stuff like that the feature update to which the device should be uh, uh, the policy which was there the p1 policy contains all the information Therefore, the P1 dash policy also contains all that information, right? So when this policy comes down to this device, the DSS service recognizes this policy and recognizes the device ID in this policy because the DSS service was already talking to that device, right? This is the device. The DSS service was already talking to this device because this device was already sending its telemetry to DSS using its device ID. Now the same device ID is present over here as well. So when DSS takes a look over this policy P1 dash, it recognizes this policy. 
Okay, so now when this D1 device is going to go back to the DSS service again and request for the applicable updates, applicable feature updates, then DSS is not going to provide just any feature update to this device. It is going to provide updates to this device in accordance with the P1 dash policy, which is in accordance with the P1 policy, which was created by the Intune service in the Intune portal. So the DSS will offer the applicable feature updates as per the policy body it has already received from Intune. Intune already communicated with DSS informing if the device should receive a feature update or not. What is the feature update it should really receive and stuff like that. The device will check if there are any safeguard holds. If there are no safeguard holds, then it is going to download the feature update which is provided to it. So in our case, we the in our policy, we have selected 20H2. So that is the information present here in P1 dash as well. So DSS is going to uh, offer 20H2 to the device. Let's say the device is running with 1903. It's going to get 20H2 offered only if there is no safeguard hold. If there is no safeguard hold, then the device is, we'll talk about safeguard hold later on. So uh, if the, if there is no safeguard hold, it's going to download and install the relevant feature update. Once it is done, it's going to inform the DSS service that, okay, all done. We are all good. DSS is going to inform the Intune service that, okay, all done. You can update the telemetry. When I say telemetry, I mean, uh, you can update the reporting at your end. And so, yeah, the device sends the, sends the data back to the DSS. DSS will forward the, uh, the information back to the Intune service for reporting. The major heavy lifting in this case is done by the DSS. From Intune, we just made a policy. I don't, I know that the diagram is looking very bad by, by now, but from Intune, all we did was we created the P1 policy and we assigned it to a group, right? Now this came over here and then Windows update provided where the DSS service is the one that offered the relevant update to the device. The device downloaded it, installed it, and then informed the DSS and DSS informed Intune service. So again, in this case, you can see a lot of heavy lifting is being done by the DSS service, right? That's why we need to, if things are not working correctly. So first we will, during troubleshooting, we will see that from Intune service, we need to do troubleshooting and make sure that policy was correctly created, correctly deployed. Intune service spoke with the Windows update service. This P1 was correctly made. This P1 dash was correctly made. And the device was talking with the DSS and it was telling, sending its telemetry. Now, after that, if the device still does not get the correct feature update policy offered, let's say that in P1, I selected 20 H2, but the device get 20, uh, 21 H1. That is a update later than what we selected in the policy offered to it. Then there is a lot of windows related troubleshooting that we will have to do. But I hope that by now we have understood the flow that what is it that Intune is doing? What is it that Windows Update is doing? And the major keys here, that is Intune is not sending the policy directly to the device and there is nothing uh, th there is nothing that we will see in the policy manager registry node or in the sync ML logs because Intune never directly spoke to the device and provided the policy. And there is that extra uh, licensing that is needed and just having EMS E3 or E5 is not going to suffice. Feature update unlike update ring policy does not deploy policy CSP towards the device. Again, already spoken about this, cannot stress on this anymore. We will not see anything in the event we are sync ML MDM diag logs or in the registry in the device uh, being updated. When I say registry, I mean the policy manager node or the MDM hive registry. That is because the P1 policy was never sent down to the device. It was that P1 was sent to DSS, which made a P1 dash. And that P1 dash came down to the device when the device was talking to the DSS service and was requesting for an update, right? So the communication that the communication happens between Intune and Windows update or the DSS service. So the policy related communication is happening between here and here, right? The poly usually you would see that the policy related communication happens between here and here, right? Any policy that we make in Intune comes down from Intune service over here via the SyncML session. In this case, that is, that is not how it is, right?
okay feature update policies cannot be applied during autopilot out of the box right what it means is let's say that i have a windows 10 device we'll talk about autopilot and intune uh, for windows update in detail later on but let's say that i have a windows 10 device running with 1903 and i'm autopiloting that device the device is out of the box right now so during the out of the box the device is not going to get updated from 1903 to 20h2 right because feature update policy is something that happens down the line the telemetry needs to be set up once the telemetry has been set up then device will talk to the dss service p1 dash will be created over there p1 and the device will run a sync and run to the dss request for the policies and then accord in accordance with p1 dash the relevant feature update will be provided to the device so that takes a lot of time that is not going to happen during oobe so if we are expecting that we are autopiloting a device and during the oob phase itself if the device was targeted by a feature update telling the device to upgrade to 20h2 then during the oob itself the device should upgrade from 1903 to 20h2 that is not going to happen okay this is a requirement need to make sure that the telemetry is turned on so that the as we saw in the diagram so that in step one the device is able to this telemetry needs to be set up so that the device communication between the device and the dss service that is happening fine right all right and then there are a couple of other services that needs to run as well uh, the microsoft account sign in service that this needs to be able to run as well i'll show you guys where this service is and then the feature update deferral in period in uh, update ring must be set to zero again when we are making a policy i'll show you guys what this is this is also again very important and feature update policy needs to be deployed to a device group and not to a user group again very very important okay so out of all these things let's see how to configure all of this one of the point you see over here it says that microsoft account sign in so sign in assistant service this is a service that is running in the device we can configure this service using a windows 10 device restriction as well and set it to configured or running or not configured whatever the case may be or if the service is already running in the device then just make sure that the service is running right i mean this is a service that runs in the background needs to be able to run if this service is not running then things will not work out it's usually set to automatic and running and start or not start whenever uh, the machine is rebooting so it should be fine unless you are manually messing with it okay all right so now let's lay, take a look over how we are going to troubleshoot feature update policies and my you will see that the troubleshooting is in accordance with the flow so whatever flow we have seen over here we are going to do the troubleshooting in accordance with the flow we will first troubleshoot everything in step one then in step two then in step three then in step four then in step five so our troubleshooting will be troubleshooting always has to be in accordance with the flow if we know the flow we can do the troubleshooting okay so first we are going to check the status of the policy as seen from the portal then we will check the prerequisites in the device whether that is met or not like for example i have been saying that the device should be able to send its telemetry to dss right i've been saying it so many times how exactly do we make sure whether that is set up or not microsoft sign in assistant service i already spoke to you about that that assistant service needs to be running the safeguard hold should not be there the deferral period needs to be set correctly okay and then we can check a relationship between device and dss using graph as well in case we have access to graph explorer if not then let, let me call this an optional thing okay and then checking the event viewer log or the device side logs so these logs are after the device have so there are two kinds of event viewer logs right if intune service is sending any policy directly to the device we will see the event viewer logs over there right that is place one in this case that is not applicable because as i told you intune service never sends the policy directly to the device however whenever any installation is happening in the device there will be relevant event viewer logs as well right so the diagram is the block diagram is talking about that logs that whenever the installation of the update happens in the device the relevant logs are created in the event viewer so that is something that we can track okay 
all right so now the first thing is setting up the telemetry which i have spoken to about so many times this is how you set up the telemetry when you go to when you are creating a device restriction profile in the device restriction profile there is an option which says that share data usage it has to be set to required in the drop down we don't have to set anything else just need to go to the intune portal go to device restriction under device restriction in there is a section called reporting and telemetry so for its share usage data in this drop down we have to set it required deploy it to a device group and then it should show as succeeded over here if this is done then the telemetry has been the device has been enabled to send its telemetry to the dss service once this device once this policy comes down to the device this this is a device configuration policy right we can call this a device configuration policy once this device configuration policy comes down to the device we can go to hklm software microsoft uh, windows data collection and over here you should see a value of 1 okay under data collection which means that the device is now sending its telemetry to the dss which is a prerequisite that is step 1 one, one of the prerequisite the second prerequisite is the microsoft account sign in assistant service it should be running so you can set it to manual you can set it to automatic doesn't matter as long as the service is running we should be good you can run this you can make sure that the service is running from intune as well by creating any pol by creating a policy this policy which i showed you guys this again is there inside uh, device restriction under cloud uh, cloud and storage you can find this you can either set it from here or just make sure that the service is running long story short okay all right now uh, there is one more thing that we need to take care of if you guys remember when we were making a windows quality update profile okay not feature update when we were making a windows quality i know that this is going to be a refresher now i don't want to confuse you guys but this is important when we were making a policy for windows quality update i am going all the way back then there was an option which was telling us this option this is a update ring right this is a update ring policy and update ring is for what update ring is for quality update this is not for feature update however when we are making a quality update ring a quality uh, when we are making an update ring for managing quality update over here there is this option and this option is talking about feature update it is not talking about quality update so we have to make sure that this is always set to zero we don't want to set any deferral period for feature updates over here if you want to defer it there are other places to defer it but if you are deferring it here and if you are deferring it in those other places as well then it causes some confusion so the recommended setting is if you are deploying a feature update policy then when you are making that feature update policy over there you can select the deferral right but if you have a quality update or a update ring profile as well make sure that you are not selecting a deferral period over here as well because if you are selecting a deferral period over here as well as you are selecting a deferral period in the in the feature update profile then it causes confusion so the rule of thumb feature update deferral period over here we are going to always set it to zero and this is something that we have documented as well in our public facing documentation okay so uh, 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 all right so coming back over here in our windows update ring profile what we have done we have selected the deferral period to zero okay so now when we are troubleshooting it we have to make sure that defer feature uh, feature updates period in days over here the value that you see is zero this is under hk this is under hklm uh, software microsoft policy manager current device update so this node is not for feature update because as i said feature update policy are never deployed from the device to the from, from the intune service to the device right 
when we create p1 a p1 dash gets created in dss p1 is never deployed to the device but if we talk about quality updates the quality updates comes down to the device right and the quality update when we are making a quality update or when we are making a when i say quality update what i mean is a update ring policy when we are making an update ring policy for managing the quality update over there there is a option which says defer feature updates as well right so that needs to be set to zero once you have set that to zero in the policy manager node over here you will be able to see zero over here just need to make sure that this has been set to zero and there are a couple of g status which should be not zero so the location for that is hklm software microsoft windows nt current version app compact appraiser G gwx this is actually related to uh, safeguard holds we'll talk about this later that what exactly these two nodes are but we have to make sure that the g status is set to a non zero value okay now let's talk about safeguard what exactly is safeguard hold so uh, and how we can opt out of safeguard so safeguard what safeguard hold means is um let's say that my device is running with windows 10 1903 okay and i want to upgrade it to windows 10 1909 but there is already a known issue with upgrade of windows from 1903 to 1909 it's a known issue right so how do we fix it in this case if i deploy a windows 10 1909 to my windows 10 1903 device everything is going to get messed up right everything is going to get failed therefore what we do is we have something called a safeguard hold what that safeguard hold does is it makes sure that if i have a device running with windows 10-1903 given that we already know that upgrading it to windows 10-1909 is going to be of an issue because it's a known issue i am going to safeguard this device from updating to windows 10 1909 so even if as per my feature update policy the device should get windows 10 1909 offered the device is still not going to get that feature offered right so think of safeguard hold as kind of a lock that we are putting in this lock because we already know that this version does not work well with this device or with this operating system of the device therefore we are saying that this operating system which in this case is windows 10 1903 should never be offered to a device which is running with windows 10 19 190 i mean a version previous to that right how can i make sure that there are no safeguard holds in my device there are ways of manually checking it as well what we need to do is we need to go to that device and we need to run the command get hyphen fu blocks so this is a command which is going to run uh, and then it's going to take a look over all the appraisers and then all the relevant xml files and then it is going to check these three registries okay and then when it what are these three registries these are three registries which i checked manually as well if you see it's going under appraiser and sec and gwx and this is where we just checked right now under gwx and it should not have any uh, like we were saying that it should not have any uh, zero value right it should have any integer value it should be a non zero value so if it has if the device has any safeguard then the value over here is going to probably going to be zero so that is exactly what this command is also running and this command is checking whether there are any safeguard holds or not right so this command ran and this command found out that there were no uh, safeguard holds or blocks that were found in this device which we can run manually as well so for that uh, what we'll have to do is first we will have to install this module there is this uh, module called uh, uh, why am i blocked 
first you install this module then you import this module once you have done that then you run this command get hyphen a few blocks it's going to tell you the list of safeguard holds that are present in this operating system if there is a safeguard hold then obviously the device is not going to get that operating system offered right there is a very good blog you can probably pause your screen and go over here it's a third party blog but it talks about the feature update blocks and safeguard holds in detail okay now there is a way of opting out of safeguard holds as well now again it's not recommended well let's say that no i don't want to get into the safeguard hold i want all my devices should be updated to windows 10 1909 irrespective of the, whether there is a safeguard hold or not then for that there is this uh, csp that we can deploy to the devices which is update uh, uh, under the update node there is the csp called disable windows update for business safeguard needs to be deployed to a device group and we don't recommend doing it but it can be done so if we have deployed a say if we have if, if we have deployed this csp which removes safeguard hold then even if there was any safeguard that is uh, still the device is going to get the feature update offered so i hope that this was not too confusing if a normal scenario if we have selected 20 h2 my 1909 device is going to get the 20H2 feature update offered to it by the DSS. Exception, there is one exception, that is unless there is any safeguard hold in the device which prohibits a Windows 10 1909 device from updating from Windows 10 1909 to 20H2 because of any known issue. Now, if I still want that update to be happen, then I can override that by disabling the safeguards. How can I disable the safeguards? I can disable that safeguard by sending out this CSP down to the device and disabling it. Or we can use it, use a group policy as well. And this is the module that we use in the device that we run in the device like this and it tells us whether there were any safeguard present in the device or not if there were any if there were no safeguards then you are going to see an output like this if there was a, in this xml if there was so it creates an xml so uh, and in this xml it uh, i mean it this is the output it converts it to xml so that it's in a readable format if we double click and open that XML, we can see whether there were any safeguards or not. Okay, so this is the output. Okay, all right. So now let's talk about uh, uh, how are we going to troubleshoot a Windows feature update related policy. So the first thing that we did was we checked the prerequisite. When I, ch when I say the prerequisite, I mean I checked whether the telemetry has been set for the device or not whether the status of that telemetry so we have set the telemetry using a device configuration profile so the first step was seeing whether this device configuration profile was succeeded or not second step was seeing whether if that device configuration profile was succeeded and whether under that data collection node whether this has been uh, set to one or not if it has been set to one that means the device is not talking to dss and sending its telemetry Step three was checking whether the Microsoft account sign in assistant service is running or not. Step four was making sure that in the quality update profile or in the update ring profile, the differ feature update period in days is set to zero. There should not be any differrals set in the update ring profile. Step four was making sure that there was no uh, safeguard by going into this registry location and making sure that the g status value is non zero or by running the inst uh, the ymi blocked uh, uh, module and then running this command get hyphen a few blocks which gives us a list of safeguards applicable on my device so these were the prerequisites that we checked first then we are going to check whether uh, the feature update policy that we have deployed to the device group whether it is still supported and whether it is correctly assigned or not right so uh, over here in this case i see that my feature update is still assigned and is supported so over here i see that i have a device which is running with windows 10 20 h2 and i have selected a i have made a feature update profile 
and in my profile I have selected 21 H1 so once this policy comes down to this device this 20 H2 should be upgraded to 21 H1 assuming these prerequisites are met all these prerequisites are met and the user who has enrolled the device has the relevant licensing in place as well okay all right so uh, 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 there is one more thing that we need to set up we have set up the telemetry we have checked the service there is one more thing that needs to be set up and that is windows health monitoring how do we set up windows health monitoring we set up windows health monitoring by setting up a there is another profile that we have to make a device configuration profile and in that device configuration profile in the health monitoring we have to set it to enable and in the scope we have to select windows updates okay so we uh, windows health monitoring also needs to be set up and it needs to be deployed to a device group over here you can see that i have the name of the policy that i have created is intune data collection and it is succeeded the health monitoring is successfully deployed to the device so this is also a prerequisite once the health monitoring is deployed to the device again it has its own registry location its registry location is hklm software microsoft policy under policy because this is a policy coming from intune right so policy manager current device device health monitoring and then if we look at configure device health uh, monitoring scope over here by default we only see boot boot performance but after we have made this policy and after we have selected windows update over here now we will be able to see window uh, boot performance as well as windows updates so before we saw only boot performance but after we had selected windows update as well then we see windows updates over here as well under policy manager current device device health monitoring right so to summarize telemetry needs to be set in the device how do we set telemetry i just showed you guys we need to make a device configuration profile second the device health monitoring needs to be set in the device how do we set up device health monitoring by creating a device configuration profile when you are making a device configuration profile there are many kinds of device configuration profiles right like device restriction pkcs scap wifi similarly another kind of that is windows health monitoring and when you are selecting windows health monitoring you have to select enable and over here you have to select windows updates okay and then once you deploy it once it's successfully deployed via intune over here in the registry you will be able to see windows updates over here as well okay so all the all these were the prerequisites once these prerequisites are have been there are there in place now from the portal we can actually run a report and see what all devices are going to get the feature update offered right so over here uh, we will take a look over this in detail when we are taking a look over the uh, reporting part of this nugget but over here you can see that there is this device and the update status is currently pending and the update uh, update is in progress right and now it's the same device and then as you can see uh, the device has got the device was earlier running with 20 h1 now it is uh, running with 20 21 h1 because 21 h1 is what i had selected in my it was first running with 20 h2 now it's running with 21 h1 because that is what i selected in my feature update profile as well right so it got the feature update profile and uh, if i go into start settings and then uh, windows update over here i can see that 20 h2 is getting downloaded and uh, once the download has been done the installation happens and this is what i meant when i was talking about the event view logs so let me go back to the block diagram so we were talking about how we are going to track everything using the block diagram so we saw the status of the policy in the portal yes that was done we checked all the telemetry we checked whether the telemetry was set prerequisites we checked the telemetry microsoft sign in service assistant 
we made sure that the deferral in the update ring was set to zero. We saw there was no safeguard hold. I should add one more thing. We, over here, we have to see that Windows Health Monitoring has been set properly. So let me just call it Windows Health Monitoring. This has to be set correctly. This was also done. This is optional. I'm going to leave this for now. Once all of these were done, then we have to check the logs, right? Which logs? We are not going to check the MDM diag logs, right? Because feature update is never deployed to the device via MDM. So there will be nothing in the MDM diag logs. So where do we check it? We check it. We check a different kind of event via log. Which log is this? This is a, a Windows update client log, right? So which is something we are checking under system. So whenever an operating system gets installed or any changes are made, there has to be something in the system logs, right? So over here, you can see that successfully uh, Windows successfully installed the following version feature update to version 21 H2 and 21 H2 was the version that I had selected in my feature update policy. Over here, when I go into the machine now, I can see that it has been updated to 21 H2. And then once it is done, you can see that it gives us a prompt for restart as well, when depending upon what the restart behavior has been set. Okay. And uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I had a 1909, 1903 device as well. The 90, so over here, interesting thing, what I found was even though my device was running with 1903, so it's not incremental. It's not like the device is in 1903 and I have selected 20 H2 in my feature update policy. So the device will first update to 1909 and then 20H1 and then 20H2. So I have this device running with 1903 and it got a, and it's downloading an update for 20H2. So from 1903, it is directly up, updating to 20H2. Okay. And uh, over here, you can see that from the portal as well, we can see when the installation starts, it shows over here. When the installation is done, uh, it shows over here. It shows in progress for the devices that are there in progress. Okay. If in any case it fails, it is going to tell you over here as well that it failed to install. It's going to give you an error code and you can Google with the error code and find out what exactly went wrong. Or you can check the Windows update related logs or you can check the relevant event viewer logs as well to find out what exactly went wrong. Okay, now let's talk about feature update and autopilot. We have already spoken about this that if during the OOBE, the, win uh, the feature update policy don't take effect. Meaning if I have a feature update policy saying my all my devices should be at 1909 and my device is currently running with 1903 and I'm just autopiloting that device, the device is at OOBE and it gets the feature update policy. It's not like during the OOBE itself, it's going to get upgraded from 1903 to 1909. Because of the reasons that we already discussed, right? The device needs to set up the telemetry and Windows health monitoring and that service and everything needs to be set up. It needs to communicate. Policy P1 needs to replicate to DSS service and P1 dash needs to be created. And then the device is going to check with the DSS and going to download the uh, uh, applicable feature updates, right? So all that needs to be done. So, do you, so long story short, during autopilot, the feature update policies are not applicable. Only critical driver, driver updates and Windows zero day updates get installed during OOBE. Feature updates and policies cannot be applied out of the box. Instead of uh, policies apply, uh, the policy apply after the, the feature update policy apply after the device has finished provisioning, which can take a day or maximum it can take up to three days or 72 hours, which we already mentioned the time that is taken for the device to communicate with the DSS, right? Now let's talk about co-management. Again, this is an important point because uh, uh, if, if our devices were are co-managed, then I guess sooner or later, the end goal is moving all the workloads from SECM to Intune. And when we are doing that, there are some things that we need to keep in mind. If we co-manage device with configuration manager, feature update policy might not immediately take effect on devices when we newly configure the Windows update workload to Intune. What I mean by that is, let's say that all the workload was with SECM. I just moved the workloads to Intune. Okay, 
so workload is something by which we determine which component of the os will be managed by secm and which component of the os will be managed by intune right so let's say that the workload was set to secm now i have moved that workload to intune so it's not like intune is going to automatic automatically take over and then the feature update policy is going to start work start, uh, start will start to work just in a second there are some things that happen in the background there is a delay it's a temporary delay but there is a delay which we need to account for okay uh, so the recommendation is first uh, uh, i mean make the policy and even if uh, before you move the workload first you make a feature update policy you set up the telemetry you set up everything and then you go to reports and then under windows updates you go to the report tab and under feature update tab you can see whether we see a offer ready status or not once we see a offer ready state as a yes then the device is ready and is communicating with the dss and everything is set that is when the recommendation is we should move the workload so what i mean by that here is let's say that i have gone to the reports we'll take a deep dive on this later on so over here i've gone to reports these are a whole bunch of devices and there is the, the, there are three devices or four devices and then there is the state of the device which says offer ready once it is offer ready then everything is set then we should move the workload otherwise what will happen is if we move the workload and the offer ready state was not there then the device will neither be managed by a secm nor and there will be some delay before the device will be managed via intune and get the feature update policy from intune so in that interim point if the device reaches out to the dss service and requests for an update the device might get any update right it might even get 21h2 right which is not in accordance with what we have set in the policy right therefore the recommendation is before you move the workload make sure that first you're checking the portal and in the report you see your offer ready state and only then you deploy it okay all right all of this is very clearly documented in our external documentation as well and uh, okay now removing a feature update when a device is no longer assigned to any feature update policy intune waits for 90 days to unenroll that device from feature update management and to unenroll that device from the deployment service so it might it takes uh, intune will wait for 90 days after we have removed the assignment of a feature update policy from a device group why is this delay important this delay allows time to assign the device to a different policy and ensure that in the meantime device doesn't receive a feature update that it wasn't intended to get meaning let's say that the device was targeted via feature update policy which says that device should get 1903 okay now i want the device should get 1909 what will i do i will remove that device from the old policy of 1903 and assign it to 1909 so in this diff, in this lag of unassigning and reassigning or unassigning from the first policy and assigning to the second policy what if the device runs a check it will get any it will get the latest uh, feature update applied to it right at that point of time therefore we have put in this stagger of 90 days so that uh, this so that during those 90 days it is as if like the old policy is still present so obviously if we are unassigning the device from the older policy and assigning it to a new one the new one is going to take effect instantly but in the, this is just going to make sure that there is a overlap there is no place wherein the old policy is unassigned and the new policy is being assigned and if the device checks for an update what happens then right so this means that when the feature update policy no longer applies to a device that the device won't be offered any feature update until one of the following things happen the 90 days elapses the device is assigned to a new feature update policy the device is unenrolled from intune or we use some kind of graph api technique to remove the to remove this 90 days hold okay all right so this is all there was to feature update again very important 
we can even use feature update policy to update a Windows 10 device, any version, to Windows 11. Obviously, there are some prerequisites with that. As you might be aware, for a device to run Windows 11, there are some prerequisites. It needs to have a TPM. It needs to have secure boot. It needs to have a, a lot of prereqs, right? So we need to make sure that those prereqs are met. If those prereqs, prereqs are met, then using a feature update policy, we can update from any existing feature to a newer feature, which is still in support. Very important. I hope we have understood the flow. I, have, I hope we have understood the difference. I hope we have understood the prerequisites of having those, of making sure that the service is running, the telemetry is set, the Windows health monitoring is set, and the license requirement, and that the fact that the device is not re receiving policy directly from Intune, NDSS is coming into the picture and stuff like that. Right? Okay. Now, the next thing that we are going to talk about is something which has been introduced very recently and that is expedited updates so i believe this this expedite the ability to create a expedited update profile in intune was uh, introduced i guess in 2021 right around the time when there was this printer nightmare thing that happened right because what this expedited updates does is it expedites the installation of an update. Why is this important? This is important because let's say that the quality update quality updates are going to be released every Tuesday, every I mean every second Tuesday of month, right? And then there can be a deferral period as well, right? That we have put we have said that okay, you know what? Uh, I have set in the deferral of 30 days. Only after 30 days the device is going to get the new feature, right? But what if during this time there is a vulnerability and the hackers are making uh, exploiting that vulnerability, like in case of printer uh, printer uh, nightmare thing. So in that case, what happened is in uh, in case of in, in such scenarios, what do we do? We we want that the patches should be deployed to the devices ASAP, right? So if we had conventional tools, we would make a baseline and we would add all the devices and we would deploy that KB article to all the devices instantly, right? How do we do it via Intune? When this expedited update option was not there, then what we did was we downloaded that KB, we packaged that KB to a Win32 app and then we deployed that Win32 app because this expedited updates option was not there in the portal to begin with, right? But we want the patch to be deployed to all the devices and we cannot wait for the device to go through the normal quality update Windows ring channel, right? So at that point, the only option was deploying the patch in form of a KB, in form of a Win32 apps. However, now we have the expedited update option. It's kind of a policy that we can create in Intune. And we cannot push any update in form of expedited update. So whenever we are creating a policy, again, this is very important. Please pay attention. Whenever we are create, just like we created a Windows update ring, just like we created a different policy for feature update, we can create a separate policy for expedited update as well. When we are creating that policy, it gives us a list of updates that we can expedite and we can choose any update from that list only. For example, let's say that there is an update XYZ which I need to expedite and which I need to send to all my devices. But it is necessary for me. But let's say that Microsoft does not think that it is necessary for everybody. So then that XYZ, pol that XYZ update will not show up in the list of expedited updates. If it doesn't show up there, we cannot expedite it from the Intune portal. Then we'll again have to take the old route of creating a Win32 app and deploying it. What I mean by that is we can only expedite some updates which keeps on changing from time to time. Tomorrow, if let's say that there is any new hack or any new vulnerability, Microsoft will add that into the list of expedited updates that can be pushed and then we will be able to make use of it. So with expedited updates, we can speed the installation of a quality update like the most recent patch Tuesday release or an out of band security update for a zero day flaw. It is fast lane, extremely useful if we want to deploy a hotfix quickly. 
deployment of expedited update is done without the need to pause or edit your existing monthly servicing policy when it says monthly servicing policy what it means is your uh, your existing update ring so you don't need to make any changes to your existing update ring you just need to come to expert you just need to make a different kind of policy called expedited updates select the update that you want to expedite from the list of available updates and deploy it to a device group uh, for example, we might expedite a specific update to mitigate a security threat whenever normal update process would not deploy the same for some time. Not all updates can be expedited. Only Windows 10, 11 security updates that can be expedited are available to deploy with Windows with a quality update policy. So, so in that policy, we can see a list of updates which and we can choose one amongst them. It's not like tomorrow if we wake up and we think that, okay, you know what, this looks critical. Let's make this expedited update policy and let's select this patch and let's deploy it. No, that is not possible. It's going to give whatever Microsoft deems as an expedited kind of a update, only that will show up in that list and we can choose one amongst them only. To speed installation, expedited updates uses available services like WNS and push notification channel to deliver the message to device that's an expedited update is uh, 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 available to be installed. We will talk about uh, this point uh, later on when we are understanding the flow. Uh, 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 only devices that need the update receive the expedited update. If the update is not applicable, the device is not going to get it. Windows update doesn't try to expedite the update for device that already has a revision equal to or greater than the updated version. Like for example, let's say I want to deploy a patch called XYZ, right? I want to uh, expeditely deploy a patch called XYZ and my device already has a patch which is superseded by xyz it already has the latest version right or accumulated version it doesn't need that xyz patch right then that is not going to be offered to it when a restart is required to complete installation the policy helps us the expedited policy helps us manage uh, which uh, i mean how the restart behavior is going to look like updates are identified by the release version we can select only one per update policy like for example let's say that in the list of possible expedited options, I see 10 hotfixes. So in my policy, I cannot select multiple. I can select only one. If I want two fixes to be deployed as expedited, I will have to make two different policies. Update that include the letter B in their naming updates are a part of patch Tuesday. This is just a naming convention. And uh, if they are not a part of, if they are don't have the letter B in them, then they are different kind of patches. Okay. So um, how do we make this? Again, it is showing as preview. I believe it is out of preview right now. So if you go into the Intune portal over here, you can see this option, which was not there in 2019 or 2020. It's there now, which says that quality update for Windows 10 and later. This is the expedited update policy option. I'm guessing it would have made more sense if we would have used the verbiage expedited updates so that people understand that. I don't know why we don't use the word expedited updates over here, but this is the option. And then we need to click on create profile. Once we create that, then over here you see a list of expedited updates. So these, so we can choose from this list only. If there is another exp if there is another update which I think needs to be expedited, I cannot do that. I can only choose from this list. This list keeps on changing depending upon what Microsoft thinks that it might need to be expedited. So uh, I can choose from this list. I can choose the restart behavior as well. And let's say that I cho I chose this. Then this is going to be notified to the device using WNS, and the device is going to download this update and then going to install it okay all right now let's understand the flow what is the flow that is happening at the background and the logs and the registry when we are creating a expedited update policy from intune so this is the high level diagram of how expedited updates is uh, going to happen when we are pushing it via intune so uh, when we are looking at this diagram uh, this should 
to a great extent uh, correspond with the diagram or the flow that we saw for feature update because more or less the same thing is happening in this case as well. So the first thing that happens is Intune admin creates and assigns an expedited update profile. And in this case also we will see that the profile or the policy that we are making over here is not going directly to the device. Okay, so the Intune admin creates and assigns an expedited update profile. The Intune service then talks with Windows update for business service in step two and updates about the policy, the device ID and all of that information. Okay, now the Windows update for business is going to use WNS and is going to notify the device because if Windows update for business does not notify the device right now and it waits for the device to reach back to Windows update for business and do a scan and request for the applicable uh, quality updates or expedited updates, then that is going to take a lot of time, right? And the whole intent of using expedited update is that the update should be pushed at once to the device, right? And how will the update get pushed at once to the device? The update will be pushed only if the device is notified. So this works on push model and not on pull model. Okay. So we are pushing a notification to the device and telling the device that, okay, you know what, there is something that you need to get from me. Okay. So the win in step three, the windows update for business is going uh, update for business service is going to use the WNS channel and is going to update the device that, okay, you know what, there is something that you need to get from me. The Microsoft update tools. There's a something, there's a component in the OS called Microsoft update health tools. We're going to talk about what this component is later on, but this component is going to get notified. And then the Microsoft update uh, Windows update client is going to reach out to the Windows update service and request for the update that is applicable. The Windows update evaluates the build and architecture of the device and delivers the version of the update that is applicable. Over here, we are talking about the update that has been expedited and has been chosen in this policy. In step five, it comes down to the device and then the update tool monitors the expedited update process and then sends the actual status via telemetry, which is provided to the Intune service. So again, the same thing in steps as well. First, we are creating the profile. We, and when we are looking at this, there are two things that is coming out. First is this is to a great extent working like how feature update flow was working. However, there is a difference as well. In this case, we are notifying the device using WNS and telling the device that, okay, you know what, come to me and scan, scan again, because there is something that you need to get from me. Right. How, because we are not waiting for the device to come back to the windows update for business service and scan and scan its own sweet time because the update needs to be pushed ASAP. Right. So, and the other thing is we are not delivering any policy down to the device directly via Intune. Okay. So Intune admin creates and assigns the expedited update profile, which is containing how the device is going to behave and uh, which KB or which expedited update needs to be installed in the device and stuff like that. The Intune service talks to the Windows update for business service and updates about the policy and the device. This communication can be tracked using the service side logs. So if I am tracking this communication between the Intune service and the Windows update for business service or DSS, that can be done. However, for that, we need to have access to the relevant uh, database in Intune service and the relevant database in the uh, Windows update for business service. And then we can use Kush to track it. Now, uh, WNS is going to send a push notification to deliver the message to the device that an expedited update is waiting to be installed. Okay. And there is a component in the device called the Microsoft update health tools. This is going to receive the policy. The 
once the policy has been received by Microsoft Update Health Tools, then the Windows Update Client service, which is running in the device, that is going to reach out to the Windows Update in the cloud and is going to request for the applicable updates. In this case, the expedited update, which is applicable to the device, is going to be provided to it depending upon the OS build. And just to make sure that uh, that uh, whichever expedited update is going to be installed in the device is not superseded and a newer version is not already installed in the OS. And if that is the case, then the update is downloaded, it's installed and the telemetry is sent back to the device. Okay. All right. So now let's look at how we are going to troubleshoot any issue related to expedited updates. And again, the troubleshooting that we are going to do is going to be in accordance with the flow over here. First, we are going to check all the profiles has been created correctly over here or not. If you have access to the Intune database and the Windows Update for Business database, that is if you're working in MS, you can use Kushto and track this communication as well by looking at the service side logs and then if the windows update for business is sending a telemetry so when over here windows update for business is using wns and is notifying the device right and who is receiving that the windows uh, the microsoft update health tools is receiving that update so what if this microsoft update health tools is not present in the device or what if it is not working in the device if it is not present or if it is not working then every then obviously in step three things are going to fail right the device does not get notified and it's not going to receive the expedited updates so we are also going to troubleshoot and make sure that the microsoft update health tools this component in the device is working is installed if not then how we can install it we are going to take a look over that as well and then the service needs to reach out to windows update uh, service and then the endpoints needs to be open if not then we can take a look over the windows update logs and we can take a look over uh, a lot of logs in the event view which we are going to see very shortly okay so the first thing is uh, over here when we are saying that Windows Update for Business is going to notify to the device using WNS, we need to make sure that in our update ring policy, the notification is set to allowed. Okay, we have to make sure that the notification is allowed so that the device is notified. Okay, so when we have made the Windows Update ring policy, uh, over there, there is this option which says that change notification update level. This should be set to use default. It should not be set to, uh, it should not be turned off. This is the first thing that we are going to check in the policy. This, so we are at this phase and we are doing the troubleshooting at this phase because this is from wherein things are starting, right? So we have, we are checking the expedited update policy as well as the update ring policy and we are specifically checking this setting in the update ring policy okay and then the second thing is the microsoft update health service and the microsoft update health tools so this microsoft update health tool is actually think of it like a software that is running in the device and like every software, the software is also going to run a service at the background. And this is the name of the service, Microsoft Update Health Service. So we have to make sure that the Microsoft Update Health Service, the service is running because this is the service that is doing what? That is receiving the notification from WNS, right? So you have to make sure that this service is up and running and then in our official documentation as well there is this command that we can run i mean it all that is this is just a fancy way of making sure that the windows update health tools this is the component that is running fine and that is installed and we can check the version of that as well and we can also go to appvis.cpl or control panel and from there also we can see whether microsoft update health tools is installed or not and if it is installed then under c drive program files we will be able to see the microsoft update health tools over here as well as the dlls so uh, in the troubleshooting it is very essential that we are checking whether this microsoft update health tools this software is present in the control panel as well as I mean running the WMI command to check the status and the version as well as the service running behind it is present as well. Right. This is very important. If for some reason we see that Microsoft update health tools is not present in the device, then we can always install it. 
how can we install it well this is the kb article that we need to this is the kb that we need to install and we can just go to uh, this link this is microsoft link and from there we can download the kb we can install it manually or we can push this via Intune as well. So this is nothing but just a MSI. So we can either just download the zip package and then extract the MSI and then install it. Or we can uh, we can make a deployment from the Intune portal for this MSI. Or we could have deployed this as a Win32 app as well. I mean, depending upon us, how we want to push it. The end goal obviously is that uh, this tool needs to be installed in the device so that it's able to receive the notification from WNS. And there is this PowerShell script as well. So if we don't want to push the MSI, if we want to make use of PowerShell script, then these are the modules that we need to install. So, uh, and uh, this is the KB article that we were talking about. So we can push this PowerShell script as well as in a .ps1 format to the devices which do not have the tool installed in it. So any device which does not have the Microsoft Update Health tools, we can either install it manually, we can push it as an MSI or we can push this PowerShell script which is going to install, the, install and call the relevant module and is going to install the Microsoft Update tools, okay? All right. So that uh, during the troubleshooting until now, what we have checked is we have we are making sure that the prerequisite has been taken care of. Right. The next thing that we have to see is making sure that the telemetry is set. So setting this telemetry is required for feature update as well as well as for expedited update. So we can go to this registry location under data collection and we have to make sure that the telemetry has been set. Okay, the other thing that we have to check in uh, during troubleshooting is this registry location called UHS. So we have to go to HKLM software, Microsoft cloud managed uh, update UHS and settings. And over there, there is this uh, node, uh, there is this key called UHS server name. This has to point to a Microsoft to, to this Microsoft endpoint. Okay, so uh, uh, this is again kind of a prereq if you would call it. So we have to make sure that uh, uh, that in case the expedited update is not getting deployed or the notification is not happening. This is one of the things that we have to check as well. And then the relevant logs, the event viewer logs. When I say the event viewer logs, I'm talking about the update health log as well as the Windows update logs. How do we check the Windows update log? Well, we can always go to C drive Windows logs and then Windows update and then take a look over these ETLs manually, which we will do in the demo or like we have already done in case of feature update, we can run the get hyphen Windows update log uh, PowerShell commandlet, which is going to in a way uh, compress all the ETLs into one file and then we can open this in notepad or we can open this in service trace viewer. Okay. All right. And once all this has been done, obviously it is going to reflect in the reporting as well. So we have to go to the portal and from there we can see whether the expedited update that we have pushed, whether it is success, whether it is failure, how many devices have got it. And then we can generate a report as well. Again, we are going to see all of this in the demo and in the reporting section as well. It tells us the name of the device, the device ID, whether the expedited update has been installed or not. And I mean, just to reiterate, in one expedited update policy, we can select one expedited update only. So there might be a list of possible updates that we can expedite. The list keeps on changing depending upon the scenario, depending upon Microsoft's assessment. But in one policy, we can select one update only. Okay, so if there are a couple of uh, expedited updates that we need to push, there will be different policies. Okay, key pointers. We have to make sure that the health monitoring and the telemetry has been enabled. We have to make sure that the update health tools are installed and it's working fine. The service is fine. If not, then deploy it, download the KB, deploy it as a MSI, deploy it as a Win32 app, deploy the PowerShell script, whatever you need to do. We have to make sure that the update notification setting is not set to disabled. This is the setting that we saw in the, in the update ring policy. Uh, in the update ring policy, it should be set to default so that the device is able to get the notification. 
we should be licensed to use it so just in tune license is not enough we need to have the mse 3 or e5 i mean check the documentation in our it's again very clearly documented what is the do, what is the licensing that we need to make use of expedited update and then we have to make sure that windows update is not pointing to wsus right like for example over here we have to make sure that the server name is correct it's not pointing to wsus or something like that right it's pointing to a microsoft endpoint so this is what expedited update is all about i mean the aim here as i said this did this this did not uh, this was not there probably a couple of years back and at that point of time the only way of expediting an update was pushing was downloading that update as a msi converting it uh, i mean either uh, pushing it directly or converting it to a win32 app and then uh, uh, then i mean using dependencies and then using detection logic and then pushing it like that now we have the expedited update policy there in the portal so we might as well make use of that and i believe this policy was made available in the portal just after the printer nightmare thing that happened okay so until now we have seen how to manage a how to manage the windows update of a device via various means we saw the quality update we saw the update ring we saw the feature update we saw the quality update all these are the three default policies that we can create however there are other ways as well let's say that there is a specific kb called xyz which we need to push to the device which we which i want to make sure that it is very it is incumbent that that uh, uh, kb that xyz kb is present in the device and i in a way need to expedite it but when i am going to the portal when i am creating a expedited update policy i don't see that kb in that list of kbs that can be expedited because as when when we were making the expedited update policy we saw right it's a small list it does not cont and we can only expedite the updates which are present in the list so so what do i do if i want to expedite an update which i want to let's say because there is some lob app installed in the device and the device needs to be patched well i use the win32 app or win32 app approach so what i do is i go to the internet i download the kb article that i want to push so over here i have download i have downloaded the windows 10 kb this is the kb number the extension is .msu which i have downloaded and then i have in, used the intune win app utility and i have converted it to a .intune win format right so i've uh, converted it so that uh, i can push this kb now in form of a win32 application and if i check the ime logs in the ime logs i can see very easily what is it that is going on so i can see that uh, so let me show you guys the detection script so this is the detection logic that i used in the detection so there are many kind of detection logic that we can use when we are pushing an application in form of win32 app right let's say that i'm installing an application and after so how how do we make sure that an application has been successfully installed we use a detection logic right let's say for example i'm using adobe acrobat reader right and once the adobe acrobat reader is installed in the device under c drive program files there is a there is a folder with the name adobe acrobat reader that gets created so after the installation how do i make sure that the installation was successful i can go to c drive program files and make sure that that folder structure is present right that is one way the other way is maybe i can check whether the service is created the third way is maybe i can check whether the registry is populated right so these are different ways by which i can ensure that the application installation was successful so this check of making sure that the application installation was successful or not is what we put in the detection logic so right now the aim is installing a kb article so in the detection logic i am going to put in something which is going to make a check and make sure whether the kb article was actually installed or not so how am i going to make sure of that 
I'm going to just run system info.exe and then I'm going to find whether this KB article is installed or not. System info.exe actually uh, this uh, is going to give me a list of all the KBs that are installed. And then I'm going to find the string. If the result is true, then I'm going to do a exit zero. If the result is false, that I'm then I'm going to do a exit one. Okay. This is a PowerShell script which is going to be deployed when I am deploying the Win32 app to the device, right? And what is the Win32 app? The Win32 app is this KB article. So now if I take a look over the IME logs, I can see that. Uh, so uh, again, I don't want to go into very details of how a Win32 application is processed. But the way again, a thousand feet overview is we run the detection logic twice. First, before installing and second, after installing. What I mean by that is, let's say that I have to install Adobe Acrobat Reader. So how do I make sure that Adobe Acrobat Reader has been successfully installed? First, what I'll do, I'll go to C drive program files and see whether Adobe Acrobat Reader folder is present or not. Obviously, it is not present if the application is not installed. So that is the first time I ran the detection logic. Then I install the Adobe Acrobat Reader. Then I again go to C drive program files and now I'll see whether Adobe Acrobat Reader folder is present over there or not, right? Now it should be present if Adobe Acrobat Reader was successfully installed. So what I did now, I again run the detection logic. So the same thing is going to be done by IME again. IME is first going to run the detection script. This is the .ps1 and that ps1 is nothing but this, this. And first it's going to find this KB Obviously, it is not going to find the KB in first place. So it's going to do a exit one. OK, so over here you can see that it exits with an exit code one and it is not detected. Then the KB article is inst it's downloaded. It is unzipped. It is installed. IME does its work. Once it is done, then the detection logic is the detection logic script is run again. In this case, in the second case, once the KB has been installed, now the, it is going to exit with zero, right? So I see an IP exit code of zero and then the application detected over here shows as true. Right. Again, I've done a, a separate nugget on Win32 app and how the processing in IME happens. You might as well take a look over that. But this is a thousand feet overview of how exactly IME works. So it runs a detection logic first and then it does the if the detection logic is false. The reason why it's running detection logic before even installing is we don't need to install the KB if the KB is already present, right? Just like we don't need to install Adobe Acrobat Reader on a device which already has it. That's why we are going to check first under C drive program files whether Adobe Acrobat Reader is there or not. Only if it is not there, we are going to install it and then check again that whether after installation Adobe Acrobat Reader shows or not. So the same logic applies over here as well. Okay. And then uh, uh, this is the device which got that Win32 application. So over here in the notification also, you can see that it is downloading and installing the software and then it recently installed it and restart is needed or not needed. We can force a restart as well, depending upon whatever the need may be. So this is another way of expediting a specific KB or, ex or expediting a specific update to a device. This is specially used if the KB that we need to expedite is not present in the list of KBs that can be expedited by an Intune policy. Okay, so this is again a very handy way. The other way of patching a device is by using CSPs. So when we use the first method that was update ring, we took a look over the sync ML logs. And in the sync ML, we were able to see that what was happening was a specific uh, under the update node, the relevant CSP was getting targeted, right? So if we know the CSP, we might as well target that CSP manually as well, right? And we know that from Intune, we can manually target CSPs by creating a OMA URI. So OMA URI is kind of a custom policy that we can create in Intune wherein we directly target CSPs. Again, just a side note, I have done a specific session on a specific nugget on OMA URI. You might as well check that in case you're interested. But yeah, uh, OMA URI is nothing but just think of OMA URI as let's say that this is a house and this house has many small, small windows, right? Using this windows, we can go inside the house 
we can look inside the house we can put in something inside the house we can take something out of the house right so think of csps as these small small windows in the house okay so if we know which window we need to look into then i mean work is all done right so these think of all these as the windows okay so these are and you will see that right now we are looking at the update csp so in update is the main node and inside of update these are the different windows that are present if we know the name of the window we can do the configuration that is needed and the intune portal is also doing the same thing right when we are making a policy from when we are making an update ring policy and when we check the sync ml logs we saw that it was also referencing the same csp as in it was also uh, 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 referencing the same node as well right so if intune portal is doing that it is easier because we are doing it in form of an ui but if we don't want to do it via ui we can always use the csp route we just need to know the window as in we just need to know this path okay and it, there are so many uh, i mean all the settings that can be managed in a windows device via mdm or via group policy they all will be surfaced in form of a csp so all the settings are present over here we just need to pick and we just need to deploy a custom oma uri policy and uh, our official documentation contains all of these and it contains uh, everything so we can uh, target any of the ones that we want and then we can make something called a uh, custom policy and over here we are doing nothing but we are we are targeting that window right and by that window i mean and you would see that this is in same format as what we were seeing in the sync ml when we were pushing a normal update ring policy from intune to the device so over here we are just targeting the window and in this case we are doing that require deferral defer upgrade and then we can set it to a value that it requires so our documentation talks about which window supports which value like for example uh, if i want to use something like defer if i want to defer the update for some time or if i want to set the active hours right so the format for input for all of these is going to be different for some case it's going to be a number in some case it's going to be a string in some case it's going to be a yes or no value in some case it's going to be a date range right so our documentation talks about all of that if we know the window and if we know the value that this window is going to take then we necessarily are not dependent upon the intune portal because there might be see over here we see that there are so many settings right but when we are making a policy from intune when we are making an update ring policy we don't see so many settings over there right we only see the important settings so if there is any setting which we want to manage in a device which is not present in the ui in that case we can directly target the csp and we can access it or we can manage it okay all right so that is one way using csp there are many organizations which still use csps so when the again i i, I think as far as i remember back in 2019 i guess update ring policy came into the ui how did people manage a device if, if i'm not wrong i exactly don't remember in 2018 whether the update ring policy could be created via intune portal or not what if it could not be created well from intune portal the policy cannot be created but the csp did exist right because other mdms were making use of it so if we knew the csp at that time also we can perform patching of a device via intune using windows update for business by directly targeting the csps okay now the other option is using powershell now how do we use powershell to manage the windows update in a intune enrolled device so for this i am going to take you guys to a very nice article that has been written by our tech community folks and this article talks about how we can make use of powershell for managing the windows update for business deployment service so you can maybe pause your screen and then go to this url if you are interested 
So first what we need to do is first we need to make sure that this KB is installed from the service where we want to uh, run it and then you can go to this hyperlink which talks about the subscriptions that are needed. Okay. Once we have that, we need to run, we need to do whatever is being told to us to do in this article as a global admin or as an Intune admin. Okay. All right. Now the first step is we have to install the Microsoft Graph module. We have to update the module and all of that stuff. And then um, um, it is telling us that all the commands that we are running is available through the beta endpoint. Therefore, it's telling us to change the uh, connection to beta. And then it is telling us that uh, the scope is read write all because we need to consent and we need to give the permission so that uh, then it's going to give us this pop up and then it's going to make sure that we have consented. And then uh, we can see a list of available updates by running this command. So it says that with expedited updates, you can speed the installation of quality updates like the most recent one. We already know what an expedited update is. An expedited uh, deployment policy enables your device with the minimum specified version to override the default update posture and update as quickly as possible. So we already know what expedited update is. It does not wait for the deferral period that has been set in the update ring. The expedited update are notified to the devices via WNS and it's installed instantly. So it uh, so in this article, it's showing us that let's try to query the deployment service catalog to get a list of the security update that can be specified as the compliance bar for the expedited updates. This is showing us the list of updates that can be expedited. And then now this article is showing us how we can use PowerShell to create a deployment. So over here, the commandlet is new hyphen uh, MG Windows update deployment. And then it is you are giving us the uh, content, the O data type, and uh, you have to mention, right, that which KB you want to install and which KB you want to expedite, right? And when uh, over here we are creating a deployment, and then it says that when the command is successfully created, this is what we see. And then obviously, once you have created the deployment, the deployment needs to be assigned to a user or assigned to a device, in this case, to a device. So then it is showing us the command that we need to run. That is update. Uh, first, we created the deployment. Now we are updating the deployment and then uh, we are providing the ID of the device, right? And uh, it's telling us the deployment ID and how do we get it. And then uh, once uh, if there is no output, then uh, there's no output from this command, which means that the deployment gets created automatically. And once the deployment is getting created, the device is going to get the uh, get whatever update was selected in the deployment that we created. So um, this article only talks about using a couple of commandlets, but once you have installed the module, there are many other commandlets that comes with it, right? So what I will suggest is just play along with it a little. And um, if you don't want to make use of the Intune portal, then using PowerShell is one of the other ways of configuring and managing update in a Windows device, right? So this is the other way. I, I, I would not really say that nobody does it. There are many people who like scripting and who don't want to make use of the PowerShell. I mean, who don't want to make use of the Intune portal. This is the way to go for them. So, um, yeah, I mean, what I'll say is just explore this a lot. I won't go into the very details of, uh, uh, of this right now, probably I'll try to demo it when we are doing it. But yeah, I mean, I just wanted to call out that this option also exists. And so does the next option that is using graph APIs. So again, uh, graph API, the point here is we, whatever we are doing right now, we are doing it from the Intune portal. And whatever Intune is doing, it's referencing the CSPs. So we can directly reference the CSPs or we can use PowerShell or we can use Graph APIs. And all these things are, make, are letting us achieve the same use case. So if you don't want to make use of PowerShell, if you don't want to make use of Intune portal, the relevant APIs have also been exposed. So again, there is a very good article that is present on how to make use of graph APIs to manage Windows updates. You might as well, uh, I mean, pause the screen and go to this uh, official article. 
which is talking about how we can make use of uh, graph APIs. So there are a lot of APIs that has been exposed. This article is talking about how to make use of and how to target those APIs using a tool called Graph Explorer. So Graph Explorer is a tool by which we can target we can target specific API and then we can maybe do a get operation or maybe we can do a uh, I mean, we can do a update operation or an add operation or stuff like that. Again, just a side note, I have done a separate nugget on Graph Explorer. You might as well take a look over that if you're interested. But yeah, I mean, this uh, this uh, article is more or less talking about what are the different APIs that are present. And then it's also talking about a tool called Postman. So just like there is a Graph Explorer, Postman is also a, another tool. And this tool is also used for playing around with APIs. So whatever the Intune portal is doing at the end of the day, it's targeting the uh, targeting an API, right? So what we can do is we can, I mean, one of the things, one of the things that we usually do during troubleshooting is we make a policy from Intune. It targets a specific API. We take the F12 trace and we find out what is the API that the Intune portal was targeting. And we use the same API in Graph Explorer and do the same thing over here and that this is usually done either during troubleshooting or if you want to automate anything. But yeah, I mean, you can use tools like Postman as well, and it also does the same thing. So again, this this way of using APIs is usually used if, let's say that you, you have developed a custom application, okay? And you're using that application to man. You don't want, let's say you don't want to make use of Intune. You don't want to make use of uh, PowerShell, which is an application to manage Windows updates. You have developed your own own custom application and that custom application should be able to manage windows updates and devices in your organizations then how will that custom application manage it that custom application is going to target a specific api right so those apis need to be made available only then the application can make use of those apis right so for Win windows update related things there are a lot of apis that has been made available this uh, this article is talking a little bit about few of those apis and it is showing how we can make use of tools like graph explorer or postman to target those apis and to create a deployment and this this is telling us all the things that we can do right we can enroll we can create a deployment and then uh, we can make sure that once the deployment is created we can get reporting as well we can do get operation we can do all the kind of operation that is needed so again an interesting thing i won't go into very details of how to make use of graph apis i won't say a lot of organizations use it specifically especially if Intune is the scope, then well, the easier way is making use of the Intune portal, right? So, I mean, we don't need to necessarily complicate it, but just wanted to call out that this also does exist. Okay. Now, the next thing that I wanted to talk about is managing driver and firmware updates from Intune. Again, the ability of managing driver and firmwares via Intune is still in public preview right now so it's not available in all the tenants as a matter of fact it's not available in my test tenant as well therefore i will be referring to screenshots from our uh, public facing documentation but yeah i mean this is something that is very new and it wasn't there until i guess starting of 2022 i believe in past or maybe end of 2021 this has been inculcated into the product very recently and still it's in a uh, public preview but this again is very very helpful very very useful and the flow when when we look into the flow we will be able to correlate the flow with probably something that is happening in expedited updates or uh, or in the feature updates, right? But as far as the background and the need of a driver and firmware update is concerned, well, driver, uh, the hardware ecosystem constantly publishes new drivers and fixes to Windows update, right? And well, security uh, incidents are mitigated with driver updates, which needs to be deployed again fairly quickly. Right. The hardware ecosystem for Windows devices con comprises of hundreds and hundreds of partners who are continuously building new drivers and all the new drivers needs to be uh, certified by Microsoft. And only then uh, uh, the operating system is going to install all of that. Right. OK, so Microsoft has released a new deployment service for driver and firmware update 
which is referred to as the commercial deployment service for drivers and firmwares. And it gives us the visibility into drivers hosted into the Windows update. And uh, we can, uh, in a way, see which of those drivers are applicable for our device. And in a way, it provides us an uh, option to approve them as well. Okay. So um, the point here is th there are two key takeaways that I want us to understand. First is we are going to see this in the flow as well. In case of driver and firmware update, it's really interesting. Um, it gives us an option when we make our driver and firmware update policy in Intune, it actually gives us an option. It shows us the policy is going to show us all the applicable drivers and firmwares that are there for our device. And it is going to let us choose and only those drivers and firmwares which we approve as an admin from the portal are going to be offered to the devices. This is a little different and uh, different as well as good as compared to how normal quality updates or normal feature update is working. In case of quality update, as we have already spoken about, we make an update ring. In that update ring, we say how the device is going to behave, what is the maintenance hours and what is the reboot schedule and stuff like that. But it doesn't give us a list of uh, uh, hot fixes that are applicable on the device and then lets us approve a specific one. It did in WSUS, but not in Windows Update for Business. However, when we are talking about drivers and firmware, that is not the case. It gives us an option to approve a specific driver and only then only that driver is provided to the device. So this is again a flow of firmware and driver update. This is a flow diagram. So the first very first step is Intune admin is creating a driver update policy from the Intune portal. Again, the driver policy that is P1 that we have deployed from the portal the P1 policy is not going to come down directly to the device. So as you can see, this also works in a way with the similar logic as feature update or expedited update. Intune is going to send the policy related information to the Windows update service or the DSS service, much like a feature update policy. Okay, so the step two is Intune talking with the DSS service and providing the needed policy related information, whatever was there in P1, along with the device ID and the policy ID to DSS. Okay. And in the third step, we can see over here, which is in red. In the third step, the device is reaching out to the Windows update service and, pro and performing a scan. So the device is going to perform its scheduled scan and it's going to go to the Windows update service and it is a scan. It's going to scan and Windows Update Service is going to evaluate what is the uh, soft, I mean, what is the operating system, what are the components involved in, I mean, installed in the device and stuff like that. And it's going to uh, evaluate what are the applicable firmwares and drivers for this operating system. Okay, that's what is going to happen in step three. Now, the result of that scan. So let's say usually what happens, the device is going to go, to, the device goes to the Windows Update service, it performs a scan and the output of that scan is a list of the applicable updates, right? So ordinarily what would happen, whatever was applicable, Windows Update service will send it down to the device. However, in this case, that is not what is happening. The device is reaching out to the DSS, device is performing a scan. Windows Update Service is going to perform a scan and find out the list of drivers and firmwares that are applicable, but it is not going to offer it to the device. It is in step four, as you can see over here, after step three and step four, the result of the scan with the applicable drivers is sent to the Intune service over here. So the Windows Update Service is going to send a result of the scan to the Intune service. Now in step five, Intune populates the available driver updates for those devices based on the output of the scan. So when we will go into the Intune portal now for each policy and device, we will be able to see all the applicable drivers and firmware updates. Now in step six from the Intune portal, 
the Intune admin is going to approve a specific driver and that information is then again sent to Windows Update Service. So let's say that the scan uh, Windows Update Service performed a scan. The, in step three, the device reached out to the Windows Update Service. The Windows Update Service performed a scan and there were three drivers or uh, three firmware that were applicable to this device. Let's call them A, B and C. So this list of A, B and C is then sent to the Intune service in step number four. Now Intune service has that list A, B and C. Now what the Intune admin can do, Intune admin can go to the portal and can see, okay, there are three drivers that are applicable A, B and C. Intune admin is now going to make a determination that, okay, out of A, B and C, I want only the driver B to be deployed to the device. So the Intune admin is now going to approve a specific driver. He can approve all of them or he can only approve this, uh, in this case a specific one and then not approve the other. So let's say that I approved B and I did not approve uh, A and C. So this information B is now going to send from the Intune service back to the Windows Update service. So in step six, you can see over here, Intune admin approves a specific driver, which in this case is B, and that information is sent back to the Windows Update service. So the Windows, up, Windows Update service now knows that only B is approved and A and C are not approved. Now in step seven, the device is going to run its scheduled scan again. The device does not know the communication that is happening between Windows Update service and the Intune service, right? So just like in step three, device ran a scan and went, reached out to the Windows Update service. In step seven, again, the device is going to reach out to the Windows Update service and it's going to run its scheduled scan. Now, when the Windows Update service looks at uh, the device, it sees that, okay, the admin has uh, to, uh, the admin has only approved a specific KB or, a, or in this case a specific driver and not the other ones. So the Windows update or the DSS service now knows exactly which driver is to be is uh, to be offered to the device. So it's only going to offer the driver B and it is not going to offer the driver A and C. So the driver B is then offered to the device. The device installs the driver and then it is, uh, once it is installed, the Windows Update service is informed and then Intune, uh, whatever reporting was there in Intune is then updated as well. So again, the crux of this is uh, the communication that is happening between Intune service and the Windows DSS So the policy P1 which mentions that the driver needs to be installed in the device. That policy is never going directly to the device. That policy goes to the DSS. The device reaches out to the DSS and it performs a scan. And uh, it performs a scan with respect to uh, all the, with respect to its uh, operating system and I mean each device the output of each device's scan is obviously going to be different right because the applicable firmwares and the applicable drivers for each device is going to depend is going to be dependent upon what is the operating system and what are the different components installed in that machine so uh, the output of that scan is sent to the Intune service it's displayed in the Intune service admin can either approve or unapprove a specific driver or firmware that information is again sent back to the Windows uh, Update Service or DSS. When the device reaches out to the DSS again and requests for an uh, applicable uh, drivers or uh, applicable firmwares, that is when Windows uh, Update Service now knows for sure that yes, I have I know about this device, I know this device ID, I know this policy ID, and I know that Intune Admin has only allowed this specific firmware to be installed in this device, even though there are other applicable firmwares for this device as well. So Windows Update Service is only going to offer that specific firmware or that specific uh, driver to the device. So this is again just, uh, uh, ju just 
in summary for us to understand intune admin i know this is repetitive but i just want to understand i just want to make sure that we have understood the flow very well so intune admin creates an uh, creates a driver update policy needs to be targeted to a device group the update uh, the policy is updated to the uh, dss service just like a feature update policy or an expedited update policy the policy body and the device id is provided to the service the device performs the first scan and it reaches out to the windows update service and performs a scan of the firm of the applicable firmwares and drivers the output of this is a normal scan that is provided that is performed by the windows update client in the device wherein the device is discovering the applicable firmware updates the scan result which contains the applicable drivers is sent to the intune service the intune service now populates the available driver updates for each of those devices we can see all the drivers and firmwares that are applicable for all the devices that have been targeted by the initial policy p1 now the intune admin can approve a specific driver the admin can schedule its deployment as well whether the driver that has been approved whether it's going to be installed i mean on what basis the driver is going to be offered to the device and stuff like that and uh, the admin has the ability of selecting a particular driver the intune admin approves a specific driver or firmware which is then updated to the windows update service again now when the device scans again in step 7 the windows update service now knows exactly which firmware to be is to be offered to the device other applicable drivers and firmwares are not updated to the device even though they are applicable the device only gets the firmware and drivers which are trusted and approved by the admin the device installs it the inventory is updated in the intune portal okay so this is again uh, this uh, 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 diagram has been taken from our official uh, uh, from our official documentation so we have actually made some changes in the in in the flow so earlier what happened was we would make a policy we would uh, uh, set the policy and then all the all the drivers were updated so earlier this option was not there this step did not uh, happen wherein this list was sent to the intune admin and intune admin could explicitly approve or not approve earlier what would happen was the entire list of applicable drivers and firmwares were sent down to the device and everything would be installed but now with the newer model of the commercial deployment service we see that this list populates over here admin can approve a specific one that list the approved one again that list of approved and the not approved one again goes to the windows update service or dss and only the approved firmware is uh, or the approved driver is then uh, uh, made available to the device okay this is the older model i just wanted to give you guys a screenshot of this that in this case you can see that uh, the windows update is uh, offering all the firmwares and the drivers however this has changed now right okay and uh, again this is this screenshot is taken from uh, thaids environment this is uh, uh, in our public documentation as i said uh, this is still in public preview so i don't have this option in my portal but i mean it is pretty much simple so we will be very soon able to see this windows 10 driver and update policy we just have to click on this and i have to create a new policy and when we are creating a new driver update policy it is going to ask us that we want to automatically deploy all the applicable drivers or whether we only want to deploy the ones that we specifically approve so let's say that i choose this one so let's say that i have chosen this one then uh, i make this policy i deploy it to a device group the device scans that uh, scan list is sent back to intune and when that scan list is sent back to intune this is how my policy is going to look like this is the name of the policy this is the number of devices to which it has been assigned and then i can see a new updates that is when the win when the windows update service ran that scan against that device there were three applicable firmwares or drivers that was found okay now when i click on my policy i can actually see that what those three or in this case what uh, there are five right so i can see that these are the five drivers that are applicable for all my devices i can click on any of them i can find out uh, what is the class what is it is related to the version these are all hyperlinks and i can read more about them and if i trust a specific driver 
only then I'm going to click on it and then I'm going to click. Let's say that I trust this one, the last one, which is right now made available, but right now it's not approved as you can see over here. So let's say that I trust it. I'm going to click on it. It's a display driver and then I'm going to click on approve. I also have an option of scheduling when this is going to be made available or I can make this available ASAP. So let's say that I approved only the display link driver, even though there were there were three drivers or three firmwares that were uh, that according to the scan is applicable. But I am not approving all three. I am only approving the last one. OK, I just clicked on it and I just made it uh, 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 approved. So this is going to change from available to approve, but the rest two are going to stay as only uh, available. I also have an option of uh, suspending any driver which was approved by me earlier as well. So like this one, you can see it was approved earlier. I have an option of clicking on suspend either ways. So I click on approve and now this information is going to send back to DSS so that when the device runs a scan again, this is provided back to the device. OK, so until now we have seen one way of managing drivers and firmwares via Intune that is by making a driver or firmware policy, right? But again, as I said, this is still in public preview. So how did people do it if they are not seeing this option in their portal or how did people do it before before this option was there? Well, the answer is the obvious answer is by using a Win32 app. So the option is will download the driver, download the firmware from the internet, wrap it using the Intune uh, Win app utility, convert it to Intune.Win format, and then uh, deploy it as a Win32 application with relevant dependencies, right? So there is this article, you can probably refer to that. I am going to show it to you guys. So uh, uh, over here, this talks about the same thing. Um, um, and this is referring to a BIOS update for Lenovo. So over here, what it is doing is it has downloaded this BIOS package file, which is in .exe format, and then it has converted it into the, it, it has used the Intune Win app utility, converted it into Intune Win format, and Intune Win, uh, and it uploaded it into the Intune portal, and then, well, you know how to do this. And then it has used the install command, uninstall command, requirements. And then in the detection logic, it is referring to a registry location. So as I was talking about earlier, there are many ways by which you can detect whether an installation was done successfully or not. You can go to C drive program files and then see whether Adobe Acrobat Reader is installed successfully or not. You can go to registry. You can use a PowerShell script. You can, there are n number of ways, right? So over here, they are using this uh, registry location to see uh, and to check the BIOS version, whether the BIOS version after the BIOS has been updated by installing the Intune, uh, by installing the Win32 app, whether the value has been updated to this version or not. Obviously, with uh, if you are doing it for a different BIOS or if it's a different firmware for you, then this value is going to change. But yeah, this is one of the things that we can use. So over here, we see that uh, in the registry, it's saying that uh, in the registry, the BIOS version this is the key. And this is the version they're seeing over here in case of a working scenario. Therefore, this is what they are comparing against and then return code, and then they're assigning the application. They're over here, it's showing how to assign an application to a dynamic device group. I mean, this is up to you how you're assigning it. And then they have uh, deployed the application as I believe available in company portal. Then again, it's up to you. You can uh, deploy it as a required app as well. It will be installed automatically. And in the in the IME logs, you can see over here that uh, first the detection logic ran, it shows as false, and then it downloaded the exe, I mean, downloaded the Intune Win file, and then it extracted it, and then it ran the command over here. This is the exe slash verify, uh, I mean, uh, uh, si very silent. I don't know what is this parameter, very silent, but yeah, I mean, whatever we have uh, specified over here. Yeah, uh, the exe slash very silent slash uh, uh, whatever parameters or whatever switches you want to use. And you can see that that is running over here. And then you can see an exit code. And once the installation is done successfully, it is going to show up over here. So this, uh, this uh, blog talks about the same logic. 
uh, of using of deploying an intune uh, of deploying a driver or a firmware from intune if you don't want to make use of the driver or firmware update policy that is now present or if the policy is not present to begin with then what is it that you're going to do this is the only other option right uh, deploying it via win32 app okay so now a quick reminder well please remember as far as uh, well as far as feature update expert edit update and firmware and bios update is concerned intune is not even directly deploying the policy to the device right however as far as update ring is concerned intune is directly delivering the policy to the device however after the policy is delivered the device checks in with the windows update for business service right so intune is a delivery mechanism delivering the uh, delivering the policy once the policy is delivered then there are os related components which are taking over so we have to be sure what is it that we are exactly troubleshooting because there is no point checking intune service side logs of the policy is successfully deployed and then the device is not getting the update that it is supposed to get from dss right so yeah and then windows update for business is a separate component intune defines an update schedule and the policy comes down to the device the device and the components in the os are expected to behave according to it the windows update ring policy make use of the policy csp which we can directly target as well we already saw how to do that we just need to know the window and what is it that we need to put through the window and then we can directly target it as well because we already saw in the sync ml logs that that is what the portal is also doing to begin with feature update policy will have and in case of feature update the communication happens between the intune service and the dss the same thing happens in case of uh, uh, in case of expedited updates as well and we saw the same thing is pretty much happening in case of firmware and bios updates as well right and exped expedited quality update uh, work with dss and uh, it uses uh, uh, windows push notification service or uh, wpns and uh, this is needed because or wns this is needed because we want the update to be installed instantaneously and we don't want to wait for the device to take its own sweet time and then run a scan therefore we are sending a uh, th th therefore the windows update for business services sending a notification to the device and telling the device that okay you know what there is something that you need urgently please come to me please scan so that i can tell you what are the things that are applicable okay all right so now let's talk about good supervision we have spoken about update rings we have spoken about all the ways by which we can manage windows update in devices may that be the update rings or may that be feature update or graph apis or powershell or so many different techniques right so how do i do a good supervision so, uh, as far as windows update management from intune is concerned well for good supervision we have to make sure that the rings that we are creating for windows update management from intune are created properly and there is a reason by there is a reason due to which they are called rings they are called rings because um think of it like concentric rings or concentric circles wherein the smaller circle is targeting smaller subset of devices the bigger circle is targeting bigger subset of devices and the outer circle is targeting the uh, the largest subset of devices so the smaller ring is supposed to have zero deferral period or the minimum deferral period so that the de devices in this ring are the devices which can be tested and are the are obviously not prod devices they are probably in dev and these devices have all the lob applications or all have all the scenarios that we can probably replicate over here so first we are testing it out over here if something goes wrong over here then let's say that this was targeted by ring 1 this was targeted by ring 2 and this was targeted by ring 3 so this has the minimum deferral period therefore the updates first come down to devices in ring 1 and uh, if anything goes wrong we can Uh, then the action plan over here is first identifying what is it that went wrong over here and while we identify it the action plan would be going to ring 2 and ring 3 and pausing it so we have an option of pausing a windows update ring for up to 365 days right so while we while we troubleshoot what's wrong with ring 1 we can always pause ring 2 and ring 3 and figure it out the the op, uh, the point here is making sure that the deferral in ring 2 and ring 3 are more than ring 1 and it's incremental so that 
the update is first not reaching to ring three, which is targeting all the end users devices. It's first going to ring one, which is a closed set of users. It's then going to ring two, which is maybe my local IT admin. And once it has been tested in ring one and ring two, only then those patches are being released in ring three, which has the maximum deferral period as compared to ring two and ring one. And then not just the deferral period, there are few other configuration as well that we have to uh, use properly. And when we are making a policy, we have the deferral period, we have the deadline, and we have the grace period. So we have to make sure that all these three are working fine. The device. So let's say that for 30 days in ring three, I have selected the deferral period as 30 days. So for 30 days, all those devices that are there in ring three, they are not even going to see the updates. Okay, so if they're not going to see the updates, then the device are not even going to get them, right? So they don't even have the option of getting those updates. So deferral period means the number of days by which I don't want the update to be made available to the device. Once the deferral period is over, then the updates, the quality updates or the feature updates or whatever the updates there are, they will be made available and they will be offered to the device and then once the deferral period is over i can set something called the deadline so let's say that i have set in in the policy itself let's say that i have put in the deadline of two days so in those two days in those 48 hours the devices will be able to see the updates so the device has in a way two days it has a like we have a deadline to complete a work right so in those uh, let's say that i have a deadline of 48 hours to finish a work it means that within that 48 hours it's up to me when i want to do it right nobody is going to pester me i have been given two days i'm going to before initially i did not even have the work that is what the deferral is now i have been given the work and I have a deadline of two days. So meaning that over the weekend, I can do it whenever I want, right? And in that two days, I can uh, do the work depending upon my schedule. So similarly, in the within the deadline period, the device will attempt to install outside of the active hours, that is during the maintenance hours, right? Now coming Monday, the deadline is even over. Now there is something called grace period. Once the deadline has passed, the update is now going to be automatically installed during the grace period. So we all get something called a grace marks in our examination, right? So once everything is over, then the grace, let's say that I failed by two marks, right? So first I'll go to the teacher and tell him that please increase my marks. This is where you missed to maybe give me an extra pointer over here. Once all of that is done, still let's say that I am, uh, I'm falling short of where I'm, I'm showing, I'm falling short of the 60 percentage of what I was supposed to get. Then there is some grace marks that is given to us by the invigilator, right? If I've been a good student. So similarly, once the deadline has passed, then we have something called a grace period. And, uh, in this grace period, the update will be installed automatically irrespective of what is the active hours or irrespective of what is the maintenance hours or stuff like that. Users will be notified they can uh, choose whichever they want and after they can choose wh whichever they want after uh, the update has been installed to uh, when the device is undergoing to go a reboot so it's very important for us to first choose the deferral the deadline and the grace period effectively and then when we are making the update rings in the update ring all those three things are going to come in the deferral which obviously is going to be incremental from ring one to ring two to ring three and the deadline as well as the grace period. And as far as good supervision is concerned, there are a couple of diagrams that I wanted to show you, which I have stolen from the official Microsoft uh, uh, documentation for auto patch. We will talk about auto patch later on, but this is how ideally a ring should look like. So, I mean, those concentric circles that I was talking about, well, obviously first the blue one is showing there is the test circle um, or the test ring, which is uh, encompassing smaller number of devices with 
lesser amount or zero amount of deferral period and then it's the broader ring which is the first ring and then the fast ring and then the broad ring wherein majority of the end users are present here in the blue circle that is the broad ring and then probably this can be a closed group of users and this can just be the local IT and this can just be the admin doing the testing at their end. So this is probably the way by which we can create rings in our organization which is going to be progressive and then um, the number of devices again this is just a recommendation on how uh, how we are doing it uh, in auto patch again um, this is all left to the organization wherein they can define the number of uh, devices in each ring but yeah I mean uh, in the in the blue one which is the first ring over here the, this one, we are supposed to have the minimum number of devices, right? Because this is just a test ring and probably what I can suggest is just the IT admin who is making the policy, the Intune admin can just add a couple of device, enroll a couple of devices in the test ring just to make sure that everything is looking well at his end when he's doing the repro. And then the first ring, it is containing 1% of devices. Again, this number can change from organization to organization. This is just a recommendation. And then in uh, the, the third ring is the fast ring. Probably this can be the local IT or the local employees of the organization. And then 90% is the broad ring. This is containing the whole bunch of users across the organization, right? So, um, um, Again, as you are seeing over here, time to deploy, this is going to be based upon, this is the deferral period, right? So obviously in uh, in case of the first ring, the deferral period is going to be zero. Then we can use a deferral period of 30 days. Then we can use a deferral period of 60 days so that in first 60 days, uh, users in this group and this group and this group have already tested and they would have reported if there are any issues or not. The local IT has tested, the admin has tested. And if there is nothing, then after the end of 90 days, that is wherein the patches are going to go to the, uh, the quality updates are going to go to the uh, normal users, right? So that, uh, uh, they, so that we get a heads up in the, in this time frame itself, and we can pause the update ring. We can pause this update ring whenever the need be, if there is anything wrong that is reported in these phases. Okay, so recommended settings will obviously use rings incrementally, as I said, with the incremental grace period and with incremental uh, deferral period. And in the smaller ring, target immediate devices, which can be, which we can mess around with, then the local IT and then the broad set of users. Efficient use of deferral deadline and grace period, already spoken about that. Use compliance deadline to adopt uh, uh, for adoption of goals are so that to make sure that the goals are met on time use expedited updates when there when there are any update that is to be deployed faster however the thing with expedited update is you cannot expedite any update you can only expedite the update that is there in the list if you want to expedite any other update then you already know how to do it that is by deploying a kb article in form of win32 application if anything goes wrong with ring one we have the ability of pausing the subsequent prod rings Okay, now let us talk about another very important topic that is Windows update reporting as far as Intune, uh, as far as managing update via Intune is concerned. Now, this is very, very important. I'm going to spend a lot of time in this is uh, in this because um, uh, one of the main reasons why people are reluctant to move from managing Windows update in a hybrid Azure D joint device via SECM to Intune is because we don't have very good because uh, inherently we did not have very good reporting. Now things have changed. There are a lot of custom reports that are available. There are a lot of customizations that we can do to the reports and then there is update compliance as well, which we are going to see in detail. So things have changed a lot. There are a lot of things that we can do. And probably this is going to be a good motivation if we want to move from managing Windows update in a Windows device from SECM to Intune. So there are two kinds of reporting that are available. One is the built-in report. 
you, we have already we would have already seen built-in reports right so if we are making application configuration application deployment device uh, device configuration or any kind of configuration the built-in reports are there for each of them right we have the organizational report and all those kinds of report so that uh, that exists in this case as well for windows update and then we can make custom report by using update compliance so let's take a look over the built-in report and what is it that's present in built-in reports so let's say that I have made an update ring policy and I have deployed the update ring policy which is going to manage the security update or the quality update in the device. It has been assigned to a user group or to a device group. Now when I go to that update ring and when I click on the device status or when I click on the user status, I can see the list of devices that have got that policy. So this is and I obviously have an option of exporting this list as well. So this is one way of getting a list and it's showing you right. It's showing you whether it has succeeded or whether it has failed and the feature update version and stuff like that. Right. So this is one way of making sure that the policy from Intune portal reached to the device and the device processed it and just delivering the policy is not it right the device has to process it and then come back to the intune service and inform that yes i received the policy successfully this is one way this is the organizational report that we can check now if we there, there is there are another few other kind of insight related report as well so if we go into the report section in the portal and then if we go to windows update which is it shows as still in preview. I don't think it is yet. I mean, I don't think it is still. So if we go to Windows Update Preview and then if we click on Summary, it gives the same information to us in form of a chart or in form of a UI, if you would call it. When it says that there are two devices which are still in progress and it will give us the name of the devices and stuff like that, right? And then I have an option of clicking on this section over here called Reports which lets me generate and download a report. So it's letting me generate and download a report from here. I can export this report as well from here. It's giving me information of the device name, the device ID and which, which feature update. So right now we are looking at feature updates, right? Reporting for feature updates. So it's going to tell me which feature update has been offered, which is offer ready, which is in progress, which is success and stuff like that. Right. The same thing is available for expedited updates as well. So I can generate a report for expedited updates. and It's going to tell us whether the update was successfully installed or not. And uh, it gives me the same information in form of UI as well. So I can generate this report in form of pie chart. I can generate it in form of UI as well. So um, the reporting over here, the built -in report is quite good enough. Well, it's not very verbose. So, I mean, it's not letting us do any kind of customization, but from this, we can at least download the report and find out how many devices got the policy. And from here, we can see how many devices are in success or errored or failed or stuff like that, right? So uh, uh, this reporting, the report that we are getting from here and uh, this reporting that we are looking at, this again was not there before. This is again a recent addition. This reporting was always there. We could always click on the device and then go to device status and user status and see the status of the deployment of the policy. Right now, update compliance is something very important and very useful because it fills in a lot of gap, a lot of gap as far as uh, reporting is concerned for Windows update management via Intune. Now, update compliance is actually a not exactly a feature of Intune. It's a free solution which sits on top of Log Analytics workspace in Azure. So to make use of update compliance, we will need to have a valid Azure subscription. So until now we have been, we did not need Azure subscription anywhere, right? We just needed an Intune license and in, for feature update and stuff like that, we needed a Windows related license as well. But we did, our tenant did not need to have an Azure subscription. However, for update compliance, we need to have an Azure subscription because we are making use of log analytics. Okay. So what it does is, so um, the way it works is, I mean, again, a thousand feet overview, very easy to understand. This is a device. We are con from Intune, what we are doing, we are sending a device configuration policy to this device. 
that device configuration policy is configuring something in the device so that the device can upload its Azure, I mean, upload its update related data to the log analytics workspace. So let's call this the workspace. So what we are doing from Intune, we, this device, so the end goal here is this device should be able to upload its update related information to a workspace we have created in log analytics. Once the data has been uploaded to this workspace, we can read the data over here and we can see that data in update compliance and it lets us run a lot of queries and then we can find out what is it that's what is it that's installed and what is it that's not installed so the point here is how do we configure this device to make sure that this device is sending all its data to log analytics workspace in azure one is we log into this device manually and do and we do the configuration manually whatever the changes are needed to be made in registry we do it manually whatever the services whatever the changes are needed to be made in the services we do that manually but let's say that i have got 10000 devices or a million devices which are managed via intune and i want to get a report related to its update management automatically now i cannot go to all those devices and make those configurations manually right but given that they are intune enrolled I am whatever change, whatever the changes are needed to be made in the device to make sure that the device is able to successfully upload its update related information to the workspace. All those configuration is being done by the Intune service in form of a device configuration profile. So Intune's role in this is very clear. Intune is just going to, in Intune, we are going to make a profile. That profile is going to contain some settings which is needed for the device to upload its update related information to log analytics. The policy comes down to the device. It makes the changes in the registry. Now, by looking at the registry, the device knows where this uh, workspace is in log analytics and the device uploads all its update related data to this workspace. Once the data is uploaded over here, we, you'd, we use update compliance to read it and see it in form of a UI. Okay. So when this, uh, so we are going to talk about what is going to be present in this policy very shortly. But I hope you get a high level overview of what update compliance is and how Azure log analytics is needed. And Azure log analytics ingestion and retention charges are not incurred on our Azure subscription for update compliance data. So we need an Azure uh, subscription, but if the device is sending this data over here and if we are reading it, there are no ing ingestion or retention charges. So update compliance enables organization to monitor security update, quality update, feature update, get a better reporting, better than the reporting that we just saw and view a report of the device and update issues related to compliance that need attention. We can get information related to safeguard. We can get information related to delivery optimization. I'll be doing a separate nugget on delivery optimization later on using update compliance. But for now, let's just say that, yes, there is something that we can get. Now, how do we get it? What is What are the steps? Well, the steps are very easy. First, we need to have a Azure subscription. Second, we need to create this workspace because if only after the workspace is created, the device will be able to send its data to the workspace, right? So first is having an Azure subscription. Second is creating a workspace. Third is configuring the update compliance. Fourth, is creating this policy and sending it down to the device so that the device knows where the workspace is and the device starts uploading all its data to the workspace. Please note that once the policy is down to the device, it takes almost three to four days for this to happen. Right. And I get, and I guess that has been documented publicly as well. But yeah, I mean, the fourth step is sending this policy down to the device. And then the fifth step is, well, going to update compliance 
and checking what is there in this workspace so reading this so whenever all the devices have uploaded its data we will be able to go to update compliance and read whatever is there in this workspace and it is going to give us that information in form of an ui so these are the steps for that as well i mean it is just telling it to us in in a more detailed format first is we have to create a workspace in log analytics for this we need to have a valid azure subscription and then we need to get update compliance from market marketplace so that step is talking about configuring this and then we need to set it up so setting up of update compliance is nothing we just need to uh, there are just a couple of steps that we need to uh, follow and then we have to create a configurational profile this configurational profile is this profile which is coming down to the device and is telling the device where exactly this workspace is so the way it works is once we have created the workspace once we have set all this up there is an id okay so think of it this way each workspace is unique right so each workspace is going to have its own id so once the workspace is created we are going to take that id and then we are going to create a profile and put that id over here and this profile is going to del be delivered to the device so the id is over here so now the device knows where the workspace is so the workspace will so this device will now send all its data to this id and where is this id this id is over here in the workspace so that is how the device knows where the workspace is because the id that was there that was generated when the workspace was created we are providing this id to the device via a intune profile okay this is nothing but a commercial id so uh, we need to create a device configuration profile which needs to contain these settings the commercial id the telemetry should be allowed and opt in setting ux and uh, device name and diagnostic data should be allowed only then the device name will show up in update compliance and then update compliance processing should be allowed now there is a script as well which we can run and that script actually checks whether this is set up correctly or not 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 again that's optional that's not really needed if you have done the configuration properly first hand then everything should work fine let me just show you guys a couple of screenshot on how this is going to look like but i'm going to do it right from scratch when we are in the demo section so first we have to go to our azure our azure portal so right now i'm logged into the azure portal and then i'm going to search for log analytics and once i have clicked on log analytics i can click on create and i can create a workspace so right now it is showing us that there are two workspaces present i can create an additional workspace so this think of this workspace as a container wherein devices are going to upload all their information and then we are going using going to use update compliance to read the information which has been uploaded by all the thousands of devices in the environment and then in the update compliance we can see the report of everything that was that has been uploaded over here so i click on create over here and then i have to make sure that i have a azure subscription that is very important then i can create a resource group or i can uh, use an existing one and then i can give the workspace a name a location next next finish and then done nothing much that needs to be done while creating a, a workspace okay a log analytics workspace so it's going to show us it's going to deploy and then it's going to take a couple of minutes and then everything is going to be done once it is done then when if we go into the solutions tab over there we will be able to see our log analytics and over there there is a section called uh, update compliance settings this is wherein we see a id called a commercial id this commercial i think of this commercial id as this id and we are going to take this id and deploy it to the device by making a device configuration profile so think of this id as a unique identifier of where my workspace is present okay so now the workspace has been created so this part is done now uh workspace has been created and which part workspace has been created and this part is done now now update compliance has to be set up so that using update compliance we can read whatever is there in the workspace and see it in a pretty format right so uh, setting up uh, update compliance again is very easy we just need to go to marketplace and then click on update compliance and then click on create 
and then it's going to ask us for an Azure subscription. We can we have to use the same subscription and then it's going to ask us for the log analytics workspace. So we can select the log analytics workspace that we have created to begin with. Why is this important? Because well, update compliance is going to read information from a workspace, right? And in my subscription, I can have so many different workspace. Let's say that I have I have 10 workspace. I don't see why I should have 10 workspace, but let's say that I have got 10 workspace and all the devices and there are so many devices. Some devices are sending their information to workspace one. Some are sending to workspace two. Some are sending to workspace three, even though this setup should not be needed. But let's say that this is the setup. Now the update compliance needs to know that to which workspace it needs to go to fetch the information, right? Only then it's going to be able to display it. Or let's say that there is only one workspace like it was in this case. The update compliance needs to know to which workspace it needs to go to to get that data, right? The devices have sent their data to the workspace because they had this ID, which I got the commercial ID, which I got, which I supply to the device via Intune profile. But how is the update compliance going to read it and then display it over here? It's going to do that because when I'm setting up the update compliance, I'm selecting the name of the workspace, right? And the Azure subscription is as well. So over here, I select the name of the Azure, uh, the name of the subscription, the resource group, as well as the uh, name of the log analytics workspace that I have selected. And this is the set of information that needs to be provided to the device to configure it. What do I mean by that? What I mean by that is, this policy I told you guys about this policy, which contains this workspace ID. This policy is nothing but a device configuration policy. It's a OMA URI, okay, kind of a policy. And it contains five or six different OMA URIs. One of them is obviously the commercial ID, which we just saw this commercial ID over here. So one of them is the commercial ID. There are two or three other parameters that needs to be configured in this profile, which needs to be deployed to the device. It's all very easily documented. We're just going to take a look over that. So the commercial ID first is provider, provider ID, and then commercial ID. And then it's going to be the commercial ID of my workspace. And then the allow telemetry needs to be set to one. The configure telemetry opt-in setting you, uh, setting ux it needs to be set to uh, one is disabled and i mean it need, it needs to be set accordingly and then the same thing allow device name in diagnostic data it also needs to be set accordingly and then allow update uh, compliance processing it also needs to be set accordingly these are the values that are supposed to be put in so all we have to do is we have to go to i just have created a oma uri policy with this name and uh, this is the name, this is the name, this is the name. The same is the description and the path is what I just, uh, I just got the path from here as well in our official documentation. And these are the values that I have put in. And I've deployed it to a device. Once I have deployed it to a device, then if I go, and again, as I said, it might take some time. It might take up to three or four days. So it might, why, why are we waiting three, for three or four days? This three or four days is so that the device starts uploading all its update related data to this workspace. So after I have waited for three or four days, now this data is populated in the workspace. Since update compliance knows where the workspace is, after three or four days, if I go to the update compliance, I will be able to see all the data that is present over here. So after three or four days, when I checked, I this is what I found. Uh, uh, uh. Now, in if I go to the uh, update log analytics workspace, if I go into the summary section, I can see that there are a total of four devices out of which two devices need some attention. If I click on that, it tells me what is the security update that is present, which is up to date, which is not up to date. And then there are four or five different sections, right? There is the need attention section. There is a security update status section. There is a feature update status section and there is a delivery optimization status section. And we can click on each of them one on one. So if I click on, let's say, uh, need it, let's say I click on security updates status section, then it actually lets me run a lot of queries. So this query is a lot like what a Microsoft engineer would be running in Kushto because he has access to the Intune service side logs. So what this is doing is it is actually querying this service. And then it's saying that out of all, so 
think of it this way. This is like a SQL query, if you would call it. So this is a table. And in this table, we are checking that for all the devices that I have, uh, tell me the devices which have a need attention status of out of support uh, OS version. So the output of this is out of these four devices which are present in my portal, all those devices which have a status of out of support OS version, they are going to be shown over here. So in my case, there was just one device and this device was running with the OS version of 1903. 1903 is no longer in support as on May 2022. Therefore, the output was this. So how is this important? This is important because let's say that there are a million devices in my organization and before I, I and I the requirement is all the devices needs to be up, uploaded updated to version 20 h1 but before I target the devices to 20 h1 let's say that the devices are currently at 1809 1903 and 1909 so all these have to be updated to 20 h1 right but before I target a feature update policy I need, I need to get a list of all these devices so this is one way of getting that list and this is just one column think of this as a column this is just one column wherein we are saying that need attention status there are so many other columns right which means that there are so many other reports that we can generate from here as well right so uh, uh now if i if i'm clicking on security update status then it is actually giving me a pie chart related information as well and telling me that out of all the devices that are present three have installed the security update deployment that I have made or the windows update ring that I have created one has an unknown status it is telling me the name of the name and version of the devices as well if I go into the feature update status it is telling me that none of the devices are up to date because well maybe my devices are running with a unsupported version or over here it's telling me that out of support version is one and it, it's going to even tell me the name of those version as well right so it gives us a very a very verbose list of the devices how the patches are and it lets me run custom query as well if i go into delivery optimization it actually tells me that whether pairing is on or pairing is off and uh, in my case is everything is http plus lan but we have a way of conf i mean we can manage delivery optimization in the devices you from intune as well right so we can make a policy from intune deploy it and then from here we can see that from where exactly are the devices downloading the update are they going to the internet are they going to windows update for, update for business or are they downloading it from their peer and then it is actually even telling us the content distribution as well right from from the portal so this is like very handy and it lets us run a lot of report a lot of customization we'll try to do a little bit of customization in the demo section as well and while we are talking about update compliance i wanted to bring your attention to this very good blog uh, you can probably uh, pause the screen and then go over there so this blog is also talking about how we can make use of update compliance and then get information related to safeguard we will all be doing this during the demo but i just wanted to call it out so we already know what safeguard is it uh, safeguard hold is it prevents a device with a known issue from being offered a new operating system right so the way we can make use of update compliance is what we can do is in log analytics we have already done all these right we created a workspace in log analytics and then we were able to see the devices over there and then we were able to see the devices that needed attention right so we have an option of running a custom query as well and these are a few suggested queries that are provided to us out of the suggested queries one of them is device with a safeguard hold so all we have to do is we just have to click on this and then this is automatically going to run this query now you don't have to click on this and run this query you can always come to this page and then delete the existing query and then run a query yourself and then this is self-explanatory right it is saying that we are going to run a search on this table and we are running a think of it like a powershell command right so wherein we first get we, we first do something like get hyphen service which gives me an output of all the service and then we pipe it and then we put in a filter saying that uh, where service name is something something right or where 
asterisk or I mean we can put some kind of filters that's what we are doing over here we are running a query on this service and then we are saying that one of the parameters or one of the columns for this table is detailed status so we just want output of the devices wherein the detailed status for the device has a safeguard hold so the moment we run this query all the devices that are there in the update compliance which have already uploaded their data in the log analytics the query is going to run on them and uh, from that workspace it is going to show me a list of devices so over here you can see there are two devices which have a safeguard hold now once we find out which devices have safeguard hold now we can take actions on them right we have already seen that there is a oma uri which we can push from intune the article is also talking about that which disables the safeguard right so now that i know that these two devices have safeguard if i still want them to be updated then i can push a oma uri which is going to disable the safeguard hold in this device even though this is not recommended by microsoft but i'm just telling you guys that you can uh, do it if you want to so now what i have what we can do is first we run the query and find out the devices that have a safeguard which we could not just from Intune, right? For this, we need to run this query for the for which the device needs to send its data to a uh, to work uh, to uh, to the workspace for which we need to configure Azure uh, update compliance for which we need to have an Azure subscription, right? So uh, and then we can push this CSV. The CSV is going to make or the uh, article is also talking about how we can uh, disable the safeguard uh, from a group policy as well and once it comes down to the device and if it has been uh, successfully uh, deployed to the device then um, in the event log it is showing that the csp was successfully deployed and then the registry was successfully uploaded as well once this is done then if there is a feature update policy that is uh, deployed to the device the feature update is now going to take effect because the safeguard hold has been removed from the device but the point that i'm trying to make is there are many custom queries also that we can run you can see the list over here and uh, this is how update comp this is how powerful update compliance is it's letting us run queries which we would which traditionally a SCCM admin is aware about so we can run a lot of queries in our uh, SCCM environment and then we can find out uh, we can find out the reporting with respect to the devices that are present, right? So those queries run against all the devices. So a similar thing is happening in Intune as well by using update compliance. Okay, and the next thing that I want to talk about is auto patch. Again, auto patch is not an offering of Intune. It's an offering of MMD. But since it is related to patching of devices on the cloud, in the cloud, and the management is done from the Intune portal. That's why I just wanted to briefly touch upon it. There, this is one of the first tech community articles that was written on auto patch when it was announced. But uh, now, now if you check, there are so many first party as well as third party articles that you'll find as well as YouTube videos. You might as well refer to that. I'll just give you guys a brief overview of what auto patch is. And again, an Uber level overview or a thousand feet overview is in case of auto patch, in, in case of Intune managed Windows devices, what we are doing is we are the ones, the Intune admin is the person who is creating all the update ring or the feature updates or the quality updates policy or uh, respective of how you want to manage the devices. But that is all being done by the Intune admin, right? For the enrolled devices. In case of auto patch, all of this is offloaded to Microsoft. And Microsoft is going to make sure that those devices get the patches according to the rings that they have created. So everything is offloaded to Microsoft. It's a auto patch in a way is a service that is provided by Microsoft so that we don't have to worry about creating those update rings and, and creating all those policies and um, um, making sure that we are doing the testing and stuff like that, right? So just it is similar to what MMD does, right? So Windows Auto Patch manages all the aspects of deployment of Windows 10 and 11 quality and feature updates, driver firmware and M365 apps for enterprise updates. So it is taking care of patching of the OS, the drivers, firmware as well as the patching of the M365 apps as well. The service will keep Windows and Office software on enrolled endpoints up to date automatically. The auto patch will require a license of Windows Enterprise E3 and above. So as I said, it's not an Intune offering, right? Just having an EMS E3 or E5 or Intune A Direct is not going to suffice. And uh, 
the way it works is obviously as i said microsoft is going to create all the update rings and stuff like that but when they do the deployment they also take a phased approach what i mean by that is updates are first applied to a small initial set of devices then evaluated and then graduated to increasing uh larger sets right and uh, the process is dependent upon customer testing and verifying all the updates during this rollout stages so well obviously the customer or the intune admin in this case is not going to create any update rings but once the devices are patched then obviously the customer has to make sure that the devices are fine right because well obviously the user of the device will only know right so auto patch relies on three capabilities to help resolve the update issues first is the halt feature and uh, if we halt, if we use this feature update will not progress to the next ring unless targets uh, are stable unless the stability is met right so it's equivalent to pausing an update ring if you would call it and then there is a rollback feature and then there is a selectivity feature as well wherein um, um, we can selectively target so um as far as so this is again taken from our official documentation right now so i'm recording this on may 2022 and right now auto patch is not generally available it is going to be available in july 2022 and then there is no additional cost however uh, you need to have a windows 10 or 11 enterprise e3 licensing along with uh, these things and the devices need to be cloud when i say cloud they can be azure ad joined or they can be hybrid azure ad joined but they cannot just be on prem okay the devices can be co-managed and stuff like that and these are the licensing requirements okay right now if i go into my portal so the way we have to set it up is we have to go to tenant administration and from there there is this uh, section called microsoft managed desktop over there there is this tenant enrollment option it's pretty much straightforward. We just have to go to tenant enrollment option and then, then we can run management checks. So this is pretty much like what we would do in cloud PC as well, right? So think of auto patch like cloud PC. Again, it's a separate offering. It's not related to Intune, but we are doing it from the Intune portal as well, right? Just like when we do a setup cloud PC, first we can run a few checks wherein it makes sure that all the endpoints are open and if you are using on-premise, then that on-premise network connectivity and stuff like that has been set up. Again, not going to go into the details. There is a separate nugget in Cloud PC. If you want, you can check that out. But yeah, I mean, the point that I'm trying to make here is first we can run management checks. When I tried to run it in my tenant, well, obviously it failed because I am based out of India and India is not one of the supported regions for MMD right now. I believe MMD is going to be released in um, India pretty soon, but as of now, it's not. So it, what this does is it runs a pre-check and if everything is fine, then it's going to be green. Then in the next screen, we just have to provide our consent that, okay, I am allowing Microsoft to do the patching of the devices in my tenant and then there are a few other options as well wherein I can choose which device I want to be patched, which device I want to keep out and stuff like that. The point that I'm trying to make here is auto patch is again one of those options which we can probably make use of. Um, if we compare it with Intune, then if we compare it with patching from Intune, then there are uh, a, a lot of factors that come into our mind right first is if we are doing auto patch then everything is being managed by microsoft so it removes the headache of creating any update ring or stuff like that or doing all those kind of testing but then you uh, lose out on few things as well when i say lose out what i mean is you lose out on having the ability of deciding how the patching is going to look like and i mean obviously you are offloading everything to somebody else right so again i mean uh, you can read more about auto patch as well really excited to see how auto patch is going to be adopted once it is out there but yeah i mean this is something that i just wanted to mention okay and the last thing that i wanted to talk about in this nugget in the theoretical section is uh, upgrading a device from windows 10 any version to windows 11. again as you can think of this is what we are doing over here is we are changing the 
os version right so this is typically that comes under a feature update profile i just wanted to call it out because well you know that there's a lot of difference between windows 10 and windows 11 aesthetically as well as from feature as well as from performance perspective therefore i just wanted to call it out um there are two ways by which i mean there are many ways but from the intune portal natively there are two ways wherein we can specify if we want to upgrade our devices from windows 10 to windows 11. one is under uh, update ring the second is under a feature update policy so when we made a update ring policy over there we would have seen this option which says that upgrade windows 10 devices to the latest windows 11 release if we set this toggle to yes then all the devices that are targeted by this update ring policy will be getting the windows 11 update offered the other way is using a feature update policy wherein we see we saw all this drop down right and out of all the os that were there windows 11 was also a part of it right so uh, we can target this as well and then obviously targeting this to a device group now one thing that i wanted to call out here is over here right now we are seeing windows 11 only right but very soon we will be able to see many flavors of windows 11 like for example right now we are seeing many flavors of windows 10 right soon enough we will be able to see many flavors of windows 11 here as well like windows 11 22 h2 or something like that right so from here we could choose that to which flavor of windows 11 we want to upgrade our devices to however if we are selecting this if we are selecting the update ring option to upgrade our devices from windows 10 to windows 11 then this is just a toggle it is not a drop down so what this does is this is going to upgrade our devices to the latest windows 11 release like for example let's say that there are two releases of windows 11 so if we are using the feature update method then in the drop down we can either choose the first one or we can choose the second one and the devices are going to get frozen to that version we already know how update how update uh, feature updates work right uh, i mean uh, the devices are only going to get that version offered which we are selecting over here so we can select the first version or we can select the second version of windows 11 however over here there is no such drop down so this is going to update the device to the latest one so let's say that 2 is latest then the device will automatically be upgraded from windows 10 let's say windows 10 20 h2 to directly to windows 11 version 2 and not to version 1 we don't have an option of choosing which version of windows 11 the devices will be upgraded to they will be upgraded to the latest version okay so um, i just wanted to call out this article as well this is one of the first articles tech community third i mean first party for public facing article that was written which talks about um, upgrading a device simplifying the upgrade of a device from windows 10 to windows 11 using intune or using configuration manager so if we are using intune first it's talking about well obviously one thing that we have to keep in mind is our windows if our windows 10 machine has been targeted by update ring and we want to upgrade it from windows 10 any version to windows 11 any version then the devices should meet the prereq for windows 11 installation right so these prereq the hardware requirements and all the requirements that are there for windows 11 that should be that should be met and one of them is tpm so the device needs to have a tpm along with the other specification that are needed so uh, so what this uh, what this blog is talking about is before you create a update ring policy or before you create a feature update first run a readiness report using endpoint analytics which is going to tell us which of our devices are windows 11 ready okay so once we get that report then we know that whether it is worth creating a deployment or not because if our devices are not windows 11 ready then instead of spending time in creating a windows 11 deployment using feature update or update ring we might as well remediate those things which will make sure that our devices are windows 11 ready so that's what this this uh, uh, article is talking about first it is telling us to use endpoint analytics to get the readiness report and once that is done then it is telling us that we can use feature update to deploy the windows 11 over here you can see in the drop down they have selected windows 11 and we can schedule it as well or we can make it available uh, uh, 
instantly and the other option that i showed you guys is using windows update ring in the windows update ring this is the toggle that is present and uh, using windows update ring also we can do the same and um, um, this also calls out the fact that let's say that windows 11 has two versions one is 22 h2 and some other then the windows 10 uh, then the windows 10 device which has been assigned to this uh, update ring policy will be updated to Windows 11 latest version rather than N minus one version because over here we don't have a drop down to choose which one we want to upgrade to over here we all uh, we are also uh, specifically calling out that devices will be upgraded to the latest Windows 11 release right so if you if you want to use if you want to upgrade to Windows 11 N minus one version then the recommendation is using feature update policy so that you can choose it from this drop down whichever flavor of windows 11 you want to make use of and then this article is also talking about how to make use of endpoint uh, microsoft endpoint uh, configuration manager or secm to do the similar deployment okay so you might as well give this a read as well we'll try to do a demo on this depending upon if time permits or not okay all right so enough being said now it's time to get in get our hands dirty and do all the update ring and csp and powershell and graph api and uh, feature update and all of that i'll try to do as much as i can and show you guys how to create all these policies so yeah let's get right to the demo now <music> Okay, so I am right here at my portal and if I go to all devices, you can see the list of devices that have been enrolled to my tenant and right now the device that we are going to take a look over is this device called test device, which has been enrolled by this user test at the rate everything about engine.com. And if I click on this device and if I go into device configuration, you will be able to see that there is no such policy that I have targeted to this device. Okay, this is the device in itself. This is a virtual machine and uh, uh, the name of the device is test device the device is already enrolled and the device is azure ad joined and intune enrolled uh, 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 as you can see over here and i mean just the ime and device lock policy has come down and if i show you guys the winvo it's running with 20 h2 Okay, so first thing that we are going to do is we are going to create an update ring policy and deploy it to this device. So for that, I am going to go into devices and then update rings. Let me just call this a uh, demo update ring one. This is a test ring for local IT. I can put this to yes, Windows drivers, yes, quality different update. Um, you know what? Let me just change. If I mean, we could, we can, as we have already spoken about the logic behind keeping in different period, um, the first device should have the, I mean, the devices in ring zero should have the minimum one. The devices in ring, ring one should have a little more staggered different period and so on and so forth. Right? So right now I'm putting all of these to zero. Upgrade Windows 10 devices to latest Windows 11 release. Well, my device does not have a TPM. Therefore, it doesn't matter. I can set this to yes or no either. Set uh, feature update uninstall period. I can leave this to 10. It's fine. Uh, enable pre-release builds. I can leave this to default. Automatic update behavior. Auto install at maintenance time. I'm going to say notify download. I want to be notified when download is available. Restart checks allow. Option to pause windows update i don't want the end user to have an option to pause the update therefore i'm uh, setting this to disable option to check for windows update i can leave this to enable that's fine and then uh, change notification update level this needs to be set to you this needs to be set to use the default update notification for if you guys remember and please uh, and uh, please closed attention this is set to be set uh, this is to be set to use the default windows update notification spe especially for expedited updates because it uses wns and the notification needs to be sent to the device okay um, um deadline if you want you can set a deadline and grace period right now i don't want to because this is just a demo that i want to show 
or I mean just if you want to see I can set it to let's say nine days nine days nine days or maybe it needs to be seven so it's set it to seven 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 okay next 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 create so the uh, update ring the demo update ring has been created all I need to do now is create a group add the user to that group and then we should be all good to go so let me create a group with the name test I know I should come up with more innovative names for my users and groups but this will have to do for now uh, members the name of the member is also test all right create as far as deploying an update ring is concerned we can deploy it to a user group or to a device group either are going to work but as far as feature update and quality update and all those are concerned the recommendation is deploying it to a device group so right now i have created a user group and i'm going to deploy it to a user group itself so uh, uh again going back to update rings and then going to demo update ring one all i have to do now is i have to click on assign so i'm just going to go to properties and then edit and then just assign the group test before i click on review and save i want to go to the device and i want to show you guys the incoming of this policy in the sync ml viewer so i'm just going to click on yes this is a this is the latest sync ml tool by oliver you can download it from github i'm just going to run imdm sync what this does is all the policy that is coming down to this device when the sync is running from the mdm uh, uh, it shows it it shows the incoming of the policy in form of sync ml it will tell you the timestamp and all that stuff right okay so i just ran a sync it says sync in progress and then all this so what i'm going to do i'm going to first do a clear stream because i know that right now the assignment is not done and then i'm going to click on review and save and then save okay now it's all set now we just have to wait it out um i'm going to run a couple of things again from the device end as, as well as from the portal end and then um in the sync ml we will be able to see the policy that we have assigned coming down again a reminder while that happens the update ring policy is going to come down from intune but the feature update the expedited updates the bios of the firmware update policies those do not come down to intune from intune to the device so in that case if you run a sync ml tool you won't find anything okay all right going back to test devices device configuration i think it's going to take a couple of minutes for for it to evaluate um however for now i'm going to run a sync from the portal and then we'll just wait it out so i just ran a sync from this tool itself i will just wait for a couple of minutes and soon enough we should start seeing uh, the relevant things in sync ml okay so now you see that it's showing as uh, for the test device it is showing as pending uh, it just took a couple of minutes for the evaluation for the group membership evaluation to happen okay so now we see that there is some some things that is happening in this node uh, 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 let me go back okay so what which is the first one this is the first one we can see that there are some rep uh, replace commandlets that is happening under uh, vendor msft policy config update uh, 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 we are going to keep going down and then you see that there is some add that is happening as well um, in the data you can see that it will either show zero or it will so show one in one of the cases it's it is supposed to show seven because seven is the number of days by which uh, we had we have put in for the grace period and the deferral and not the deferral the grace period and the deadline right so um i i just put that so that we are able to identify otherwise if it shows zero in all the places it becomes a little difficult for me to uh, showcase it right so over here you see the command id is seven there is something called a command id i'm not talking about the command id we have to look at the data so in the data field in one of the places it should show us 
uh, the number seven. However, I mean, you can see that all the nodes are being targeted over here, right? So we did not put in any deferral. Therefore, in the deferral period in days, you see zero. But all, and these are all in a way, uh, I mean, the sync ML is also targeting CSPs, right? So I might as well could have created a OMA URA and targeted the same CSP, which the portal is also doing eventually, right? Okay. Uh, uh, uh. Let's keep going down. Over here, you see that uh, it says configure feature update uninstall period, and it says 10. This coincides with my policy. So if I go over here, uh, uh, I mean, this is a way of making sure that the right policy is coming down to the device. So if I click on edit over here, it says that set uh, feature update uninstall period to 10, right? That is what it is. Feature update, uh, feature update, uninstall period. And you can see in the data, it has a value of 10, right? Uh, uh, uh. Okay, going to keep, keep going. We'll keep going down. And over here, you see that in one of the places, yeah. Uh, configure deadline grace period. You see it has a value of seven. And that's what we selected in our policy as well, right? A deadline has been set to seven and the grace period is also set to seven, right? So the same thing is showing up over here. So I won't waste much time on this. The point that I wanted to prove was this is the first entry point. So whenever the device is receiving the update, uh, receiving any kind of device related policy or user related policy from Intune, it receives it in from of sync ML and this tool helps us identify it, right? So from sync ML, we have identified that the policy did come down. So right now we are in the troubleshooting phase, right? So what, where is the where is the next thing that we are going to check? We are going to go to info and over here we see that there is the policy update has been targeted, right? So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to create a MDM diag report so that <clears throat> I'm able to see what has come down. So this is the location, C drive users, public documents. And in the MDM DAG report also, we'll be able to see the policy coming down. Okay. All right. So, uh, uh, managed policies over here for update. You can see that something is happening again for update. You can see, um, configure update uninstall period. You remember we saw this in the sync ML as well as we saw it in the portal. We have set it to 10. <clears throat> Pause quality updates and I mean all the attributes related to updates which were there in the po in the po uh, policy will be shown up over here as well and configuring the deadline we set it to seven and stuff like that. So this is the second way by which we can uh, confirm that the policy is coming down or not by taking a look over the MDM dialogs. Okay, where is where is the next place? The next place is looking over the registry and looking over the event viewer. So let me show you guys the event viewer first. And this is in accordance with what we what we did in uh, our theoretical section as well, right? So I'm just going to go to the uh, MDM logs. And obviously any policy coming from Intune will be there in MDM logs. The location is device management enterprise diagnostic provider. And over here, we have to look for the node update, right? Uh, uh, uh. So I'll keep going down and I am going to look for the node update. Let's see what the node is in this case. Uh, this is something else related to ADMX install. Let's keep going down. What is this? Nope, this is also not related. We'll keep going down and these seem to be uh, somewhat related over here. You can see that the area is update and update notification level. So we had set the update notification level in our policy, right? So every attribute that was there in the policy, all of those attributes can be seen in the sync ML. 
all those attributes can be seen can be seen in the event will logs as well right so configuring the deadline no auto uh, reboot the area again is update right that's what we are concerned about configure deadline grace period uh, it has an integer value of 07 in some cases you will see integer value of 0 in some cases you will see integer value of 7 in this case also configure deadline we have selected the deadline and the grace period as 7 that's what we see over here as well integer value of 7 the area again is update uh, uh, uh. all right again deadline and then uh, disabling something something and then pausing the ui pausing the updates and then defer feature update period in days we did not do any deferral right therefore it's not showing us anything in the deferral and then uh, uh, uh allow build preview pause feature updates uh, and then pause quality updates. so you can see all those attributes that were there in the policy right that they are showing up over here differ quality we did not do any deferral uh, 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 allow auto update okay that's pretty much it so we were in the update uh, you you could see that the target was the update node the area was update and then in we were able to see what value is coming down so this area coincides with what we are seeing in the sync ml and this coincides with what we are seeing in sync ml as well under data so this is one of the the event viewer is one of the places wherein we can see these logs as well now i want to show you guys the registry because again registry is very important so i'm going to go to HKLM software Microsoft I don't want to go to enrollment I want to go to policy manager current device and then if an update related policy has been targeted to this device there will be a node called update and this is the node wherein all the policies coming down so everything that we saw in the sync ML that's the first entry point. Once via sync ML, the device has received the policy, then all of them are going to be in a way blended in the registry, right? Only then the OS knows. And the same thing is then notified. I mean, uh, the same thing is then noted down in the event via logs. So over here, you can see the same thing as well. And while we see this, let me go to the check updates. This is the fourth place wherein we can see. If I go to check updates, you can see it says that some settings are managed by your organization. And then you can see that there are uh, some cumulative updates that have already come down to this device. Uh, by cumulative updates, these are all quality updates which are controlled by the Windows update ring, right? So this is all controlled by our policy. And over here, you can see that pause update. This option to pause is a block is a grayed out because that's what uh, we selected in our policy as well, right? So it says that pause isn't available. If I click on view configured update policies, it's going to show us all the policies that are all the Windows update related policies that are coming down to this device. So this is in accordance with what we saw in the sync ml it's in accordance with what we saw in the event viewer which is in accordance with what we are going to see in the registry so you can see all these things right pause update by the user check for update by the user and the deferral period and you can see the type is mobile device management right so the mdm is setting it so if i scroll down you can see all those different attributes uh the grace period and uh, the all the attributes that were there in the policy okay all right so i'm going to click on install now later on i just wanted to show you guys the this is the first registry this is the policy manager registry which is the place wherein all the mdm related policies are stored so you can see the relevant information as well over here you can see the configure the deadline you see it has a value of seven right and then the grace period also has a value of seven, right? So, I mean, I'm just trying to show you guys that this is in accordance with the policy that has been set up. And then you can see it is going to contain all the attributes. Okay. All right. There are a couple of other registry related nodes as well, which I wanted to show you guys. Um, 
uh, uh, let me show you guys so until now what we have seen is and i i can show you guys let, let, let's just make sure well obviously during uh let me just open up services.msc first and then there will be this windows orchestrator service we'll have to make sure that the windows update service we can start it and the windows orchestrator service it has to be uh, started as well update sorry not the windows orchestrator the update orchestrator service so update orchestrator service it started and it's running so we have to make sure the service is running it's usually set to automatic so it should st uh, i mean automatically start up whenever we even if we are rebooting the machine and the orchestrator we have already spoken about all of this that once the scan happens then the orchestrator is going to initiate the download it is going to queue all the updates that are applicable and once they have been queued they are going to be so over here you in the update you can see the install now option right so right now everything has been queued but nothing has been installed so when i'm going to click on install now then the installation is going to happen the arbitrator is also going to uh, take over the control and stuff like that okay and the other thing that we can check we have already checked the event view logs the other thing the other log that we can check is the windows update related logs so we can either go to c drive windows logs and see the windows update so if i go to uh, 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 c drive windows logs inside windows update we can see all these etl traces right so either i can um, um, open these etl traces using there there is a tool that we can probably use i should have it somewhere here in my downloads yeah the perf viewer tool so perf perf viewer is one of the tools that can be used to uh, to read the etl files uh, uh except okay and then uh, from here we can let me see if it gives me the option of going to this location we are supposed to go to let's see what's there in the event if i go into the event okay so from here we can probably figure out the the this i won't really say the disadvantage the uh, the cumbersome thing with using perf viewer is we will have to open up all these etls one by one right so the easier way is using a powershell and then it combines all of this into a one single readable file which then we can uh, open up in uh, let's say service trace view or stuff like that right so all we have to do is we have to open up this and then run the command get hyphen windows update logs not logs log so get hyphen windows update log all right and then it's going to install uh, a couple of modules i guess and then you see that it has written everything and uh, in this location so what this does is this uh, over here you can see we have something called windows update what i'm going to do i'm just going to copy it and i'm just going to paste it in my local machine and then we can use the service trace viewer to open it so if i open this up in in a notepad then obviously it's not going to look very good but this contains all the information that we are looking for so it will show us that the device to it will show us the end point to which the device is reaching out so for example over here once it was uh, once it was uh, merged over here you can see that the download manager was downloading something from this location right so we can just put in this url and see whether we are able to see something or not slash and then okay so over here you can see the same thing it is uh sorry it is trying to download from the same location 
so all that it's doing is it is going to uh, all those files and then it is downloading the cap file and it is saving it to a specific location so all the downloads are getting downloaded but right now what is not happening is the update is not happening right so for that we will have to close everything and then we will have to run an update so for that i am going to close all this and then i'm going to click on install because once the installation happens then it's going to undergo a reboot as well so all these things all these you see are cumulative updates that are getting installed now if i go into the portal so from the portal i should be able to see the device status it should show us as a succeeded the other device is currently switched off powered off therefore it is not showing anything so i mean that is pretty much there is for cumulative update we can track it from sync ml the event via the registry and um, um the mdm diag logs as well as from the portal just to make sure that what we have created in the portal correlates with what is going on in the device right okay so while that update happens let me just quickly go over to feature updates so um and we are going to make a feature update policy now as well feature update is going to take some time because as i said the device is going to device can take up to 3 days to get this association to, i mean over here you remember right in step 1 the uh, device starts sending its telemetry to windows update service this can take up to 72 hours so i'm going to configure the device to start sending its telemetry and then probably uh, we will see how it goes right so uh, uh, over here you can see these are the settings that we have to configure first is under device restriction we have to set up the windows update telemetry so what i am going to do i am going to go to devices and then configuration policies and then let me create a policy for this and then templates and then device restriction create ei demo windows update those update policy and then probably we can put in something like windows telemetry or something like that windows tele telemetry okay next and then where do we have to go we have to go to reporting and telemetry so i'm just going to go to reporting and telemetry and then share data usage i am going to set this to required and then while this happens let me do one more thing let me create a device group right now i have not created a device group so i'm just going to go to groups and then i am going to call this group name test2 and then the member is going to be test device and i am going to assign all the feature update as well as all the relevant policies to test2 okay so the first policy has been created the telemetry has been set for data collection okay now the other thing that we have to check is whether microsoft account sign in assistant service is running or not so i'm going to go to services dot msc and then i'm going to see microsoft account sign in service microsoft account sign in service set to manual so i'm going to set it to start okay this is also taken care of and then we have to make sure the g status is not set to 0 this is actually for uh checking safeguards so let us check for the safeguards in this device there shouldn't be any but just to be sure so i'm just going to run the same commands and install this module okay okay 
going to do a y not a t a y sorry and then a yes to all it's going to download i mean at this point of time it's going to download the module therefore um, we have to make sure that uh, the internet connectivity is there in the machine Oh, here you can see it is in, it was installing the package and now import module and then if you why am i blocked uh, uh sorry set execution policy execution policy unrestricted this is something that needs to be set allow and then we can do an import module okay and then the command is get hyphen feature update blocks so that is what i'm going to do so it's going to generate the output in a specific folder first it's going to read a lot of information again there is a very good article on how to figure out feature uh, i mean if there are any safeguard holes and stuff like that i'm not going to go into very details of that right now my intention is just showing you guys how to find out whether there is any safeguard hold and then we can we could have found this information from update compliance as well which we are going to set up later on but yeah i mean if there is any safeguard hold then i'll show you guys that from intune as well we can create a policy which is going to uh, remove that safeguard hold Okay, so I mean the PC needs uh, .NET Framework 3.5. We can download and install it. That's fine. I mean not really relevant right now. Okay, so anyways, um, the appraiser results can be found over here. So I am going to go to this location, and then under results, it's going to show me whether there were there are any holds or not, and then it's going to see those registries which we have spoken about earlier so over here it says that there are three bin finds found these were the bin finds found and then it did not find any updates i mean any blocks that were there any safeguard holds so to speak uh, 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 just making sure I mean, we don't have to skip uh, skim through the entire thing. We can just uh, look at this and that is going to be good enough. You can see that there are many uh, files over here probably. So what we have to look for is this is the timestamp. So I'm checking for 26th of May 2022. And then I guess that's the time. And there were no safeguard holds, right? And then um, you can see over here as well. And then we can check the registry as well for the safeguard holds. So... Uh, uh, we are going to go to the same location as it was shown over here that is hklm software microsoft windows nt current version app compact flags okay and over here you see that the g status is a non zero value right this is supposed to be there this is an indicator that there are no safeguard holds in the device as well right and we have already run this script uh, uh, uh and if there are any script i mean if there was a safeguard then i could have used this csp to get rid of that safeguard as well okay so now uh i know that the device has yet to the device is yet to start sending its telemetry but um what we are going to do is uh we are going we have to configure the windows health monitoring as well so let's configure that this is another policy that needs to be created device configuration windows 10 and data templates windows health monitoring create windows update health 
monitoring and then next and over here in the scope we are going to select both both of them and then health monitoring we are going to select enable and then next next and then the name of the group is test2 which contains our device next next create okay this is also done the policy should come down to the device very shortly uh, uh, uh. and then we are going to check this location as well it should show boot performance as well as windows updates so that is what I'm waiting for. And then, um, well, the device will take some time to start sending its telemetry. So we are going to wait on that. But yeah, okay. So let's go back to the registry slide. Yeah, this is the slide. So it might take a while. So what I'm going to do, I'm again going to run a sync from the, or even before I run a sync, let's go to this place directly. It's under policy manager and then device health monitoring. So our same MDM node, HKLM software, Microsoft policy manager, current device, and then Windows health monitoring. Right now under configured device monitoring scope, you don't see anything but under configure device health monitoring scope we are supposed to see these two okay so uh, uh, let's wait for the stuff stuff to happen right now you saw that there was nothing so i'm just going to go to the device and i'm going to run a sync so that the policy can start coming down if I go to device configuration, it's going to show me. So right now we don't see the device configuration oh. policy that we have made, right? So waiting for it to come down. Over here you can see that uh, for our, this is the prompt for our quality update. So in our quality update, we, we have said, right? That there should be a notification. So the quality update is now installed. Therefore it is giving me a notification. So I'm just going to discard it for now. I will restart it later. Okay, so uh, here's the device uh, just ran a couple of things and now you can see that the windows uh, the Both the device configuration policy that I had uh, deployed to the device have been successfully Deployed right so now we can go to the policy manager current device device health monitoring node so uh, uh, Now, if I go to the device health monitoring node, you can see that under configure device health monitoring scope, I can see windows updates as well, right? This is what was needed. So um, things look good from this perspective. Everything is set. The only thing is now the device should start sending its telemetry to the uh, windows DS service. Everything is set. All that needs to be done is a feature of a date policy needs to be created, right? Even though it's not going to take effect instantaneously because the device is still not sending any uh, uh, telemetry, but still we will create it. So let me call this uh, EAI demo feature update. And then I want this to be 21 H2. Yeah, 21 H2 is fine. Next, next, add a group. The group is called test two. Test two has been added, create, finish. This has just been created. We will keep an eye out. But yeah, for now, everything looks good. And uh, at after some point of time, we should be able to see something like this for my device as well, right? Okay, guys, this is now again 12 hours later. So 
if now I go to the reports and if I generate a similar report for feature update over here, you can see I have selected the AI demo feature update uh, uh, profile that I have created and it says that it is in progress for two devices and it contains my device as well test device, right? It is pending and scheduled. If I go into the device, you can see that this is the device. Uh, sorry. This is the device, the test device that we were testing upon. The device is running with 20H2. The version, it has already got the feature update offered from the Windows DS service, DSS service, which is 21H2. And this coincides with the uh, option that we had selected in our policy. So if I go to devices and then um, um, let me just show you guys the feature update policy once again. This was the policy and in the policy we had selected 21 H2. So the device was in 20 H2, but it got 21 H2, which is in accordance with our policy. And then it's getting the notification as well, which is there in the update line. So the point that there are two things that I want to mention over here. First is the update that the device gets is not incremental. What I mean by that is the device is at 20 H2, right? In our policy, we have selected 21 H2. So it's not like the device is first going to get 21 H1 offered. It's going to install it and then 21 H2. It directly gets the uh, highest version that is allowed as per our feature update policy, the version wherein we want to freeze everything. And then that version is installed directly. Now it might not be uh, I mean, I'm assuming that uh, the upgrade is possible. There might be a chance. I'm not exactly sure. I haven't tested. Maybe my device is running with Windows 10 1803 and a direct update from Windows 10 1803 to Windows 11 might not be possible. Again, I'm not sure. Probably in that case, it might be incremental. But in this case, as you can very clearly see, the device is at 20 H2. It does not get 21 H1 offered. It directly gets 21 H2 offered. So I'm just going to run a restart and once the restart is done, I'll go back to the portal and then um, over there, then the report is going to show as uh, the update has been installed as well. Right now it is only showing that it has been offered, but and it is in progress, but it is not installed yet. Okay, now when I log in, it surely tells me that the device is now at 21 H2 version. And if I were to check the Windows update related logs as well, the logs are also going to show me, I mean, uh, sh show that uh, the device was successfully upgraded to the newer OS version. Okay, so the very first log that I see when I log into the client and uh, the source is Windows Update Client is installation successful. Windows successfully installed the following up, uh, following update feature update to Windows 10 21 H2, and then um, um, it it had installed some cumulative update as well, which looks fine. And then I mean this is in the win in the system logs we are only going to see the final update right but in case of there are any errors there won't be much that we will see in the system logs so in that case we will have to check the windows update logs and then we can use the perf viewer tool or we can use the partial command that i've already shown you guys so it will take probably some time for the same thing to get updated in the portal because the device is going to report to DSS and then the DSS is going to talk to Intune and then update the status. So the expectation is very soon enough for the test device, it should the update status should so show as succeeded and succeeded instead of in progress and pending. And over here, it is supposed to show as a success in green. Okay, now we are going to talk about Windows Update reporting from Intune portal. So I'm going to go back to my uh, portal and then as far as reporting is concerned, again, we have spoken during the theoretical session. So the update ring reporting is just like a device configuration reporting. We click on any ring and then if we go to the device status, we can see whether the device has successfully got the policy or not, right? 
this is just like a device configuration profile. So this is one way wherein we can see the report and we have an option of exporting this as well. We can look at user status as well, uh, device status as well and stuff like that. Okay, this is one. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to show you uh, or a better report is over here. If I go to reports, then under Windows update preview, I can download feature update report as well as expedited update reports. So let me just do a refresh over here and a refresh over here. The data is going to refresh and then it's going to provide me more information. So uh, uh, over here you can see that as far as feature update is concerned, there are three feature update policies and the versions on each of them are the same. So this is the one that we recently made and uh, it shows in progress as two and then okay. And if I scroll down, it shows me the reporting for the expedited updates. So uh, over here for one device, it is showing as a success, which is good enough. Now, if I go into reports over here, I have these two reports available. However, there are a couple of reports that are, that are still in a uh, private preview. So they are going to sh start showing up over here as well very soon. But if I go into feature update over here, I have an option of selecting a feature update policy against which I want the report to be generated. So if I select the first one and then I click on generate report, it is going to show me everything with respect to this feature update policy. So let's just give it a couple of minutes. This is the one that we have recently created. And then it shows me that uh, there are two devices that are in progress. One is the test device. This is the device that we have just now enrolled. And I was expecting it might take up to 72 hours, but it didn't. It was quite uh, fast, which is a good, good sign. And uh, it shows that in progress, it is not scanned yet. If I select a different feature update policy, let's say I select this one. It is going to show me the applicable devices here as well. So I can click on generate. And then it's going to generate the report. And well, for I don't think there is any device that is targeted by this. Uh, and I have an option of downloading this report as well. So I can export this report. So this is the built in reporting that is already present in the Intune portal. For each device, I can get a whole bunch of information, probably not much customization that is present. But I can get I, I can get a lot of information from here as well, right? So over here you can see that there are five devices and then some have status of offering, right? Uh, so under our co-management section, we were seeing that there were some devices which are supposed to show as offer ready only then the workload is supposed to be moved. And then there is one device which has already received the uh, update, right? So this VM2 has already received the feature update and uh, 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 all right looks good so this is one other reporting that we can take a look at the built-in report however the important one or the other one is using update compliance which i'm going to show you guys now so for update compliance as i told you we have to set up a couple of things we have to set up our uh, log analytics workspace wherein all the information is going to be uh, wherein all the information is going to go so for that, how do we set it up? Well, it's very easy. We just have to search for log analytics. So I'm going to search for log analytics over here. You can see that there are two log. I mean, two workspaces that are already created. I can always create a fresh one. So I can click on this. The first thing you see over here is it's asking us for our Azure subscription. Now this is a mandate. If you don't have an Azure subscription, this is not going to work out need to have that then you can create a new resource group or use an existing resource group you can provide it any name and then next next finish just when you're done with that a uh, log analytics like this is going to get created and just when a log analytics is created you see that it's going to contain a lot of information workspace id blah 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 and then there are activity logs tags they are going to contain a whole bunch of information. Okay. 
All right. So once the log analytics workspace is created, then under solutions, we are we will be able to see this workspace as well. So if I go into solutions under solutions, I will be able to see this. And if I click on that, then if I go to summary, I will be able to see my key and that key is very important. So uh, 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 update compliance settings, not summary. Let's first go to update compliance settings and under update compliance settings, I'll be able to see this commercial ID key. Think of this ID as a unique identifier of my workspace location. So what's going to happen is we have already seen this in the theory again very quickly. The devices are going to send their data to a workspace. Now that workspace needs to have an address, right? This is what the address is. And then update compliance will come over here, read it and then it will uh, uh, show it to us, right? So uh, all we have to do is we have to keep this copied. So I'm just going to copy this commercial key ID at one location so that because this needs to be provided to the device. How do we provide it to the device? We provide it to the device by, by creating a device configuration profile or a OMA URI, right? Okay, so this is all done. The key is created. And now the next thing that needs to be done is we need to go to marketplace and we need to get update compliance. So over here, we just have to type in the word update compliance inside marketplace. So I'm going to go to marketplace. I'm going to type in the word update compliance. And then we just need to create this update compliance. This is going to talk to our workspace, get all that information over here. Also, you see it requires a Azure, AD, a Azure subscription, which I already have. You need to choose that. And then you need to choose, choose the resource group, which we can choose either. And then you can see that it is asking us that, okay, you are setting up a update compliance. Your update compliance is going to get data from some workspace, right? Which workspace do you want to get data from? It's going to show you all the workspaces and then I can choose the workspace that I want to, right? Uh, 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 all right. First, I have to select the resource group. I think log analytics is my resource group. Yes. Once I've selected the resource group only then the, uh, only then the workspace shows up. There are two workspaces that I have created. Uh, one is not needed, so I can create the old, I can delete the old one. Okay, all right. So now we have created the workspace and in update compliance, we have linked the update compliance to talk with the correct workspace. Now what needs to be done? We need to create a device configuration profile with this information which needs to be provided to the device. So I am going to create a device configuration profile now. So I'm going to go to devices, device configuration profile. And then um, I'm just trying to remember if I already have one created. Okay, so I already have a policy created which contains the same thing. So this is nothing but an update uh, an OMA URI kind of a setting. So if I go into basic, not basic, sorry. If I go into uh, uh, the settings, let me show you guys what the setting is. And it contains the same thing as what is documented over here. It is going to contain one, two, three, four, five, five different OMA URIs. The first one is the commercial ID, which is going to contain this value uh, ending with C5. That is what is there over here as well. So if I click on this and uh, ending with C5, I just don't want to waste time and therefore I created this beforehand. But uh, I mean, the there is nothing much to be uh, seen over here, right? We just have to provide the OMA URI path the data type and the value. And what is it that needs to be provided is written over here, right? Like for the first one, it needs to be string and your commercial ID allow telemetry needs to be set to one. That is what is set over here as well. Allow telemetry integer value one. And then this one is also integer value one, integer value when, and the last one is integer value 16, right? So that is what we have set for all of these. 
right this just needs to be deployed to a device group which is what i guess i have already done and if not let me deploy it to my new group which is test 2 and then going to run a sync at the device end what's going to happen is now this is going to take some time the device is going to take some time in uploading its data to the workspace and only after the device starts uploading its data to the workspace the update compliance is going to start showing it so i have existing devices which i can show you this new device this device named test device might take some time but uh, the other devices will be fine so let me just log into the device and run a sync on the device as well okay so we will run this sync meanwhile let me just go to the devices and run a sync from the portal so i'm just going to go to test device run a sync from here and under device configuration sooner or later that policy will also start showing up right and then i mean while this device might take two to three days we are not going to wait for all of that because i already have some devices which are sending their telemetry the devices that were already enrolled by me so i can probably show you guys those devices as well okay so just run the sync so that the device configuration profile comes down and now uh, let me just go back to my portal and let me just go back to my deck so over here we have deployed this and now when we go into the summary we are able we should be able to see all the devices that are there and that have been sending their telemetry right so i'm going to go to this i'm going to go to summary right now i guess it will only show six devices i guess or maybe five devices i'm not sure let's give it some time to wait and populating this is going to take some time because the device will start sending its inventory and then yeah so i've got five devices the latest device the one with the name test device will not show up over here it might take some time but uh, yeah so if this when this opens up it's telling you how many devices are up to date how many devices are not up to date and then how many devices need attention what attention it needs if i go on the right hand side there are some list of queries as well that we can run it is uh, i mean custom queries already present feature update deployment issues different configuration and i mean there are so so many different queries that we can possibly run and uh, before i come to that let me just show you guys this if i click on feature update status it is going to show me how many devices are up to date how many devices are out of support it's going to give me all that information and uh, 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 cool and then it gives me information related to delivery optimization as well again i'll do a separate nugget on delivery optimization later on right now i have everything over here but i'll do a separate nugget on and what you're seeing is whenever we're clicking on this this page is opening up what it is doing is in a in the background it is actually running a query and this is how it's getting that information so this is a, a table wherein we are running those queries and then the output of that query is this whole set of information and the good thing is i can edit this query the way i want to right so i'm not dependent upon the portal to write the query for us i can write my own query as well so like for example if i go to feature update and then let's say i want to find something related to safeguard safeguard holds that are present right so uh, uh, i think there should be some custom query which is uh, already present so i might as well make use of that if not then uh, i can uh, if i know the correct table then i can use the query the way i want to well over here you can see that there are so many uh, custom queries as well right like a device with a safeguard hold so what we can do is first we can run this query and if there are any safeguard holds we can get a list of those devices and then maybe i mean you already know right there is that csp that we can target even though it's not recommended but which we can target which is going to remove the safeguard hold from the device right so stuff like that 
or uh, uh, it tells us I mean there are so many different ones we just need to play with all of this so that uh, over here it's giving us some information related to computer ID by quality different dates and it is rendering a column chart what happens if we remove the column chart information does it give an error no it doesn't give an error it gives us in form of a tabular data okay so what I'm trying to say is I've sh shown you guys how to set this up but there are so many different queries that we can uh, we can run at our end and then customize it the way that we want to right so again uh, okay what's this OS edition version enterprise okay all right uh, Let's say I don't want a chart, I want a column chart. I don't know how it's going to look like, but yeah, whatever. So, I mean, we can get, I mean, it's doing a little bit of the things that we can do using Power BI as well. It's giving you that output in that format. But the point that I'm trying to make is yes, update compliance is also a very nifty tool. And one of the reasons why initially people were reluctant to make use of patching via Intune is because we did not have very good reporting. Now with update compliance, we can run real time query. And since device is already uploading its data to the workspace, the update compliance is going to fetch the data that we need from that workspace and give it to us in a pretty format. So again, very, very useful. And uh, this needs a lot of exploration. So probably I, I know that there is nothing related to delivery optimization that I can show you to you guys right now because I don't have a lot of things set up as of as of this moment. But delivery optimization is something that I'm planning on doing uh, very soon so that uh, we can do a deep dive on that as well. And over here in the portal, you can see it's proactively telling us that there are two devices that has issues and it's telling us what are those issues. There is one device which is out of support for OS version and there is one device which is missing security updates. If I click on this, how do, how is it getting this information? How is the portal getting this information? The update compliance portal is getting this information by running this query against all the data that is there in our workspace. So uh, 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 if I expand this, it is actually telling us about this virtual machine VM4, which seems to have an OS build, which is out of support, right? So, um, um, uh, 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 all right. Uh, fair enough. So, and the same information is there for uh, missing multiple security updates as well. So it's running, it's querying this table and it's seeing where any detention status is missing security updates. And then um, if I expand this, it's going to give me information about this, uh, this device as well. Probably what I'm guessing is this device is not uh, targeted with a update ring policy maybe. So, I mean, once we have this information that which device is it, then um, we can take the remediative actions from our end, right? So th this is how uh, useful, how we can make use of this report. But yeah, I mean, update compliance again, very handy and in a big organization wherein we need good amount of granular reporting, we can definitely make use of this. Okay, and the last thing that we are going to see in the demo is expedited updates. So we have already spoken about what expedited updates is and um, if there is like print, if anything like printer spooler or uh, printer nightmare happens again, this is how we are supposed to take care of it. How do we create a expedited update policy? We go to the portal and over here there is this option called quality update for uh, windows. I'm going to click on that and then I'm going to click on create profile and let's call this EI demo expedited update policy and then next. Okay, let me go previous and then this is wherein we are selecting which update needs to be expedited. So let me just select the latest one, which is this. So any update cannot be expedited. Only that update can be expedited, which is showing up in this list. Okay, for rest, well, obviously we have the uh, KB approach as well, wherein we can deploy the KB in form of Win32 application. And then next, next, and then assignment, and then test2 is the group. Select, next, create. So the policy has been created now. 
and uh, the device is already on so if you guys remember the flow in case of expedited update as well intune is not sending down the policy so there is no point running uh, mdm sync i'm just going to make sure that my windows installer is running so that any expedite any update needs to be installed it is installing fine and uh, i just have to give it some time so it may take a while for the expedited updates to come down over here and once it is done then um, from the portal we should be able to see the installation as well so quickly going through the uh, quickly going through the diagram of the flow that we took a look over uh, and before we take a look over the diagram um, there are a couple of services also that we can check. So Windows Update Health Service, this is the tools that is responsible for receiving the notification. So you remember that in case of uh, update, expedited updates, the device needs the update right now, ASAP, right? So we cannot wait or rely on the device to go back to the Windows Update Service and the scan. Therefore, the Windows uh, device is going to be notified using WNS, right? So for that, there is a specific service for it which is what we are going to make sure that it is running fine and uh, 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 and uh, apart from the service under C drive program files we will also be able to find Microsoft update health service update health tools so uh, uh, the service is running fine this service needs to be needs to be fine otherwise there is I mean the device is not going to receive the expedited updates under C drive program files microsoft windows windows health tools so it contains the uh, installer as well right if it is not present if this is not present let's say that for for some reason in the image it was not present so just go to our official documentation and over here there is a link and if you click on this link it will redirect you to the kb so all will this is the you can say the installer for uh, for the windows update tool so all we have to do is download this installer and then we can deploy this installer from intune as well right as a win32 app or as a msu whatever and while i'm at this page let me just point out a couple of other important things as well so from the same documentation you can see in this documentation it is saying that the device needs to have access to the windows push notification service it is well it says that it's recommended but not required but it is actually required for the expedited update to work if the device does not have access to windows push notification service then the device will not get expedited update it will the device will take its own sweet time and whenever the device reaches out to the windows update service and does a usual scan that is when it's going to download that expedited update that was sent so the well in what it means is it's the update is not going to be expedited right so what i mean by that is if the device needs to get the expedited update it needs to have access to windows push notification service endpoints and then there are a few other endpoints as well which needs to be available the other thing that i wanted to call out over here is that well obviously for expedited updates and for firmware and bios updates and for feature updates just having intune license is not enough the device needs to have these licensing one of these licensing as well which is enterprise related as well as uh, the education related licensing is also pre uh, present so make sure that uh, that is there and then it talks about the supported windows editions as well so it pretty much covers the major ones that is professional enterprise pro education and education so uh, uh, and then we have already seen that the telemetry is fine let's and we have already checked this location as well earlier however let's check it out once again it is hklm software microsoft cloud managed update Okay, so we are at this location and inside UHS settings and what we have to look for is UHS server name and over here you can see that it is pointing to the micro, uh, .microsoft.com server, which is how it should be. So everything is looking fine over here. Um, update logs, if the update is not happening, then we have already seen how to run the PowerShell command and how to get the Windows update related logs as well. So the deployment has been made. Now the next point is going to the reports and then waiting for the installation to happen and once the installation is done then under windows update if i were to run a refresh over here the device is supposed to show up and the deployment is supposed to show up so again we are just going to wait for probably 24 hours 
or if it happens sooner then i will notify so over here this is the older uh, this is the older one that is showing up or we can go to the reports as well and from here we can get a report as well so over here selected update profile so over here uh, uh, windows quality update this is the one is this the one that we created windows quality update uh, no the one that we created is ei demo expedited update policy so probably it will take a while to show up over there i'm guessing if not then let's see okay it's showing up now so let me just select this okay generate report so i'm assuming that obviously the device will it will show up zero for now but probably it will take some time so let's uh, keep an eye out on this so guys it has literally been just 10 minutes that i have been waiting and now if i go back into the portal and for the expedited update if i run a refresh over here i can see that there are it's showing success for two devices and for our policy as well it is showing success for one device so let me just take a closer look so if i go into reports and then expedited update report and if i click on generate report now it is showing that it has one device which is in progress and one that has succeeded so if i scroll down um, the one that is in progress device to this device is no longer active How, therefore it shows that offer ready and just offering so I have powered off that device but our device that is test device it is showing as installed and update installed and it I just had to wait about 10 minutes and I, I just uh, made sure when I went into the device I was able to see that uh, the installation was done and if we were to check the event viewer logs or the windows update log we'll be able to see things happening over there as well so this is all thanks to WNS that the notif that the update was instantly notified to the device and within 10 minutes the update got installed otherwise if WNS was not there then the device would have taken its own sweet time and then run a sync against windows update and then probably it would have taken uh, probably few hours or maybe up to a day as well. So that is pretty much it. That is there as far as expedited update is concerned. We have taken a look over the flow and the logs and in the demo as well, you were able to push in expedited updates and see in real time that it took up to 10 minutes for the device to install it successfully. So that's it guys. That's all I pretty much had in the demo section. My intention was making sure that we first understand what Windows Update is and then the different kind, the different ways of managing Windows Update from Intune and then understanding the flow and then correlating it with the different kind of logs so that when we are actually troubleshooting stuff, we are able to correlate it with the logs and understand the flow. So I guess we were able to cover pretty much everything that we had in the agenda. And as I said, I'll be doing a separate session on... Uh, delivery or optimization later on and then we'll be seeing how we can get the relevant reporting from update compliance so that's pretty much it guys i hope that this has been informative for you i would like to thank you for viewing this is your friend saurabh sarkar signing off